Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. I'm true. And let's go for the next one. Only a chosen few heed the call. A magnetic force drawing athletes towards a challenge like no other. When the cold, dense, violent Tramontan wind lashes the coastline below the eastern Pyrenees, Barcares becomes a battleground for a select group of athletes from across the globe. We are ready to crown a new Lord and Queen of Tramontan. The double loop goes on there nicely. And when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive loop. From the 29th of March to the 28th of April, the world's best men, women, legends and young guns will defy the limits of the sport in the wildest conditions. Are you ready for takeoff? go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. My name is Thibaut Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate cab surfer. I'm Max, I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etchen here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding mecca promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey we are only at the beginning. My name is Mike. I have lived here on the spot for 20 years. When I came here, the spot was a marine park. There was dolphins, crocodiles, and seals. There was thousands of people coming to watch Flipper. Yes, Flipper, the original dolphin. In 1992, the Marine Park closed. It was time for a new era. One day I saw something flying over my house. Kite surfers. This was my first contact with this crazy sport. 
For 15 years, Parc de Doss stayed private, reserved to a small French community. Then the Lords of Tram came and everything changed. Barker Res quickly grew into an international spot like Cape Town and Tarifa. Now I see a lot of professional athletes and kite surf lovers traveling from all around the world to enjoy holiday in Barker Res. The Tremontane wind blows with immense power, propelling riders to dizzying heights. Many records have been broken when you catch the legendary gust. This is it's ridiculous. So 200 He's still going. 200 meters. <laughs> 200 meters. He loved oh. it. Oh my word. Right. Right. Can I get a With the snow-capped peaks of the Pyrenees in the background, Parc de Dos provides an incomparable setting for passionate riders. Ce spot de Barcarès, il est fabuleux. Il est fabuleux pour moi, c'est euh, mon spot préféré, je dirais, pour m'entraîner. Tout est facile, l'accès au spot est facile. Le plan d'eau est magnifique et le vent fait qu'on peut monter à des hauteurs folles et, et s'entraîner dans les conditions qui sont optimum en France. En plus, grâce au Lord of Tram, ça a pris tellement d'ampleur. Euh, on a tellement de bons riders qui viennent s'entraîner, tellement de, de notoriété qui vient autour du, du spot. Et, euh, et voir ça en France, dans mon sport, dans ma discipline, moi je trouve ça incroyable et, et, et ce spot, c'est pour ça que je l'aime. Euh, J'adore venir ici, euh, c'est euh, vraiment top. Il y a tout qui a été pensé aussi pour euh, la glisse, le spot du Parc des Doses qui a été totalement refait il y a quelques années pour accueillir les pratiquants, euh, les jours sans vent qui existent euh, quand même euh, dans la région, on a un pump track, une ville super accueillante. Euh, L'été, on a des festivals avec plein d'artistes. Euh, c'est vraiment super de venir aussi en famille. L'hiver, il y a le marché de Noël. C'est vraiment une ville où il fait bon vivre, euh, où je me sens vraiment bien. Content euh, que Barcarès euh, soit mon, mon lieu d'entraînement, euh, mon home spot, comme on dit. Welcome to Barcarès, the new mecca of big air kiteboarding. Let the show go on. So your mate thinks he jumps 10 meters high? You can follow him live right at the beach. But don't keep the joy to yourself. Live stream your session to anywhere in the world, reach new heights and climb up the leaderboard. Join the ultimate kiteboarding game today. Check out the surfer.app. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on doit amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Welcome back to the 2024 Lords of Tram event here in Baccarese. It's round one of the big air of the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. Wow, are you in for a treat today? I'm Lewis Crathen, joined here by professional rider and uh, SpaceX CEO. Can I call you SpaceX sure, CEO? Yeah. And professional judge, Marine. How are you doing? I'm very good. I woke up this morning th due to the howling wind coming around my window. Uh, and I arrived at the spot seeing mostly white caps and uh, I see people riding on sixes, so I'm having a very good morning. What we can see out of our window here and what you're about to see on your screens, on your phones, on your computers, maybe you've got it on the big screen in the living room today. I highly recommend that because we're going to be seeing things we haven't seen before in big air kiteboarding. I feel a bit more present today. We've got this wind already blowing. They're fixing one of the doors in front of me on the judging booth, which has very smartly been positioned upwind of their booth. Already blown out the door of the judging booth. So good luck to those guys in there who will be locked in now and cannot go out to the toilet on uh, their own free will. But there is the situation on the beach. We must, we must have gusts of 40 knots maybe coming in here. Marijn, you know this spot really well. We're, we're 10 minutes away, I'm being told, from actually about eight minutes away from the first action here. We'll bring you those riders, but Morain, what sizes are these kites on, uh, riders on at the moment? I've seen uh, Leonardo go out first on the six, then I saw Mark, uh, Mark on the six, and Mark on the six means that it's proper windy because he's a big, strong guy. As you can see on the screen on the right, Mark Jacobs is a big, strong uh, New Zealand rider, and he's on the six, and then we have Edgar, who's also on the six. So all of these riders are on the six meter kite, which means that we're gonna get some double loop action, I presume. What do you think, Lewis? Well, we're definitely gonna see some double loops. We've already seen them warming up, actually. Maybe we can bring that graphic back in of these riders in this first heat, uh, which will be Mark Jacobs, Edgar Ulrich, and Leonardo Casati. Leonardo, especially, has been warming up with some doubles. I've seen Leo ride here the past few uh, days and he's been absolutely uh, shredding on the water. I haven't seen him come off the water as well when it's windy, so he's been riding eight hours a day on each training session, so I think he's really ready for this. Uh, Edgar is, uh, is a local rider, he uh, kites a bit up north of this spot but comes to Barcras very often to train uh, and is a very experienced rider with the gusts here. Mark flew in fresh from New Zealand yesterday, so hopefully he's not too bothered with the jet lag uh, and ready to compete against these two young riders. Um, it's a very exciting heat for me. Let's see what, what's, going, uh, what's going to happen this heat. Yeah, Mark, Mark deals with that so well. I think people sometimes don't consider the, the length of travel he has to go on these... Uh, these these window forecast events as they're done in big air now, you know, we don't turn up to places with no wind. That's uh, that's a back in my day kind of conversation. It's lovely that we get to go for it. It's much harder logistically, so we can only take our hats off to all of the local organisers for making this happen. But there in the very background is the one of the mountains, still got snow on it and some of our riders. There's just a double loop, someone warming up, flying through the screen and the landing there. So absolutely ideal conditions here to push the limits of big air kiteboarding and we're absolutely stoked that you have joined us wherever you have around the world because yesterday we just i just wasn't here mentally Marine. we didn't have that solid wind we just knew that the wind wasn't ideal but today i mean have a guess what time i woke up today Marine. Uh, around five-ish was the and wind waking you up 420 420 i thought i would be clever and take the mountain view at the hotel <laughs> Um, but that was very silly as the mountain view facing west, the wind coming from the northwest, 4.25. I wasn't the only one in my hotel woken up. I told Aaron was up at 4.30 as well. And then I just lay there with my eyes open as the shutters were banging with this uh, at least 40 knots coming in then. But I didn't mind. It was all right. I got a good night's sleep. I'm ready for it today. And there is our first heat just about to take place. Now, the riders will be told very... Shortly, it's their turn to go via their flag. And you can see on your screens, Leonardo Casati will be first in sequence, remember, because the riders take in turns here. That's the unique part of this event. He's got the blue rash vest on, Edgar Uric white, and Mark Jacobs red. It's very simple. It's almost too easy to talk about. We're not worrying about who's getting in the way here, Marine, and it really allows judges to focus on the riders. Yeah, and the camera camera crew on the beach can follow the riders especially well since they're jumping one by one uh, and that means that you uh, at home can really see all the tricks in detail 
um, and then you, we don't miss any tricks, you don't miss any tricks, and the judges also don't miss any tricks. Uh, let's see if the heat is gonna commence. We still have all flags down, but we should be starting anytime soon. Uh, we see Leonardo, probably one of the youngest competitors, uh, and he's the brother of the well-known Lorenzo uh, Cosati, which is the winner of King of the Air uh, in 2022 and is very well known for being up there, uh, one of the best riders in the world. And Leo has been caddying him for several years. And this being his first World Championship event uh, does not feel like it's his first World Championship event to me because he's been so present and caddying for his brother. So he probably knows all the insights and all the tricks. We see Mark warming up here with a boogie S loop, it seems. There we go, landing it. Can be quite tricky here, the landings, because you land in such choppy waters, uh, the wind's blowing the water um, into little waves on, on your landing. The takeoff is very smooth, but your landing might be a bit tricky. If you're taking off in waves, you have flat spaces between the waves to land in. And on this spot, the riders have to make sure that they land with enough speed, but not too much speed that they chop, uh, they fall over the chop and uh, lose their board or whatever. Takeoff area looks absolutely ideal, but as you just said, Marijn, not easy to find a landing sometimes as you see yeah just that lovely view of uh you know right up close there you can see the chops aren't they're not tiny but they're just that sort of range that they will if you know if you're a bit front heavy you'll go down here so i'm sure we're going to see quite a few crashes from landings today it will be the really experienced riders that know how to come in soft here around six meter kites to remind you that we can see we can see the harlem of uh Leonardo, he is uh, on a six and looks like Edgar, what is he on here? That looks like a six as well. It looks, looks a bit, like a six to it me. It does look a bit bigger or a bit wider and flatter than perhaps that Harlem. Mm -hmm. A bit more open. Yeah. Uh, it might give him a little bit more height, uh, but it might sacrifice a bit in the tightness of the turns of the kite. We'll, we'll, let's see how this unfolds. It's a two different shape, three different shapes of kites, I would say. Uh, and to come back to the choppy landings, when you grab a six to do doubles, it also makes it harder for you to land your tricks because you're coming down with more speed. The kite has less, uh, less fabric to catch you, uh, so it's harder for the riders to, to execute these maneuvers on the smaller kites, uh, which is what the progression we've seen in the, la in the last years in Big Air. Uh, and it's interesting to see which of these riders has the most control of these kites. Around five months it's been then since we've seen these guys out there at the Red Bull King of the Air. So much has changed as well. So many tricks have been invented in that time. I think it's for certain we're going to see triple loops here today, which is crazy. We were getting excited about doubles last year. We will see, I mean, will we see the board osmosis, the trap moves that Andrea Principi has now brought into this? It's it's getting ridiculous. I mean, so much risk to that move, Marianne. You let go of the board there, you're, you're all... Well, I guess you're in the way of the heat for a yeah. while and uh, maybe you just body drag straight out. It's not really uh, a bit frowned upon to leave your board in a landing area, but are we going to see that maybe near the finals when someone really has to go for it? Well, the riders have seven attempts in total and three of them will count. So we might see these maneuvers if they've done five or six very solid tricks and they really need to uh, do something else to, to perform well. Uh, we might see these board Moses moves where you you ditch the board, do a rotation and try to grab the board after your rotation. But these indeed are very, very risky moves and I haven't seen uh, someone consistently landing these because you need a little bit of luck, I think, to, to land these tricks. Uh, but we will for sure see some of the biggest double loops and perhaps triple loops for sure that we've seen since, since King of the Air and maybe even bigger than King of the Air. Uh, this spot is, if you catch the gust right, you can really go super, super high. Uh, and put the kite uh, three times round uh, or two times round, one time round the other way. It's called a snake loop, uh, which I've seen Leonardo do here uh, last week, a big snake loop. So that's going to be very interesting to see. Snake loop being double loop with the backhand, then a front hand yeah. at the end. There's uh, lots of abbreviations here we have to get our head round, but uh, I think we're going to see the full works here. This, this without doubt, Ryan, is going to be a showcase of the, uh, you know, of where we are in big air kiteboarding. It's always really special to be here, to be not only talking about what we're seeing on your screens here, which is this wonderful, beautiful morning in here, as we just get a nice bit of calm in the live stream booth as the doors not 
slamming anymore. It's the it's the perfect forecast today, Ryan. We we you know it's we, we've set off early this morning with the men. I think they'll be trying to get through the men. There's a good forecast again tomorrow, so the the women may have to be the ones on standby for now. But all geared up to get to sort of the crescendo of the event in the afternoon, where we where the strongest forecast is over forty knots. Yeah, we saw uh, on the forecast already that the proper proper wind is coming through between 11 and, and 2, 11 and 3. But I'm very surprised already when I came to the beach this morning that it was more windy than it was saying on the forecast already. So that only means great things for the afternoon. Uh, I think that we're going to have a very action-packed day. It's going to be a long day of competition since we have a lot of heats to go through. We have 24 men and 12 women and these will all battle it out today. Uh, to, to compete in the, the strongest wind of this month, the month of April, which was the wind window, is the wind window of the Lord of Tram. And uh, the Lord of Tram is usually run in the first few days of the wind window since it's so windy here in Barcares. It's uh, windy very often. Riders come here to train all over the world. Such a special place to kite. So the red flag is up, the high red flag. You will see this just to the right-hand side. There it is. That indicates less than two minutes until the first rider will perform his move. Just to confuse things, there is also a red rash vest flag. You'll see the bigger flags there just by the, uh, the, the, the little blue one there. They are the big ones for the riders to, to showcase which rider is going to be performing the first move. And it will be Leonardo Casati who has uh, least ranked in this, Edgar Ulrich. In the middle, Mark Jacobs, the highest ranked here in this heat, seed six. And that comes from his performances over 2023, um, which have been pretty good. And um, he will be rewarded for those performances by being the last to perform his move in sequence. That always is a benefit as you are the one that can react to what's going on. Sometimes that's not always the benefit. If you just did not one of those moves and you don't care, no pressure, go crazy first in the, the sequence, which will be Leo Casati's goal i imagine but brothers here taking uh, taking part in this event because leonardo casati along with his brother that everybody knows in the sport it's his first event and i wonder how he's feeling down there maybe we can get those uh, bpms going <laughs> of the surfer app which we have loads of data from these riders which has really evolved the way we are able to see what's going on especially for the riders they can actually see their scores on their on their wrists now which is pretty special so not far away until we get started. It's, you know, must be about 90 seconds. After the red flag will be the yellow. And there is the scene right there. The two riders going um, actually first and third in order. That red flag's going to drop down to a yellow, which there indicates 60 seconds until the start of this. Let's just remind you then that these riders are going to get seven trick attempts. Okay, so... We're going to see 21 trick attempts during these three-man heats to start with, but their best three tricks will count. That was actually agreed by the riders. Originally, four was uh, presented to them, and they felt that three would be way better for them. So their three best trick attempts out of 10, maximum score 30. They can't do the same trick, though, three times. They have to try and keep it a bit uh, varied and how does that work so uh, your top three tricks have to be different variations the judges will look at how, how you're looping your kite if you're looping it forwards or backwards how you're rotating if you're looping if you're rotating forwards or backwards and if you're taking your board off and the top three scoring tricks have to be different maneuvers so uh, the riders are pushed towards uh, having variety in their tricks and they don't have a variety score at the end of the heat because the variety is in these categories so as long as the riders perform this here we hear the buzzer and we have the blue flag going up which means Leonardo Cassati is up for his turn riding left foot forwards does he go in straight for a big double yes he does a double Me mega loop with a delayed back roll in there pretty good opening move for your first first ever trick in a competition a world competition here's the replay Marine. talk me through this so he goes up he didn't have the greatest power in that loop went for a laid back roll between the two loops which is uh you need a lot of commitment for that uh landed smoothly not the most speed and height but it's the first trick and i think it's a very good opening trick it will put the other competitors on the back foot already i think uh, and edgar has to has to face this and and improve let's see if he's gonna do the same move or or do something else we haven't seen edgar warming up really here he's kept his cards quite close to his chest so i haven't seen 
sort of what height he's got yet or what he might be going for. So just with this wind and the way the riders have seen that six metre go around comfortably for the double, it wasn't his highest one either. 6.77 coming in for him. Let's see what Edgar's got here. Here he goes, loading up. Look at that lovely spray. Little pre-pop, not the height, super height. There he goes, just for an S loop. What do you think this is going to score here, Marijn? For me, I would say this is, is a bit less commitment. Uh, the loop was a bit higher in the window, as we can see the replay just now. He's going up, he's putting the first loop, and then he's waiting a bit to, to pull the loop the other side. It didn't, didn't go as far as Leonardo. Uh, and there's no rotation in this move, but definitely uh, a good opening start for Edgar as well, putting one score on the board. Let's see what comes in from the judges. I don't think it's going to be in the same ballpark as Leonardo Casati, around the fives maybe, but hey, I'm no judge. You have been though, Marijn, which is lovely. I'm not <laughs> going to get you to play that game. As uh, Here we go. Look at this. We've got 131 beats per minute. Mark Jacobs looking relaxed. What's he going for for his first move? Straight into a Doobie front Doobie double. Oh, wow. There look at we that. go. Very technical move there. You've got to get that feeling right on the way up because these feelings, especially for doubles, I can only imagine is on the way up. If you get that good feeling that you've got a good takeoff, you go for it. Was it a good one, Marijn? Yeah, this trick needs a lot of commitment because you're rotating forwards and you're looping backwards. So two front rotations, two back loops, which means you need to pull as hard as, as possible. And it's hard to keep track where the kite is if you do two front rotations. We can see a score drop, 4.97. You're pretty bang on with that five, uh, Lewis. I mean, I'm a bit unhappy. I was 0.3 out. Well, <laughs> 0.03. <laughs> Meanwhile, back to the action then. Leo Casati, after that pretty decent start, sets up. It's going to be an S loop for him. He probably would have seen or, or knows maybe the score that came in for uh, for Edgar. I think it's going to be at least half more, half a point more well, maybe than Edgar's. He's got a bit more height on that one. For sure, yeah, and a bit more travel distance. We see he keeps the bar as well pretty close to him while he's doing the S-loop. If you sheet out the bar between the loops or between the the, uh, the S, uh, it means your kite has a bit more time to, to catch some breath. And if you keep the bar close, you're choking the kite and making the trick a bit more extreme. As we see a 6.07 for Mark dropping in and Edgar coming up. Uh, he's a bit more chilled than Mark with a heart rate of 104 beats per minute. His recent jump was 12 meters on that S-loop. Uh, so that's uh, the good indication of how high the riders are going at the moment. Setting up right foot forwards then, Edgar here. You could just tell by his body language here, trying to get right in the pocket, nice and close, right foot forwards. We've seen lots of this. It looks like a good opportunity to ride both directions today. It's a perfect angle for this spot. We've got a nice wide shot here. It's not super high, this one. I think that was just a boogie double, perhaps, but mm -hmm. not super high. Just got round in the end. Yeah. Doesn't seem like uh, Edgar caught the gust in this move. Here we see the replay. He went for a front rotation here. Committed, though, to the double, keeping the bar in as he didn't go as high, so he needs to pull the kite uh, quickly around so he has time to land again. We saw a uh, 5.23 coming in for the S loop for Leonardo, which is a bit higher than the one for Edgar indeed. Uh, and here we see Mark again coming up for his turn. Uh, Mark Jacob is in the red lycra. The red flag is up. The riders have a minute to perform their trick. Uh, so far, they've been going quite quickly in sequence. But if they don't feel the gust, if they don't feel the uh, wind, they have some time to wait. Just looks like the wind calmed down as it's supposed to have done in the morning here. It's not blowing the live stream booth so much. And Mark now searching for a right foot forwards tack. And I wonder if we're going to see the same heights as we've done for the first few moves here. Yeah, no. No takeoff at all there. For Mark, loses the board. So that he's okay there, though. He'll just see that as a, a zero. Remember, a reminder, they get seven trick attempts and three of their best moves are going to count. And, you know, what's interesting is they take it in turns here is that sometimes one of the other riders might get better wind during his turn. Looks like that situation happening right now for Leonardo Casati. He flies into the box, finds a bit of a gust here, pre-pops, decent back roll takeoff into a double back wow. roll. Double as well. Whoa. Whoa! And what was that, Marine, at the end? A blind landing? Yeah, it looked like he was going to for a blind landing. Ended up landing uh, straight with the kite, but definitely showing control to the judges that he can do a double loop with two back rotations and on the landing, squeeze in an extra rotation. Uh, quite good performance here from Leonardo. Being the lightest weight rider as well can benefit you if the wind drops a bit. But definitely Leonardo showing so far that he is in control of this heat. 
So it'd be nice to get a bit of a tighter replay on that landing. You think he perhaps just landed toe side and threw the bar around his head? Yeah, that's what that? I think. But I also have seen him in training do these tricks and then land to blind. Maybe he was trying to get to blind and the last second he hesitated and thought, okay. Just pulled out of it. Yeah, that's very possible because I have seen him land crazy tricks and land them to blind. It's just showing the judges some extra control and extra style. Right. Edgar then accelerating then feels like there might be a gust here left foot forwards and commits to this a bit higher this time an S loop board off Ooh. Corey just got round his feet didn't look perfectly in there Marijn but that was good control to open up the first of the board off categories here from these riders talk me through the replay Marijn there we go and you have to commit to pulling your board and your loop at the same time he didn't have the height so it was tricky for him to get it round and he looks like he's going Coming back in, uh, maybe going for a kite swap, which is, I think, a good idea. The wind seems to have dropped a bit since the start of the heat uh, to a little bit less, so the riders might want to opt to go on the bigger size right now. Uh, as we see from Edgar, there was a 10.6 meter jump. It uh, wasn't too high. The previous one from Mark, also 7. So we see that the wind has dropped a bit with Mark's turn coming up. Probably going to go for a double here, and I think he'll be influenced by Edgar's change. One more double. Ooh! Oh, it's nice. It's a big S-loop board off. And I wonder if he's tempted to come in and change as well, or does he feel there is enough wind? Here we go. Here's the replay. This looked good to me. This looks pretty good. He, he caught the gust. Had good horizontal horizontal pull from the kite, actually, compared to the S-loop from, from Edgar. Uh, it is a quite a tricky challenge to to switch or not switch kites. It's a, You need to have a caddy with a... Good mindset as well, that's confident in, in you changing kites and you need to be sure as well if you're going to change up or down because if you change up and the wind picks up again and your competitors are doing very high double loops, you're, you're on the back foot. Uh, but if you have the bigger kite and your competitors are underpowered, you're, you're actually in a good position. Leonardo is coming up for his maneuver now. High speed, taking off. And we see a double loop board off. Whoa, quite some travel distance and some time on the down loop. Very good trick performed by Leonardo. I think he had really good height on this trick as well. Good travel distance. Uh, and uh, for me, it looks like the young gun is uh, very much in control of this heat with uh, a couple of very good scores here. Uh, Edgar has switched, it seems, to, to a bigger kite. It looks like he's on an 8 meter now, just riding back upwind uh, as his turn is coming up. Uh, right now after Leonardo. He seems to have switched just in time as his white flag is already up. So when he takes back round right now, uh, as we will soon see him right into the screen, um, we will see him go out for a single loop trick probably. And he must be tired here. That's quite a quick turnaround. Come in downwind, change your kite, get straight back up. It's, it's, it's difficult when there's only three riders in a heat. We go, to, we switch to four later on, but of course they're you know they're going to get a bit more time in between but to make this pit stop you've really got to get on with it because it's a downwind area they can't park their kites up in the nature reserve there and just change as you can see but here he goes right foot forwards there we go classic edgar flip i would say going for a single loop with a double front rotation and a board off and uh, edgar has this inc incredible flip as we can see on the replay there we go so the first rotation is quite normal and then he goes around with the legs Holding the board off for a while, showing the judges some more control. Not the height he wanted, I think, for that trick, uh, but, a, but a good performance there from Edgar. It was nice for him to get that third move in here, because now he knows he's got three reasonable tricks in here. He can look to upgrade. He'll be looking to kick out his lowest score of a 4.90. Um, so he's in a reasonable position, but he's got a bigger kite now, and he may well be able to push a bit harder. So... Mark Jacobs on your screen, another rider donning the uh, the hood here. It is pretty chilly, always seems to be here. You can't come here without a coat, scarf, gloves, even though we were in shorts and Birkenstocks uh, just yesterday with no wind. But you can see there's still snow in the mountains just behind as this cold catabatic wind comes from the northwest. It's the Tramontan, Tran Tramontana wind. Can he find a lifty part? Riding a bit further downwind now is Mark Jacobs. Or there will he go. turn around? Yeah, he turn comes around back again. across. Marijn, I'll pass this over to you. Yeah, he goes to the right. Mark uh, is known for riding very good right foot forwards as well, which gives him an, an advantage. There we go. Taking off just in front of the river mouth. Double back roll board of double loop. Incredible, incredible move from Mark here. 
Wow. This is big. This is, for me, one of the highest scorers. I liked the kite angle on the way around that double. It was super committed. The board was there we right go. off during the critical point. Wow. That was an awesome move for Mark Jacobs, showcasing his right foot forward yeah. strength here, as you've said, Mariah. Very I think that's going to edge him out in front. Yeah. For sure, that's that's a very nice move from Mark. He's uh, he's riding, is bringing towards Leonardo what Leo is doing. Uh, very smart riding from Mark because uh, Mark went to the right, showcasing to the judges that he's capable of doing those tricks both directions. And Leonardo has gone li gone only to the left now, coming in again here for a trick with a double board off again. Looks like he maybe wanted to do a rotation, but didn't have the height. Still a good performing trick from Leo, but not the tricks that we've seen him do before. Standard then now. It's just standard moves going through the doubles here. I think he was maybe eyeing up a landing to blind here yeah. as well, which will give him a bit extra points here. But a big welcome to you this morning here. 8 a.m. is local time down in the south of France. It's been a wonderful, glorious morning. Bright sunshine Everything's clear. We've got a good 30 to 40 knots blowing right now, I think. Maybe 40 is a touch overrated, but we tend to do that as kite surfers. Talk about how windy it is when it isn't. We do that. You do that at the beach. Everyone does it, right? Yeah. Your mate says it's 30 knots or 40 knots. It's probably 20, but no. Out here on the water, you can see on your screens now that it clearly is uh, in the region of 30 knots and up, higher gusts. Riders are on sixes. They wouldn't be doing that at the top level. Here is Edgar Ulrich. Going up. Double front row contra with the board off. Adding a rotation on the way down. Sticking the landing. It seems like he's going on well on the eight for the single loops. Let's see the replay. Here he goes up. Grabbing the board. Going with a nice rotation, initiating with his head. Looks like a bit of an, uh, an uncontrolled landing to me. The rotation was not uh, that much in control, the last one. And we see the scores as well with Mark leading with 19.84. Uh, closely followed by Leonardo with 19.1. Yeah, this heat is not finished uh, by no meters yet. Mark Jacobs will now be going for his fifth move. And again, looking at the scores on your screen here, his lowest score is a 6.07, Mark Jacobs. That's a kite loop front roll, so he may well go for another one of those in a double form. There we go. Oh, With a board off. Oh, that's a big hit. He got stuck backwards. I know all too well about that feeling, Ryan. Perhaps not with the board off, uh, with my experience, but I feel that his rotation, he just gets locked up backwards, and it didn't really... Yeah. Cut, yeah, he got put into a rewind there. That's the horrible situation, the so hopefully... Wow. He's all right there as he body drags out the way. But he's just tried to upgrade that front roll uh, category move, Mark Jacobs. But still in the lead, but not by much. By 0.74 from Leonardo Casadi, who's had a great opening account of his first ever, to remind everybody, his first ever world competition. Yeah, Mark just not, not landing that trick. Uh, pretty hard if you're not getting the height. Here we go with Leo. Going up pretty high here with a boogie double loop. Is he going to try to blind? Ooh. Sensible, I think. They could have maybe th thought, yeah, maybe I'll stick this to blind. But as he's on his sixth trick attempt here now, he's going to leave himself with... So really got yanked out of position a bit there, but he seems to have landed it nice and clean. So I think this may upgrade one of his other moves, and it's going to give him a chance with his last move. It's actually quite experienced riding not to totally go for that and leave him with one more move. Because these riders, really in this three-man's heat, they're desperate to win this. If you can win this heat, you're going to skip the uh, the scary round two, go straight into the quarterfinals of round three, yeah. and already get a decent finish to the competition, worst case, should you go out. But and that isn't what they'll be thinking. But for sure, getting through in first place here is the start of the day that every single rider dreams of at the start of this. Just, just win your first heat, treat it like a final and then go from here. So here is Edgar Ulrich. He's got some work to do here. But look, he's not too far down here. He's got some reasonable scores. But this one feels is going to have to be big. And it is huge. Wow. This is big. Wow. Going for the Doobie board off with a beautiful flip. Oh, huge travel distance there. And Probably one of the highest it. moves of this of this event. A, a, a single loop. Highest move of this heat in terms of height. Uh, not in terms of score. We haven't seen the score yet. But there we see the replay. He connects here, Marine. There's no other way to describe it. He connects with an uplift. I bet he goes out of shot nearly here. 
out of focus wow. at least. But this was the moment where we had to see his real skill here. Piloting the kite one-handed, which is so impressive the riders do these days, and landing it. This is a big scorer. I can see here on the surfer, it's 20.7 meters. He went 123 meters far. That's incredible height and distance from Edgar. You see that the, the switch might have been paying off here for, for Edgar switching to the eight. Now um, Mark is up next. Uh, let's see if the flag is up. Yeah, the red flag is up. Mark's riding to the left. And turning around. Maybe opting for a trick to the right as he just saw Edgar catching a huge gust to the right. And he maybe he thinks I need to go to the right as well because that's where the wind is. Let's see. Ooh. It, this will be nowhere near the height of that last move of Edgar, but let's see what this looks like on the replay. You, just, you could just see here, it wasn't super high to start with, not super downwind as well. So I don't think that's going to be in Mark's top three scores. This has got very interesting heat number one then, Leonardo Casati. This will be his last move of this heat. Not much separating these riders, barely 1.5 separating them all so it's all going to go down to this last move lowest score for leonardo then is a 6.77 it's a kite loop back roll so we're likely going to see that category here will he be able to stick one to blind it's a good takeoff it's a double loop board off Ooh. back roll didn't get the sort of lift at the end i think if he did want to go for that but perhaps just trying to upgrade it is it going to upgrade his 6.77 marine it could it could for sure upgrade that 6.77 it's up to the judges um from the camera angles what hard it was a bit hard to see the actual height but he looked very much in control of that trick leonardo has shown very good uh, control of this heat uh, for his first world championship uh, probably carrying some of the experience from his brother caddying him for a lot of the biggest competitions in the world coming back to the beach now Leonardo Cassati as this was his last trick attempt uh, and there we go for for Edgar's last trick attempt who needs uh, only two points to edge out Leo and become first in this trick so if he lands a big one it's still possible for Edgar to take the win don't think it will be in the S loop category though, because that is the one with the lowest score. But then he, what else has he got here? To see, he's kind of changed off of his double kite, so he won't go for. It's going to be this tap back rolls, perhaps. Oh no, it isn't. He's confused me. He's going right foot forward here, so perhaps he's going contra loop, maybe. Although he's already got a contra loop yeah. six point one three, won't be going for that. So kite loop front roll board. I think it's going to be in the back roll category here left foot forwards marine and he's going to need to connect with something here but he has got the bigger kite that he's after it's got to really be in the back roll category there we for go. me no it isn't this uh front row contra it's going to be blind at best but oh, oh that was a nasty landing it looked like he switched back to the sixth or am i incorrect lewis because i think that there he went for 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 a double uh, front row double board off well, yeah, perhaps. It's hard to tell the number from here, but I definitely missed that pit stop change. Yeah, m me too. But it looks like from here that he's on a bit of a smaller yeah, kite. Yeah, you're, I think you're right. This spot really is about experience. We saw a wonderful moment last year in the final where Liam Whaley believed that the wind would pick up, came in and changed to his six. And that piece of sailing for me was such a good example of, of how we as kite surfers read the wind and we believe in situations you've all been out there when the wind's uh, not there and you think well it's got to come soon maybe if i jump now it comes when i when i go here's mark jacobs though setting up for one more he hasn't got the takeoff he needed oh. it's a devastator and is leonardo cassati about to create one of the biggest upsets in this first heat we've seen uh, in a while it looks to me like he's done enough to go through first here straight into the quarterfinals the lowest seed rider has done it 21.43 Mark Jacobs going to have to settle for second. Edgar Ulrich in third. So, didn't see that coming. No, no, for sure. We've seen, I've seen Leo train here, but I've also seen Edgar train here. Edgar struggling with the kite changes. Leo staying comfortably on the six. Being the lighter weight rider as well, being able to adapt a bit more to the wind, perhaps with his weight. But definitely a surprising result for, for, uh, for this heat. Uh, unexperienced Leonardo beating the very experienced king of the air riders, Mark and Edgar. Here comes some 
highlights soon, but this one's just uh, a warm up from it's Lucas. A warm up, yeah, you're right. Saw that red flag and thought, but we're going to have some highlights coming up of that first heat. A big welcome to all of you around the world. Bienvenue. I'm Lewis Crath and joined by Morain Prug. <laughs> that how I say it? I've yeah, got to get this close enough. Right, as we see some replays of that first heat. Marine, what was the big story of that first heat? We saw uh, the first tricky wins in uh, in France here with the riders having to either go for the six on doubles or for the eight, as we see here, Edgar, for singles, this huge contra front roll. And there we see Mark as well with the replay doing a very nice double loop back roll, which was one of the highest scores for him, a 7.27. Uh, an amazing heat to watch and uh, the young Italian boy L Leonardo Cassati taking the win here over Edgar and Mark. And we see the next riders in the heat already warming up a bit. It's Josh Gillett from South Africa. We go to a commercial break. I just lost my board. Help me, please. I lost my board. Help me, please. Ah, it does look like he lost his board. I hope you got that message, huh? And let's get him out of trouble. Okay, my friend. Help is on the way. Good to have a friend in the water. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back then. Heat number two about to take place here at the 2024 Lords of Tram. It is the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour first stop of the big air. I'm Lewis Crathen and joining next to me is Marijn Plug. We've had an incredible first heat where Leonardo Cassati takes the win from Mark Jacobs and Edgar Ulrich in his debut competition. But up next now, it's time to talk about Josh Gillett, Lucas Gramstrap and Gil Flug. And here we go. Lucas taking off on the F1 kites, putting the kite low, beautiful kite loop board of late back roll from Lucas, coming down slowly with a nice down loop. What a belter. Amazing trick from, uh, from Josh opening up his account. Very nice kite angle from, uh, from Josh from South Africa. Lovely control as well. Well, I haven't seen much of this guy riding. I've seen some amazing stuff from him unhooking and doing some mega loops right up there, which is pretty yeah. <laughs> crazy stuff that I saw. But how good was that for a first move? You know, 162 beats per minute, we can see. He's, uh, his heart's going a bit. And same as Lucas Gramstrap. I'll be interested here. You'd expect to be a bit of a lower heart rate with the experience. But mm -hmm. here comes Gramstrap. He's podiumed before at Cold Hawaii. This guy knows what he's doing. There we go. Beautiful front row contra board off. With an extra rotation, known in the kite surfing world as the Janek loop as well, because this is a move uh, styled by Janek Jaruszewski. And landing with a height of 14.3 meters and a distance of uh, 97 meters. Uh, good opening trick for Lucas, I would say. Uh, I think it would score a little bit higher than, uh, than Josh. Uh, Josh got getting a 5.4 for that move. And up next is Giel Vlucht from, from the Netherlands on, on the black core kite. Uh, riding in the red lycra almost identical heart rates for these riders then for these first few moves here he goes then heel double g wow look at the height on that lovely multiple rotations into a, a boogie that was pretty impressive just nice open big move to to set some scores off to start with talk me through this move Marion. Well, wow, that was a beautiful, uh, beautiful double front row kite loop with, uh, with the kite nice and low. Here we see him taking off, going in the first front row, pulling the kite loop, second front row, putting an extra rotation, waving his hand to show the judges he is in control of this move. No board off compared to the other competitors, so let's see what score he will get. Um, it's, it's different to, to do the board off or not because you're looping with one hand or two hands. Looping with two hands is a bit easier. Uh, so to take your board off during your move, uh, you show to the judges that you're so much in control. Uh, and Gil didn't add this, but definitely went pretty big on that trick. It's so underrated how much control 
is required for one handed. This is big. He's connected wow. with a gust here. Yank down wind. Miles down. We can he land this? Wow. It looked Whoa. it looked like a hard landing was coming there, Mariah. Yeah. It looks like it just bombed out of that one. Hard to control when you catch that gust up. Let's see the replay. It's going to be the full length of the replay, this one. He really did connect with the gust. And it's great to see right foot forwards are getting good heights here. He comes round, looked like a doobie. Oof. Do be megalit with the board off here, but the downwind speed he had as we need to switch quickly to the left foot forwards jump. It's going to be a double, maybe. No, it just comes out Straight of it. Straight loop, small rotation on the end. Didn't seem to connect with the wind as well as Josh did there before. We saw Josh as well. If you're coming down with that much speed, it's hard to control the landing with the choppy water. Uh, but a nice move from Lucas, not what he wanted. Um, but definitely a good opening move for these two riders. The wind has definitely just come up slightly now as we can hear the door going crazy in our live stream booth. And uh, Gio will be trying to stay nice and relaxed here. He's seen what can happen in the first heat with a Leo Casati. The, the rider maybe not expected to take that, but performed like a very experienced rider. Left foot forward then comes Gio, goes up. Are we going to see? Ooh, oh, he didn't. I wonder if he was thinking about. Jump. Do you think he was thinking double on the eight there? He's the one that can do it on the eight meter car. He can even do it on a nine, I think. That's that's for sure. I think that he was he was uh, going for a board of that back. I know a bit of the routine of Giel, uh, and he's riding the XR at the moment, and not the new kite that he's been using to do double loops. So this eight, I don't think he will double, but uh, it looks like he wanted to go for a for a single loop trick, as he always also sees that his competitors are on uh, a big kite that is probably not uh, ideal for doubles so he doesn't need the doubles perhaps to beat them let's see what Josh is gonna do here looks controlled this chance of landing oh no Ooh. just lost maybe a bit of lift with the kite it came around on a very strange arc around his head there just almost went behind him and he lost a bit of lift on the way down but he seems to have lovely rotational timing for, for, for me but that one obviously didn't work out but look there you can see the chops downwind now coming in left foot forwards hard it's Gramstruck. What's he got? Can he get the lift he needs? Nice pre-pop. Good lift. This is big. Wow. Huge laid back roll there from Lucas. Look at the distance. Wow. This is going to be a hard landing, this Marine. Oh, and he just, bombs out again. Oh, very hard to land with that speed in the chop. Here we see a replay. It was a huge move there from Lucas. Caught it catching the gust there. There's the laid back roll. Adding a rotation there. Spotting the landing, but unfortunately bombing out on the chop. Once you start moving with that sort of speed downwind at this spot, it almost looks like, especially where you get a bit more in front of the buildings and close to the beach, the wind angle maybe changes slightly and you, you're landing on maybe a different angle than you think you should. And we see lots of riders crashing with that much speed downwind. He must have gone miles. He may have even lost the board. He could well have to body drag back to the beach here for... I guess what is quite a, a simple move for the riders a mega yeah. loop delayed back roll. He's just no, he's got his ball back, and uh, the riders. I mean, he must be two hundred meters away from getting up back up wind now. It's going to be tiring for him to get back up wind and back in sequence. So, so quickly one big move where you connect, if not landed, can put you in a position where you have got a lot to do. Kjellfrug then double G comes in left foot forwards. The man from the Netherlands that spends a lot of time in Tarifa. What's he got for us this time, Marijn? I'm guessing he's going to do a board of that back. Oh, just a kite board of straight. The riders look to be struggling a bit with finding the wind, finding the gust. He's landing with a down loop and speeding up a lot downwind, seeming to go for a kite change, I think. Yeah. What a move that was, just to come straight down. He literally almost landed, rode straight down with very controlled landing that. Real, not too worried about things at the moment, but as yet... Still a long way to go in this heat number two. It's the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. Big air, round one here, Lords of Tram 2024. Looks like he's going to go right foot forwards here. Josh Gillett from South Africa. Just one of two riders coming from South Africa. 18. There we go, taking off. Wow. I love, it. I love the way he goes into these front rolls. Can he stick this? This is going to be a big score. Wow, that's a, that's a very nice landing from Josh. Oh, and just bombing out at the last second. We see the replay. He sends the kite actually quite a bit forward before he pulls the loop, which gives him a bit more height. Uh, but unfortunately, I see, him, I see him body dragging downwind. Here we see the replay, though. Sending the kite forward and now looping the kite. It, it gives him a lot of amount of height. There it looked like he was very much in control of the landing. But at the last second... Oh, we don't <laughs> see it on the replay. But it looks like he landed there, but yeah, they all... 
you have to be in complete control and he just crashed off that I absolutely love the way he goes into his boogie loops or doobie loop rotations. They're very controlled. They're slow. And he's looping it backwards on for me with a nice slow front roll. He's not... I don't tend to find the full inverted ones are as powerful sometimes. Your body position can't lock in as much power, mm -hmm. in my opinion. He he nails that takeoff and that positioning. But unfortunately, the landing, not there. Graham Strutt. Kai loop, laid back roll. Oh, bombing out of that one, a bit of a butt check. These riders are, seem to be struggling a bit with uh, finding the right takeoffs, finding the right gusts. Here we see a replay of Lucas on that late back roll. Some spray coming off his board, so definitely powered, taking off here. But not catching the gusts. We see that they, they're not elevating as high and bombing out a bit there, which cost him some points on that trick. Here is Kilflug, already managed a pit stop in between his last move there. It's how quickly these riders get back. I'm going to time the next pit stop because it's just amazing how they do this. So for sure we're going to see a double here, Moraine, but which yeah. double are we going to see? It's going to be a right foot Turning forward around. one, perhaps, or is he trying to buy some more time Looks like to go it's getting left? more and more windy. So I think it's a good choice for Gil to switch to, I think it's the seven meter kite. It looks like it's picked right up. Look at these white caps. Much closer wow. succession to this each is, uh, other. Working out for Gil, I think. If so he manages to catch this one. Left foot forwards here. What variety do you think we're going to see of some sort of double? I say we're going to see a double with a laid back roll in between the loops. As this is the, the trick Gil likes the most. S Let's see here. I'm going S loop. No. It wow, oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Huge trick from Gil. Wow. Oh, a bit of a choppy landing. Couldn't oh, take it. Bombing out there. Great example of how hard it is to land here. He connects here, Marine. He goes way up in the sky here, almost out of the shot. And it's a classic delayed back roll double from him. I mean, just look how much time he has after these kite loops are complete. There wow. he goes. And he was in full control. Had loads of time to try and spot the landing. but That's where we see the trickiness come in with the, the chops on the landing. Uh, landing with a lot of speed, you need to actually uh, send the kite slowly around so you land soft and you have time to, to maneuver around this job. We see all these competitors in this heat struggling a bit with that. Uh, as we see, Josh Gillett has uh, changed as well to a smaller kite. Looks like he's on a 6 meter. Probably going to opt for some doubles as well. Uh, unfortunately for Giel there, a huge move but another controlled landing so that's going to cost him a lot of points. Uh, and he's definitely going to try that move again, I think, in his next attempt, as we do see that the wind has picked up by a lot now. Um, the two riders uh, on the smaller kites are Gil and Josh, and Luca staying out on the eight, uh, going for singles. Uh, and let's see what Josh is going to do here. Riding to the left. Powered up. There he goes. Double loop with a late back roll in between the loops. A lot less height and distance than Gil, but sticking the landing. So I would say that that would score higher than Gil because he did land it very cleanly. On the seven there, he was on the seven. I'm not sure Gil will get anything for that move where he he well, he looked like he had quite a big butt check earlier on. Or are you talking about another move? No, that's, that is the move uh, we see in the scoring system that maybe there's not a not a score for him there, uh, which makes sense because he didn't, uh, yeah, didn't really he, land that trick. It was it may have been scored heavily butt checked, but then he. He crashed the butt check in some yeah. ways. So a nice move. Looked like a seven meter kite that was for um, for Josh. But here's Lucas Graham strapped here, who's currently in third place. Could do with something big here. This heat is flying by. Two, three, four. It's his fifth trick attempt here. So you know they get seven trick attempts to remind you, and it's their three best scores. It's the kite loop front roll board off that's highest scoring for Graham strap at this moment in time. So. Will he perhaps go and change it up? He, we believe, is on an 8-meter kite. Is that right, Yeah, Brian? We think yeah. so. 8-meter nitro. It's a bigger kite from Cabrina. Taking off on the left here. Reasonable connection here. Double front roll. Didn't feel the gust again here. Unfortunately, some extra rotations, but not a move. It's not a move with a kite loop, so it won't score that high. Unfortunately for Lucas, not connecting well with the gusts in the past trick attempts. We see a replay here. Double front roll. Here he wanted to go for the kite loop, but didn't feel the lift, didn't feel the power in the kite. Opted out to not go for the kite loop as it might have resulted in a crash. Uh, as we see Giel here riding quickly to the left, jumping. 
There he goes again. Repeating the trick. Double loop. Late back roll. Will he land it this time? Landing it. Stomping it. In control. Uh, that will mean that he gets some solid points for this trick attempt. Uh, it's gonna be we're gonna compare this this score to to Josh who did a similar trick, similar height, I would say, similar distance. Uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what the judges think of that. Is that what you do? You've you've been in the judging box many times in your life, Marine. Do you do you tend to go through that thought process of well, this scored that for a similar move before it should be in and around that. Yeah, you compare the, the trick scores uh, to the other competitors in the heat, as we see Josh going up here for a double board off with a kite in a good angle, but too good of an angle, bombing out there. Kite was a bit low on that, uh, which it's make, making it very hard to him uh, to land that, just bombing out there, losing the board and body dragging back upwind. But as you said, Lewis, yeah, as judges, we do compare uh, the riders in the heat to each other. We see, okay, if this, if this rider um, lands that, if someone can improve what he's doing, he'll get a higher score for that. Uh, and that's what Giel just showcased. Uh, first, Josh following up on Giel with the double back roll, uh, double uh, double kite loop with the late back roll, and then Giel answering there. Uh, let's see if we got some scores in for that. So Gramstrap just coming down to pass him back the board. He doesn't really want to be riding with someone in the zone anyway. But we're you know it's good sportsmanship. He's like, he is on the eight. I can confirm. Passes the board back of Josh Gill at the South African. Um, because he, I mean, the chance of landing on someone else's board minimal, but still, the riders don't like to do that. So he'll be given a bit more time to perform his move. There's no set time really that they have to perform their move. His flag is up. It's the white flag, which usually suggests there's about a minute to perform your move. But race director Cedric will be uh, giving him some grace here for just recovering that board. Perhaps also it was a bit, um, a bit smart too. He might not have quite liked the gust of winds that he was feeling because. For sure, if there's the best gust of wind in the world right taking place during that moment, you might change onto the other tack and perform your move. But very nice of him. Pass the board back. Will he be given that nice bit of karma for the takeoff? Here he goes then, left foot forwards here. What's he got, Moran? Lucas needs a big trick here. And he seems to connect with the gust, finally. Double front row contra. Extra rotation here on the down loop. Will he bother to blind? It's so risky there. It's just not worth it. You not know, worth it for him. He needs a good score, and that's a solid trick from Lucas. Uh, seemed to connect finally there with the wind, with the gust, as we see the replay, replay coming in. Getting good height on this trick. As we see him taking off any second now, going in a front roll, extra front roll, putting the kite loop. And there we really see that he's in control, rotating with the kite, with the down loop, taking one hand off the bar, and landing slowly in the chop. To, to not bomb out. And just as that move was landed, three riders bombing out onto the water there in front of us that you can't really see in your shot as uh, we switch back to Gil Vlu, but it's the riders in the next heat. Steen Omar. There we go. Boogie double from Gil. He's going to add a rotation here, showing the control, Lovely. landing it. And that's good news for Gil. He needed, he needed some tricks to catch up to Josh. Uh, here we go with the replay. Front roll, double loop, committed double, putting the uh, bar into his into his waist and landing there with control with an extra rotation. And just continuing into the rotation. Great lesson for you all there. Forget doubles and, uh, you know, massive moves like this. Even if you're going into your first jumps, going slightly into a back roll or front roll, go with it. Don't try and fight it. That's what these riders are so good at, that once they feel the body weight has gone around that chicken loop, they just keep going. You just got to keep going in a great... Example from Gil Vlug there. Just, we see that so often, especially with doobie loops where the rotational speed is already high. Especially when you're looping the kite again at the end, you just got to go with it. You try and fight that, it goes all wrong. So heat number two then has been quite exciting and we're coming to the crescendo of this heat as we see Josh Gillett taking off. I think this is his seventh trick attempt. It's a big double loop can he stick it oh very good landing there yeah. he seemed to drop that last couple of meters so that was a great score for i think that might kick out his kite loop back roll yeah and hopefully how close was he to the top of things here he was uh, he was in the lead at the moment but the i think Gil's score hasn't come in i'm not sure we have we have got a score for Gil on the kite loop front roll but it wasn't as high as his first kite loop front roll which was a single loop his first uh, trick being a bit higher with a kite in a bit more uh, more aggressive position. So there we see that the single loops uh, for, for Giel there outperformed his, his double on the on the latest one with only a 0 0.02 difference. Was that an error on his behalf going for that same move that scored 
you know, relatively well. I don't think so. I think it just missed the gust, but he might try this again uh, because uh, when he does catch the gust, this double fr uh, with the front roll uh, can score a lot higher than a 6.03. Uh, just not if it isn't performed that high. As but we he's, see Lucas. he's got to be looking at replacing his 4.37 here, though, Marine, which is uh, with the board off. You know, which is a kite loop board off. Surely a six pointer of that is what he's after. Yeah, as he needs that. Here we see. Wow. This is a biggie. He's going to travel big distances wow. here, up to 150 meters. He needs to stick this. Come on, really. yes. Wow, what a landing then from Graham Controlled Strupp. landing. That's definitely going to kick out one of his moves. That is a proper biggie single. Love to see those still done by these riders. I mean, I'd love to know the distance that he traveled. Here. Look at the spray coming off his board. He was lit there. Wow. Late back roll there from Lucas. Finally connecting with... Uh, with the right gust, uh, you see, we see his uh, involvement in the in the in this heat, starting out uh, not finding a gust and and resulting in him actually finally finding the gust. As we switch to Giel, who is uh, looking to improve his uh, second score, the five, uh, the four point three seven, the board off. There we go. Can he do it? He's going to be down in third place, I think. Here, so it's a big double on the card. No, yes, it is. Big double on the cards for Giel. And uh, let's see if that's going to, that should, he's got a kite loop board off, kite loop back roll, kite loop front roll. So it is going to kick out the 4.37 here. This is going to be close, this one. But mm -hmm. I think that last move by Gramstrup is going to do him quite well. It's going to be a tight heat, heat number two then, coming to uh, an end. Or have they got one more move? Only, uh, no, that was no, the last that move that was the Giel. final move. So let's see if we, we get a score for Giel. It could, it could shake things up. Currently in third, Giel. Gramstrup really not getting a huge score then for that single delayed back roll because it isn't the most technical trick. It was a big move and he went lots of distance. But has Gil done enough to... Uh it does seem like Gil has done enough. Uh, very closely though, uh, as we see 16.18 for, for Gil, 16.13 for Lucas and 17.04 for Josh. Yeah, so Gil not enough to get up into first place from what I'm seeing. But uh, let's go to the highlights here from Ryan. Wow, someone has just gone absolutely massive out of my window. I'm talking like 25 plus. Um, was that just a bit of fun at the end there from uh, Graham Strupp? Here is the replays then from this heat then into this big doobie mega loop there. And I think this was Josh Gillett opening things up that couldn't quite take the... I oh know he did land that one. And left foot forwards here. This was Graham Strupp who started connecting with some nice big moves in the end close heat that one Marijn it was a close heat uh, between these riders they all seem to struggle a bit with the wind in the beginning of the heat uh, finally connecting uh, with the wind at the end of the heat uh, Lucas especially going uh, probably that l the largest on his last two tricks not the highest technicality but definitely very very high and uh, powered as we see this laid back roll from him uh, these riders uh, had, had a bit of a struggle with the choppy landing, but uh, managed to learn throughout the heat, uh, as that was, uh, was, the, uh, was the replay. We go for a commercial break. Welcome back. Less than a minute then to the start of the next heat. And the banger heats just keep on coming from now. Evan Klein 
How do you say his name correctly? Was I fa- e- Evan Klein. Oh, right, that's good enough for yeah. me. Stino Mole. Steen, Steen Bill, yes. And J-Bo, Jeremy Bolando. There's only uh, one way to say that. Two Dutch riders in this one. There always seems to be a bunch of Dutch riders yeah. uh, in this, of course. 75% of these riders here are from Europe. That's 18 of the 24 to, to, you know, to show you just how much control over this big air fleet the Europeans do have. Opening up here is Evan Klein. Wow. Great takeoff here. It's huge. It's a double back roll. Mega loop board off. Looks like he's gone into three and a half rotations. What a landing. Wow. Maybe he's still fighting here. Yes. And cool, there's a man that's experienced this spot. He's 100%. been here and he's got a point to prove. Yeah, the kite fell a bit out of the sky there on his landing, but he really managed to, to keep control as he went for a triple back rock kite loop board off Evan Klein, uh, riding a, a beautiful uh, board schmieder board we see there and, uh, and uh, the, the fly surfer kite, uh, very good opening maneuver from Evan, I would say. I know one man that will be happy about that back in the Netherlands, Joost Essenberg. He's always a big fan mm-hmm. of Evan. Good morning, Joost. Hope you're enjoying the action. I hope all of you are enjoying the action from around the world, we are very privileged to be sitting right here with this beautiful view. We can see exactly what you can see out of our window. And, of course, we can see the screen in front of us where the light is just perfect coming from the east, hitting the kites and the riders here as they ride towards the northeast. And it's a nice takeoff here. Stino. Stino by the fin, that board off, which the, should score a bit more. Yeah. It's a beautiful maneuver from Sino, one of his well-known tricks. Board of led back by the fin. Uh, doing that trick by the fin definitely shows you're in a lot of control because you're holding the board at the side of the board. It's more in balance than if you would grab it in the middle by the grab handle. A beautiful maneuver from Stino, landing it as well, not getting the height and distance that Avon got, and not as many rotations. Avon getting a 5.87 for that uh, for that maneuver. And let's see what Stino is getting for this. It was a bit more stylish but less technical move. Uh, very stylish though with with the board off uh, by the fin one of my favorite moves me too it just looks so smooth you know the board can be blown all over the place i have a board grabbed by the fin here but anyway attention's turn to jaybo jeremy Belando, one of the top riders in the world tacker boards heading back right foot forwards now look at the speed he's riding around on the water probably going to go for a trick on the ride it seems no, no, he's not just the speed he giving needs. himself two options there, just having a quick feel for both sides. Not a bad option, but riders will have a preferred way they want to open this heat, but if they don't feel it, they won't go for it. But here he is, absolutely loading up on this slingshot. slingshot. There we go, going back around, not feeling the gust. Maybe he's on the smaller side as well for doubles. It's hard to, to see from here, but it could be he's been training a lot on this new kite for double loops and S loops. Uh, so it might be a bit tricky for him to find the gust, as I do really see the white caps increase in the last few seconds. And I hear the door buzzing, and I see his kite shaking, so he's probably going to take off on this left tech. Riding with a lot of speed, around 40 kilometers an hour into this trick, going up. Not connecting perfect with that gust, but still having a nice double loop with a laid back row in between and sticking the landing. Good opening maneuver from Jeremy. Uh, all three riders opening up with a back rotation, guide loop, um, and it's uh, Stino and Avon that added, a, added the board off, but it's uh, Jeremy that added the guide loop. Clean landing there, wow. So we go back to the live. Uh, we see that uh, Stino got a 5.73 for that laid back by the fin, so a little bit less than, uh, than Avon. Avon having a triple rotation and a bit more distance there. And Avon now going to the right. Taking off, just aboarding that. The wind hitting him. The gust of wind is absolutely nailing him here. I've just about got over my uh, poor communication of things shot. Sorry about that. He is one of the best riders in the world. And he's going to show it. Anyway, left foot forwards is Avon. Wow. Super high. No board off here, though, Marine. No, Bordov, definitely a uh, good height. He's been training on this spot as well to, to get a world record jump uh, height-wise. Um, so he really knows how to find the gust, as, as we can see in the replay here. Going super high, not taking off the board because he might uh, got the gust on the takeoff, which makes it a bit harder to, to take off the board going up. Uh, but definitely a good move from Evan. Uh, which means Tino is up next in the in the white kite with the white lycra. Um, we're just waiting for his flag to come up here. There we go. Tino's turn is up. Easy to see this uh, white rider with a white kite.
Wow. Biggie. Huge. Front roll, contra loop with the board off. What a landing. Very this controlled was. landing. Marine, this was huge. I, miles over the top of that mountain. It's going to be a big score. This is a Peter. huge score, a huge jump. Stretching the legs out, and we see with how much control he lands here. Amazing to see, one of the most controlled landings so far. Uh, Stino is very well known for his down loops, not actually his sky loops, because there we see 17.8 meters, huge jump from Stino. Uh, but Stino is, um, always has such control of his down loops. Uh, there are only a few riders in the world that that actually have that control where we so sometimes see his uh, kite as far in front of him during the kite loop as behind him during the down loop, which uh, gives him a very soft and easy landing just now as we see Jeremy coming up for his trick. Having a high heart rate, 150 beats per minute. Uh, he's stoked to, to ride here. Ooh, just boarding that, that tech to the left. Uh, I think that um, Jeremy is on a bit of a smaller kite, so he's waiting a bit more for the gusts, which the riders are allowed to do. I see in front of me uh, a container door being fixed, probably got blown off by the Tramontana winds uh, that are very, very strong at the moment. Uh, Jeremy coming in to the left for another attempt here. Let's see if the wind is favorable to him. Taking off there. Double loop. Oh, it's S loop, actually. Not the height you probably wanted. Great landing, though. Just making sure he gets those points for that move. Experienced rider now, Jeremy Bilando. Not super high. And you can see there that he didn't get totally yanked by that second loop, but made sure he landed it. He's trying to give himself and engineer himself the right position in this heat to go for it the last few moves. Because this is a tough heat. Steen Omar, you know, very good rider. Evan Klein, not been in the competition scene so much over the last years, but he's right up there. I think he might be the surprise of this competition. He's yeah, got that's very true. height. And we don't see too much of Avon uh, on his Instagram with the newest tricks and the newest moves. But he's definitely out there training. I know for sure that he's uh, training hard, pushing hard. Uh, there's great content on Avon's YouTube channel where he's chasing the most extreme wins. Uh, he recently went to Ireland to chase some 17 knots of wind, trying to jump a world record. So there's some incredible kite footage on his YouTube channel. As we see him checking around, not finding uh, the right gust, just being patient, which is a smart move, I would say. Uh, you need to be patient, you need to find the gust, connect with the gust. Uh, he's opting to maybe go for a trick on the right here. One point separates all these riders at the moment. It's a good takeoff. Go. Doobie, Contra, board off, into a third rotation, into a fourth. And, wow, how, I didn't think he was going to land that. That was four front rolls, I count there, yeah. Marion. And he just controlled, great control of the kite here. There we go. Look, it all looked good from here. And just as he swung around here, got a bit off axis. And there, pushing the bar out as well, releasing the, the lift he had, but manages to control the landing. So, Avon Klein um, is doing well. I, I guess you want one of the Dutch riders to succeed out of this heat. Uh, Evan, am I right? Uh, sorry, Marijn. Well, of course, I'm a nationalistic rooting for my for my Dutch guys, but uh, it's also that Jeremy is uh, probably the favorable uh, the favorable in this uh, in this heat. Uh, if you are uh, online and you've done fantasy, uh, a small kite game, uh, a very cool kite game. I mean, uh, made by um, very uh, intelligent guys who have collected all the data from a lot of heats. Uh, you can see that Jeremy is a big favorable rider. As we see Stino going up. Ooh, going for a boogie there. I'm not sure if he wanted to go for a double loop there. Uh, but definitely a stylish boogie. A bit of a wobble out of the rotation. 13.1 uh, meters high, as we can see. Uh, there we go with the replay. But as I was saying, Avon and Stino are, uh, um, are uh, very good riders. But Jeremy is uh, one of the favorable riders for the podium at the moment. Uh, so it's, it's up for Avon and Stino to, to bring it to Jeremy, to take it to Jeremy. Um, to try and beat him. So I'm, I'm rooting for the Dutchies, but uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if Jeremy is going to take this win. Although he hasn't seemed to be connecting too great with, uh, with the wind here. Bienvenue, bonjour everybody from around the world joining us here. It's round one of the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour 2024 Lords of Tram. Jeremy Balando. Wow, Pope. there we go. That's a biggie. Probably could have done three if he wanted to. Look at the speed he's got now. Can he control wow. it? Wow, that's expert riding. Was able to put the brakes on somehow there, which is essential. You just cannot land at the full speed of that trick. And look, here's a replay, Marine. Talk me through this. So he, he's waiting for the gust and he seems to finally connect here on the takeoff. And we see him go up very quickly there, going for the first kite loop and the second kite loop with a ro beautiful rotation in between. He was hesitating a little bit between kite loops, but very powered there. 
having a huge travel distance and to stick that landing that cleanly is, is showing a lot of control to the judges for sure. We see 19.7 meters from, uh, from the surfer up there. It's a very huge jump uh, for a double loop. I think that will be the, the highest scoring trick of this heat so far. Uh, edging out uh, uh, the 6.23 that he currently has as his highest score, Jeremy there. Um, Jeremy waiting for his third score to come in, being last in this heat due to not only having two scoring tricks and not three. Uh, and Avon is up next, riding to the left here again. Looks like he's on an eight meter kite to me. So we won't be seeing any doubles for him, but we will be seeing massive singles. You know, and it's touching 40 knots here for me now, just looking at the water. Would you agree with that, Marijn? Yeah, you see sometimes even some mist on the water, which is just the spray coming off the chop, uh, which does indicate that it's very, very strong wind. I would say it's pushing 40 knots. Um, and that means that these riders on the 8 meter, like Avon, is, are very, very powered, going very big as well also. We here he goes. Left foot forwards then, going into, looks like a back roll. Whoa! Oh, he just didn't send it. There. He didn't feel it. We saw a very similar position from Jeremy Belando that move and did commit to sending it here. So something didn't feel right on the way up to Evan, especially with rotations. There's never a good time to throw a loop if you're not feeling 100% about a rotation. These riders all terrified to absolutely to, to lose spatial awareness that is the biggest fear of any rider so if you haven't got a good feeling on the way up best not to send it but the best riders can still send it when they don't have a hundred percent feeling there we go with Tino going up oh, oh that's huge board of that back roll going super high wow wow what a landing oh the kite dipping out there Oh, oh, managed to control the kite on the landing. This Incredibly is, this is, this high. This is massive, Marine. Just going for the single loops. Stin, he must have gone 150 meters. Was that for our door sure. slamming as the door broke? The I think door. our door broke now. <laughs> Look at this height for the single. Wow. Look at the control off the fin and the back roll. Getting the board. He always gets the board back on. But he had a lot to do here, Marine. Getting sent landing. into a rotation. It wasn't over here. Slacking the lines. And he's absorbed it so well. Great example to you at home if you ever land like that. Crouch down. Give yourself as much suspension as possible before those lines get tight again. It's going to be a big score of that. Yeah, for sure. And he tried to improve his last uh, board of that bag, which wasn't the highest. And I think for sure that he will edge out that, that trick score with, uh, with this maneuver. As we see Jeremy coming in, his last trick was, uh, was one of the highest uh, jumps of this heat so far. As we see him coming again, waiting a bit before the loop. There we go, double loop board off. Can you stick this one very cleanly in control there? 156 beats per minute was his heart rate there. We're getting this from the surf app, which has a watch on the rider's wrist and look at this nice controlled move very calm for a rider he must have seen the last two heats which have taken place where the the lowest seeded rider has advanced there's been upsets he's right in that position right now as Stino Marl and Evan Klein were leading in front of him but he's just relaxed found some time to relax landed a big move and it should push him up the leaderboards he doesn't want to find himself in that same position I wonder if that's crossed his mind Oh, God, this has happened already, these first two heats. He is the highest-ranked rider in this heat. We can see that on the leaderboards. You can, too. GKOKiteWorldTour.com forward slash live. Just click the elimination, elimination ladders and the live scoring. So Jeremy Belando is seeded seven, not maybe as high as some of you might be thinking. But here is Evan Klein, the dark horse in this heat. He's committed to this one. It's a bit wow. later at the crucial point of a mega loop than we've seen from some of the other riders, but... No, nonetheless, it was a nice scored move. It's right. a repetition from his first move, the, the double back roll Kyle Bordov. I think the first one was a bit uh, higher, though, with an extra rotation. First one scoring a 5.87. So I'm not sure if this trick is going to improve his uh, overall score for Avon. We do see a score drop in for Jeremy, uh, 7.17 for that Kyle Bordov, putting him in first place with a total score of 19.77. And a nice score for Sino there on that huge Bordov laid back with a 7.3. Comfortably sitting in second, followed by Avon with 16.7 in third place. Big shout out to Keith I over in the UK and Jez Mondo Jones. I've been told was out of the water, on the water with Keith I at 5 a.m. today. Wow. That's pretty early. That's super early. Uh, I was up at 5, but uh, definitely not on the water at 5. That's Keith. Okay, right foot forwards with the white rash vest here. It's Dino Mole. It's very easy to see. They're in sequence. Remember, these riders 
are not just tricking whenever they want. And it just, it feels like they're all out there together though. You know, this is one very unique thing about this event is that the riders take it in turns and they just know when to go. It works so nicely, but we get all of our attention on each of the tricks, especially the judges, which is important. So Sino Mole just finds himself in second place at the moment. He's got a lovely takeoff. Ooh, wanting to go for that double there, just not going for it in the end. What size is he on, do you think? I think that's a six, perhaps a seven. seven. Yeah, maybe that's why he didn't quite feel that. On anything higher than these sixes, you know, sevens and eights, you've really... Definitely really windy at the moment, though. J-Boat looks like he's going to tack a ball here and go on to the right-hand side. Looks like a nice kite, that slingshot. He's really... I'm interested in just how he really edges it forward and gets that kite forward of the window just before he takes off. You really see it jerking up into the wind. So many of these new designs with the Lula and lightweight materials can get these kites right above you. These riders really want vertical takeoffs, you know. They don't get that nice vertical feeling. They won't engage the uplift. Uh, so the we container see is shaking. I think this is a very, very, very strong wind at the moment. And Jeremy's gonna go for a big trick here, I presume. Oh, just taking out of that. Maybe wanting to have the strongest gust he can feel. I think he's going to have to go right foot forwards here. I don't know how many tacks they're going to give him. I, I can't imagine he's going to get given. He's coming back left foot forwards again, maybe for the third time. This could be the first time in this competition we see Cedric getting a bit nervy, our race director, because they don't get loads of time. Here he goes. Into a... Boogie massive double. boogie wow. double with a grab. If he lands this, it's super clean. Wow, that was wonderful. Very Ryan. controlled there from Jeremy. He does. Uh, he's riding very smart, waiting his turn, waiting for the gust, and it's really paying off for him there. Going on the, the double, very committed double with the front draw. And very much in control of all the landings so far. Very good performance by Jeremy. I uh, wonder what this is going to score. His lowest score is a 4.73 of the three scoring tricks. So for sure, this is one score that will... Uh, come into his uh, into his trick list. Uh, he hasn't done a front row as well yet, so it's good for a variety for Jeremy. Smart move there. So just to fill you in with a bit of what we can see out the window here, which you can't on your screens, they've got the drill out now on the judge's door. Two men trying to deal with that door, which has uh, incorrectly been faced into the wind. And there we go. Avon going up. Wow, that's a huge, huge double. There's no rotations or bordels, but definitely very high there. Uh, he waited a bit to, to pull the loop, which gives, gives him a bit more height, as we can see on the replay here. Now, I think he was thinking about a snake loop here. This, I mean, he's so high up in the sky there, maybe could have pulled it. He was a bit after the critical point of pulling the loop. But that said, I, I think it's important with kite loops to remind people that you don't just pull the backhand as soon as you take off. The higher and higher these riders are going, they have to engage lift, accelerate, and go and go and go. If you were to see someone do a 50 meter mega loop, all right, we don't really see that every day. They'd have to wait quite a while to get to the top. As soon as you commit to that backhand, that is generally the end of your of your acceleration up, which you might get a little bit more with the kites pulling forwards again after the first loop. But generally, you can't just be going pull. It. You pull the backhand early in this sort of wind. You're on a one way trip to hospital. Yeah, and the advantage of uh, waiting a bit for the for the kite to to loop is that you have a bit less power in the kite, so you have more time to to add rotations or bordels. It does sacrifice a bit of style and power. There we go with Tino going up and not wanting to do anything here. Maybe didn't feel the gust there. Bit harsh that actually. You probably well, you'd quite likely get a return trip to the hospital. Yeah, we see the the riders can wait a bit to pull their loops, but the the judges really like to see a, a lot of power in the loops. Uh, and the earlier you actually do pull the loop, the more power you have. We saw that with Avon waiting a bit longer, which gives him a bit more height. But it's gonna sacrifice your kite angle. It's gonna sacrifice your power. So there's a there's a dilemma for the riders there to to choose to what what they're gonna do on the water. How do you define one way though? Overnight? If you're in overnight, I guess that would be a one way. A return would be a day visit. Anyway, let's talk a <laughs> bit more positively about this heat then. Heat three, Jeremy Belando currently leading this heat with Stino Mole in second. Evan Klein got a bit of work to do, but we are down to... Well, this is going to be a big one. Wow. Double contra board off. Was that a boogie as well? Yeah, double Whoa. front roll, board off. What a control. Loop. 
Kai Amazing was way there. out the side, Mirai, and he still landed ah, that. Here we can see the replay. Uh, interesting to see on this on this double, he was pausing a little bit between loops. Here you see the kite stalling for, for a millisecond there. Why did he pause, Marijn? Well, a rider can pause there a bit to, to stay in control of the rotation. If you're backwards on the kite with your board off, you cannot keep pulling the kite uh, if you're not that powered or that high because the kite is going to pull you down. Uh, there, Jeremy waiting a little bit for the kite to catch some breath, have some more tension on the front lines, climb a bit longer before he pulled the second loop. 16.1 meters and 97 meters of travel distance for, for Jabo there. Uh, incredible trick. Kite loop front roll category, 4.93 is what Evan will be looking to kick out here if he's going to make a change in his position. He's currently in third place. This is his last trick attempt. He's only really crashed one move, but he has got... Hold on, have I been looking at the total wrong guy? Probably. I think I've been looking at Steno there, so forget all of that. His lowest score here is a 5.37, just a kite loop. So the, the be, last one. So he'll be looking for some sort of double. Both his last two moves, the variations of... Probably go, going to go for a double here, as we can see him taking off. Not getting the gust. Unfortunately, not getting the gust up there. Having the, the the same move as Tino with just a normal jump, uh, it's it's tricky for the riders to to go up and feel feel the gust. As soon as they feel the gust, they go for the trick. But you can't. It's hard to tell on your takeoff if you're, if you're actually gonna catch the gust. Six meter Harlem is out in front behind me here, just getting blown off the water nearly. It is absolutely nuking here down in Bacares, which is. Not far from Spain, actually. We were just about a 40-minute drive up from the border. Many people flying into Barcelona and driving north. Some flying into Montpellier and flying south. Maybe the ones which have got a bigger budget <laughs> <laughs> to do things. But Or you can fly into Perpignan. I've done that before in the old days. Left foot forwards is Stino oh. Mole here. That's a is it... Is he going to try and claim that wasn't a trick attempt? Marim, how do you feel about that as a judge? What would you be pressing on your... It on your iPad, there is a there is a certain uh, height where the judges say you're you're at a certain height where you could have pulled a trick. This was two point six meters. Uh, I would mm. say this is a this is a, an aborted trick as his flag is still up. Uh, probably gonna get another attempt here, taking off there. Gonna go for the double here. No, that was very interesting. So, Ryan, you would have been ta oh big bomb out there. What happened at the end there? So you would have been tapping your crash button as a judge there. Uh, uh, for for this attempt, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he uh, he actually attempted a jump. Uh, when you when you really break hard and you you want to turn around, it's it can happen that you go up a bit. Uh, and as a judge, you want to give the riders uh, all the possibility to perform their tricks. Belando's got the win here. He'll know that. His watch does tell him. Does it? Does he go crazy to warm up? He'll have to have a good feeling here if he bothers. Doesn't get a good feeling. Oh, he does. Contra Just loop. a big double contra loop. Looks like it. Very very late uh, loop there, very high angle, but not necessarily needing the most extreme trick to win. He can see on his watch what his current position is in the heat. Uh, so Jeremy probably knew there that he didn't need to perform any crazy maneuvers to take the win there, uh, which is a nice feature added by the Surfer app. The riders know now where, uh, where they are positioned in a heat, which is really nice. Uh, in this case, for example, for Jeremy, he doesn't need to perform a crazy radical trick. As we see Avon with a huge, huge jump there. Probably the highest jump of the heat, just a normal jump though. That must have been 30 meters at least. Yeah, we see Jeremy with 24 meters on that last trick. So a huge uh, jump from him as well. A replay, uh, replay we are getting here off the, oh, nice. the heat. We've got an actual replay. So you can see the red flag is up. It's Avon just having a bit of fun. Maybe trying to search for that Ooh. highest jump. Straight out, out of, of the shot the there. Uh, it, nice replay, we like that. So likely we're going to go to some highlights shortly, perhaps. But coming up next will be Shahad Sabri representing Israel. A member from the Asian continent, Clement Huel from France and Lorenzo Casati. Seed number two here coming up very shortly. I may well jump out the booth for a gentleman break. I'm going to leave you in here, Marine. All good, all good. Make sure I pick my spot here not to make... A mess.
There we go, back from the commercial break. I uh, just let out uh, Lewis for, for um, a gentleman's break for Lewis, but uh, <laughs> the door of our container absolutely slammed wide open and we're struggling, the both of us, to close it back up again. Uh, we see the new three riders on the water. We see two identical Harlem kites from Clément Roux from France and it's uh, Lorenzo Cassati. Uh, and then in, in we have a new face here, Shahar Sabari. Shahar is from Israel and uh, there's a very fun fact about Shahar, uh, which is for me as a kiter a bit annoying. I've been kiting for seven years and I'm nowhere near the level of these guys and Shahar has been kiting for only two and a half years and is competing in his first competition in the GKA Kite World Tour, which is an amazing, amazing feat for this rider. As I'm just gonna open up the door for Lewis right here, if you give me one second. Ooh, out of breath there. I reckon that would have got 50 meters on the surfer app. That one. A moment of pause before we continue with heat four of the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. It's the first round of the big air here on the south of France. I've just been outside. I, I'll tell you what I've just written on the WhatsApp group here. The situation with our live stream booth door is critical. We need a solution. We can barely open it or close it safely. That is the situation. We need the drill, man. Meanwhile, left foot forwards with a white rash vest is Clement Hart with a huge... Oh, he's gone into a rewind. Double mega loop back roll. Nice and committed here. Look at this commitment. He's the man who tried a triple last year. Uh, that wasn't the replay of that last move. Come on. So, Shahar Sabri, I've been told he's only been kiting two and a half years, finds himself a huge big air event in the world. Well done to him. So a 0 0.87 is on the board already for him. Not sure if that's correct right now, but we'll wait. Meanwhile, on this Harlem then is Lorenzo Casati with a big double. Nice and controlled. Yep, good start for him. Let's see a nice replay of that. That's where we're at now with this uh, with the big air department. Why we keep seeing a replay of that slingshot, I don't know. Good morning to you. It is 9.03 a.m. in the south of France. 40 knots here. Just close to Perpignan, we're at the Le Bacares, the famous spot for big air now. And you've just joined us in heat number four. I'm Lewis Crafton talking you through this. Marine Prug has just uh, left me in here on my own at the moment, but I don't mind. Oh, lovely, aggressive angle on this. Oh, oh, you just can't land that. That, oh, bang, kite straight down the middle. Unlucky that was for Sahar from Israel with the yellow helmet. Big move that was, but he just couldn't quite take it. Very critical kite position. It was very low down. As we now move on to 
Lorenzo Cassati seeded second here. The man that has run Red Bull King of the Air. There is the knock on the door. Marine is back. Now I have to fix this door. Be with you one second. Welcome back, Marine. Marine, tell me what it's like out there. Ah, I just went out for a, for a little bathroom break and it was super hectic out there. Uh, even getting out of this container is quite, a, quite an intense mission. Trying to not get the door slammed out of its... Uh, uh, I don't know what you call these things on the side that hold the door in, but... Uh, well, that's a pathetic bodge, we would call that at home. <laughs> but yeah, definitely hectic out there as we see. Wow! Whoa! This is massive here. A boogie double contralute by Clement. That's one of the best ones I've ever seen. Wow. Of here we see move. the replay. Was that an S loop or a double loop? A contraloop double, I thought. Yeah. It was. And, and the commitment of that last one, he had almost no connection with the kite. That would have felt scary. This has got to be way up in the eights and beyond for me, Mariah. And they're still looking for him in the sky up there. Yeah. He's come down, guys. He's down there somewhere. Huge that move from Clement there. He's so committed and he's really doing well. He's got this new sponsorship with Harlem. Completely new equipment and to, to perform those tricks already is a quite incredible feat from Clement there. For a second I thought it was Lorenzo, but uh, Lorenzo is coming up now. This is trouble. Oh, big crash here. Landing hard on the board and let's see if he's okay. He's, gonna, he's taken quite a hit there. I think there was a thumbs up. Let's see. Is uh, you just got to work. Sometimes you got to work out if you are actually okay when mm -hmm. you land that high. He didn't quite have the height here. The helmet's come off temporarily. As his teammate coming straight over just to see, which we should all do as kiteboarders. If someone's had a bit of a hit, you need to be there to see. You're the first one that can get in close to see if someone's okay. That was a big hit there. He didn't quite have the height that Clement did with his double just now, but he looks like he's okay and back to the board. They do take some big crashes, these riders. My bathroom break, I think I achieved 50 meters on the surfer app, <laughs> Marion. I didn't, I didn't measure, I didn't have to watch, unfortunately. Uh, Shahar uh, is up for his turn, um, going, going right foot forwards now. Uh, not having the the kite there on in, in the air for double loops, so he'll be showcasing some huge single loop tricks for sure. Young Israeli uh, Shahar Sabari, uh, kiting for two and a half years. Uh, as I repeat, uh, incredible, incredible performance for him to be in his first competition and to be in the GKA Kite World Tour World Championships here in France. I don't think there's a lot of kite servers in the world that are professional that can say that their first competition was in the International World Tour. There we go, going to the left, taking off there. Wow! Aggressive loop there. Didn't get the uplift. You just, they just need these big uplifts on the way up to go for those doubles, which is seeing, seeing lots of these now. We've almost got to pace ourselves here today, Moraine. There's so much action to come. Uh, the ladies are on hold as we start things off with the men here. I mean, and just if you'd have told yourself even two years ago, what you'd be seeing right now, you wouldn't believe it. In these first heats as well, everyone comfortable with doubling, board offs, contra loops, back roll, front roll combinations. Oh, that's Ooh. quite nice here. Nice S loop. And I liked how he was quite quick to bring the kite back. Not the cleanest landing well, though. Zero. Yeah, coming almost coming to a complete stop there on the landing, unfortunately, for Clement with the S loop with the late rotation. Uh, we get a full replay here, him uh, edging up to the trick. Aggressive S loop with a uh, with a nice rotation, but unfortunately uh, losing control on the landing there. Here we go, and just there we see him bounce over a chop, which would probably give him a unfortunately a crash there. Ooh, here we go, double loop border from Lorenzo, kite way far behind him. Unfortunately losing control there, kite flipping over itself. It doesn't look like the lines are inverted, but. Uh, Definitely not uh, a great start in this heat for Lorenzo. If 
Very nice aggressive maneuver, but not managing to to ride out with control, which is surprising. I've seen him train uh, the last week, and he seemed very much in control of all his moves. Uh, maybe it's the early morning. Maybe it's uh, the pressure of the heat that he's in. Uh, but so far, unfortunately, that's uh, that's uh, not a not a good landing and a crash for Lorenzo. Yeah, he's got a bit of work to do here. He's got time to do it. He's only got one move on the board after his three. So after three tricks, then. It looks like Clement has uh, got 8.17 he got for that last huge double contra. And uh, this is just going to be a mega loop delayed back roll from Shahar. doesn't really connect here. So it hasn't really opened up how he would have liked in this heat so far. Just there, he might have pulled the backhand, but didn't quite feel it. So a reminder of what we've seen so far then. We've seen Jeremy Belando take his heat out. Number three goes to the quarterfinals. Uh, we also saw Josh Gillett taking the win in heat number two. All the South Africans be very stoked with that. Heat number one was Leonardo Casati on his debut here on the World Tour winning that heat. We've got Max Tullett coming up soon, some big names. Julian Hun, one of the commentators in here in the past. He's out on the water. He's got Baby Shark. Joshua, who's going to be... I got told how to say that right once. Joshua. Oh, maybe I remembered. I was definitely saying it wrong. The Portuguese uh, Brazilian accent there for uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly either. Well, I just say Baby Shark. Baby Shark is a, is is the best name for him. Uh, well, it's most known for Baby Shark. It's the easiest English one to remember. But meanwhile, left foot forwards on your screen is Clement. Well, the, oh, that's a difficult one to say, but he is known. It doesn't connect there, so we can talk a bit about him rather than his move. He's known to be balls to the wall, I guess description that comes to the mind he really does go for it. he's had some big crashes trying the first triple i think here last year where he didn't have enough height but it obviously hasn't affected him now he did get a one-way ticket to the hospital that day mm -hmm. defined one way as he didn't return that day i believe um but he was fine luckily uh, all good yeah but it was a big hit that one we was all a bit worried about him but the safety here is wonderful we've got two boats out on the water two, two jet, jet skis. skis double everything is the way we like to do it so here is Sahar but it's actually Leonardo's turn needs something here Leonardo Casati the seed number two former Red Bull King of the Air winner there we go connecting there with the wind and it was a boogie S loop, I think. I believe it was a boogie S loop indeed, with an extra rotation on the way down. I'm but we can't be 100% sure. There we go. But I think we it was a left yeah. hand in there. Yeah, for sure there. Extra rotation and landing this one. I think he saw Clement with, uh, with the S loop late and uh, wanting to improve that with a front roll added, added there. Very different style in the air for me. Now, when I compare him to someone like Hill Luke, Hill is the, a real master of core control, legs tucked, never gets pulled out of shape, whereas Lorenzo sort of just goes with it a bit more. You see the body affected by the pull of the kite a bit more, but he's still in great control. You know, he gets laid out a bit more into the Rayleigh positions sometimes, but he's never out of control. Here we go, Shahar. Connecting there. Beautiful contra loop. I do see him riding on, on this prototype kite from Core, and I haven't seen him riding on this before. He hasn't received those from Core, but maybe they just come in for his competition. He was riding the XR and the Nexus for doubles, uh, the XR for singles. Uh, so it might be that he's just riding on a completely new kite here in this competition, which is a bit tricky. Uh, you're not used to the speed of the kite, the movement of the kite, uh, and especially here in this uh, Tramontana wind to catch the gust with a kite you're not too familiar with is quite difficult as we can see for Shahar unfortunately not landing that trick huge contra loop though from him as we see Clement coming in for a trick now he is connecting with the gust with a double loop with a lay back roll there not the highest but a good good trick controlled landing sensible riding as well he's looking to upgrade his 3.37 you can see that on your screens quite clearly at the top there that's his second highest scoring trick they can't do the same tricks three times let's remind you they get seven trick attempts their best three tricks will count but they have to be from different categories so he has recognized he's not going to do a kite loop front roll category again whether that's a double or not he's got an 8.17 he's not going to replace that height that would be silly to try 
try and go from one for that category. So he recognises that a kite loop back roll is a family that it's worth upgrading. He wants higher than a 3.37 for one of his three tricks. His last one, 1.3 back roll category, likely to follow. Meanwhile, Lorenzo Casati connects here with a back roll, double mega loop, board off. Wow. I think that was a double back roll, perhaps. Yeah. Double back roll, board off with a double loop. Looks like he's getting in the flow. He's celebrating there that, uh, that, that land. Um, that landing and here we see the replay in slow motion grabbing the board there while he's pulling the second loop amazing very much control there just having a grab and landing with one hand on the bar uh, nice control from Lorenzo and, and good performing trick there yeah and that's gonna put him I think into first place here now with three high scores he got an S loop front roll category scored of 7.17 it's an 8.07 the second seed here looks a bit more comfortable now with those last two that's a sign of an experienced rider now that was his trick attempts four and five which really have completes a nice set of three scores which uh, you'll see on his screen that just that dropping now well you can see it on the website we do apologize for having some problems with the website such as the volume of traffic that we can't manage. So um, your scores may be a bit later coming in. There on we the go, screen. Shahar. Trying that move again, double front or contra loop. And landing it this time. Good for him to get a good score on the board. Uh, he needs a good controlled landing there, and, and that was uh, what he needed to do here we see on the replay. How high is this going to score, though? It's not a double, it's not a board off. Can it get more than a four? For that, technically, that's not the most advanced move for these no, riders. No, I wouldn't say that it's going to give him a high score, but definitely a higher score than uh, what he has got on the board. Uh, but it's going to be very hard for him with uh, with uh, one attempt remaining, I believe, to, to edge out any of these other two competitors in the heat. Uh. So can Clement there take it to Lorenzo? Clement, he has the highest scoring trick score in this heat so far, an 8.17. Let's see if he can upgrade this 1.30. It's not going to be on this, I don't think. Oh, it has to bail, but it's a it's a nice crash as far as crashes go. Apart from not the too kite bad. Slam. The kite is getting a bit of a punishment there, but uh, I would choose the kite punishment over uh, my own punishment uh, as well. <laughs> I wonder if all those recreational kites that pay for their gear would say the same. If they do the same maneuvers, I would think they would say the same. <laughs> That's a very good answer, Marine. Still could do it, though, on his last move then, Clement, because um, Lorenzo's got some big scores on there, but Clement is up there, so he could push out the 1.30 at the end. And what would that leave him? He would need like a six and a half, roughly, mm -hmm. to to take this. I wonder if what's, what's Lorenzo thinking? He's got two moves to go here. He knows there's a bit of danger from Clement. His lowest score is a 6.03. It's a kite loop back roll. So one would expect that he tries to go for that category, but he maybe could go for a new category. So he's got S loop category done, kite loop back roll board off done. So he hasn't got contra loop on there, which is pulling off the front hand. He could go for that category or, or perhaps, that, perhaps that he's already gone for a kite loop back roll category on his first move suggests that's his easiest, most comfortable move. So that is what I think we're going to see. No, we don't. We see Ooh, a, a front roll. Losing the board there on, on takeoff. Very, yeah, well pointed out there. Front roll was a category that he hadn't got as well, Marine. So not ideal then for Lorenzo. He'll be a little bit worried about Clement now. Clement when he drops that 1.3, if he can replace it, that knocks his score back to about 15. This is how we do the maths here. Then he's going to need about 6.37, perhaps. About 6.5 would be what he's eyeing up for Clement. So can he put some pressure on Lorenzo here to make it straight through to the quarterfinal? My request for an urgent visit from the drills man, and that's a hammer drill, or an SDS drill that we require now to fix this door on the live stream booth. It hasn't been answered yet. So I'm hoping that door stays shut for now, Marine. 40 knots of wind coming in here. What do you think about that lock right now? It's looking uh, <laughs> not the best. <laughs> it's holding on for dear life on a little piece of metal there. Um, but uh, And the <laughs> winds are, are increasing. It's one of those dodgy locks you'd put on a toilet if you can't be bothered to actually do it properly and you know put it within the door. It's the outside sort of door you know the little long bit that you put through when i look out my window up. though i can actually see mist coming on the water uh which is an indication of how strong the wind is in this heat 
it's definitely picking up during this heat uh, with uh, a lot of white caps as I see and uh, when the gas comes through it's it's actually actually a meter uh, height of, of just water mist on the water there. We're not finished. That was me to the director. Sorry you heard that. We're not going to add yet. Can't go to ads now, Brian. Oh, this has got really exciting. It's the last move for all of these riders. What can Sahar do? The only man representing Asia here through Israel, which is on the Asian continent, according to Google. Mm -hmm. I double check these things properly. First with an encyclopedia, then through Wikipedia, which usually contradicts a encyclopedia. What can Shahar do? He hasn't demonstrated his best skills here. Oh, Going for you, just look there though. Getting comfortable on the kite during this heat, it seems. Oh, Landing lovely that. To, lovely oh, to see. Wow. We're hopefully going to see a replay here, just how much elevation is given to him after the loop. Yeah. The kite's never used to do this. Just look how he completes the first loop here. What, how are kites able to give you more lift after a loop now, Moran? Incredible. They're so lightweight with these new materials and these new profiles in the kite that they're flying up so fast that the kite actually just continuously keeps the gust in the kite itself, uh, giving the rider more time and more pull in the air. Yeah, there's no free fall um, as such like there perhaps used to be where we hit, we hit the power zone, we challenged the wind to see how much we could block our kites in with the older shapes that these more modern shapes now are pulling so vertically above us we have there's a good tension apart from when <laughs> the riders go for those second loops of course but here we go then this is the moment can Clément he was thinking about the triple I he think was. he was thinking about the triple and it's just a double it but he knows that won't be enough to put the pressure on Lorenzo Lorenzo probably pretty stoked about that we see a replay here firmly pulling those two Kai loops unfortunately not having the height but it does seem like if he would get the height, that that triple is really, really he possible. Was he was close there, wasn't he? He would have been close. All these riders love to skip rounds number two, which is the, the scary round where you will be out if you don't come through um, first or second, I believe. We can see there Lorenzo looking at his watch. Knowing he's in first place currently, he doesn't need to perform anything super crazy to to outmaneuver uh, Clement here. He's uh, sitting comfortably in first and having uh, the last trick attempt of the heat here. Uh, which gives him a bit of ease of mind, I would say. In these wins, uh, if you know you don't have to go balls to the wall, it's actually quite a nice feeling. We see him taking his time as well for this last trick attempt. So Lorenzo will know he's through here in first place. So how far does he push it? Can he be sure? Does he trust... Oh, well, so it goes for a big trick there. Why not make sure? It's also good uh, to to have the time on the water if you have an extra move uh, to safely practice the the wind of the day, the the takeoffs of the day. Every day it feels a bit different. Uh, the wind can uh, can vary uh, from from competition to competition. So uh, see for Lorenzo here, just a practice here on the last trick attempt, winning this heat, edging out Clement, and uh, unfortunately Shahar not getting the the best. Start of the heat, but definitely ending with a with a big S loop there. So riders finishing second and third in this first heat will go to round two, which is actually a four-man heat where the top two advance. So that's incorrect to state that you'd have to win that. That would be a four-man heat. But let's go and see some highlights from heat number four then. All of these heats now, wonderful watches in these perfect big air conditions as we see this from Lorenzo Casati. Looked like an... S loop set into a bit of a rewind for him. That was one of his high scorers. It's Lorenzo hogging the headlines of these highlights. There Andrew was S -loop. the S loop. As you could just see the bar getting equalized or leveled before that as a double loop, it would just be continuously pulled. More replays then of uh, Lorenzo, who did take the win, if you have just joined us. Another one from Lorenzo here. The double back roll, Kyle Board of double loop. Very uh, long sentence, and uh, these tricks are getting more and more complicated, but more and more uh, incredibly incredible to watch. Let's go to a commercial break.
wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. Welcome back. Is it the drill, man? We're coming. Hold on. Don't pull it too hard. It will break. Hilarious scenes at our front door here. I'll talk to you. Oh, it's um, it's Mike. So, Martin Chanel, Julian Hun, and Joshua San Ferreira are next up in this one. Missing that first trick, I believe. Sorry about that, as I had to shut out Marijn. How better do you communicate that your door situation is critical? Perhaps, perhaps I need to be dropping references to the... I believe it was a Boeing airplane which lost its door somewhere above North America. It might be a bit dramatic to... Stick that on my WhatsApp group, but I'm not being heard of. I need the drill guy. We need the drill guy ASAP. There's a film. Someone gets squished behind a big door. Forgotten what one it is. But anyway, back to the action here. As we see a huge, big mega loop then from Julian Hun. Oh, and a big bounce out. Caned in the chop down with. That's how easy it is to get slammed downwind here. Where have you been if you have just woken up and joined us? It is 9.27 local time here in the south of France. I am Lewis Crathen. I have Marijn Prug, who is about to knock on the door shortly, and I'll need to let him in. He is just next to me. He is the co-owner of SpaceX, a very experienced judge. It's lovely to have him in here because... We're getting that insight of how a judge would be thinking, which is just wonderful. He knows all the moves. And I'll tell you what, he's a damn good rider. If you take a look at his Instagram channel, Marijn Plug, big double loops, he could easily be representing out there. So it's lovely to have him next to me. Very modest rider. And we are overlooking heat number five right now. And this is Baby Shark. He looks like he's on a five-meter kite and he goes for a big double loop with a back roll that's an unbelievable landing what an unbelievable landing that looked like crash written all over it punches the water though maybe he wanted more here's a replay of that move not super powered on that that would be his kite size his five meter doesn't really pull him down in but what a landing i'd love to know the g-forces on that landing that was really special Shouldn't really be searching for a picture of that plane to put that on the WhatsApp live stream group, group. But I don't know how better to translate this urgency. I mean, they couldn't do anything about that door. We, we're on the ground here. Surely we can fix the door on the ground. Someone coming upstairs. They're going to have to stay there. I don't want to miss this trick. It's Martin. Chanel, he's connected here. That is a huge double loop. Delayed back roll. Look at the distance here. Can he stick it? He bounces out. What a shame. I would love to have seen the score on that move. Look at this connection on the way up. He enters. 
the vertical jet stream. That was way over 25 meters, I think. That's massive, double loop. And he just couldn't do the hard work at the end there, which was to stick it, stick it on the water. So unfortunately for him, I believe he represents Estonia, Martin. Apologies if you are still experiencing some difficulties on our live scoring on the website. Maybe you're not. But at least I cover my bases by saying that. And I'm not going to apologise if you're worried about your low battery on your phone. That's your fault. Mega loop, board off. Looked like there was more to that board off than caught the eye there. Perhaps there was a board spin. Let's see. Or was it a, a tic tac, perhaps? Very clean landing. Nice move then from Julian Hun. Ruben Lenton, I'm sure you're watching, picking apart all these descriptions of board offs like we did at King of the Air. I've got an interesting fact for you about Ruben Lenton. It is very often overlooked just how good a freestyler that rider was. Beat Aaron multiple times. Back in the day. Left foot forwards then. Joshua. Baby Shark takes off. He's connected here. It's going to be big. It is a massive double loop with a grab. Can he do the hard work? Lovely soft touchdown. That's a wonderful move. Look at the distance. We do not have the surfer data at the moment. They're wearing watches. We should be getting more than that. But you just knew on the way up there this was going to be big. He even had time for a grab at the end. So thank you for tuning in wherever you are in the world. We are in the south of France, just north of Spain. It's only about half an hour from there, so it's down the road, really. It's a wonderful drive to fly to this event. As I've said before, we drive in or fly into Barcelona. Well, some people do drive here, but we tend to fly into Barcelona, drive up or fly into Montpellier, all within a couple of hours here in this very windy region. It's the region to come if you've never been before for kite surfing, winging, anything wind related. And this is the top level here. Double contra loop. Yes, looked like that from here. Going to have to see the replay to make sure. But it was a bit delayed here. So that's why I don't think it's going to score super high here. All I've got to go on there. He's got a left hand on the board at the on the on the bar at the end. So I think that was the double contra loop from Martin Chanel. And if that's the case, we will see CL come up on that category on his scoring on the website. So still a lot to play for for these riders here as our attention now falls. To Julian Hun, who will perform his third trick attempt. So Kite Loop Tic Tac, he did actually get scored for that, his previous move. Just waiting for a score to come in for Martin Ronell's third. It's a 5.6, but oh, he just pulls out of a double there, does uh, Julian. But just look how hard these landings are. If things are absolutely perfect with this move, even bailing out of a move, it's quite unlikely you're going to... I think he was thinking about the double there, the doobie double. God, what must that feel like in 40 knots? The spatial awareness of these riders is something quite incredible. I wonder how many of them are training now with trampolines, diving boards. I think they should be. The speed of which you have to react off things like trampolines and diving boards. You've got to pick up where you are quite quickly. You get a bit longer with a kite, but you're a lot higher up. I think it would take quite some trampoline set up to replicate some of these moves. Nothing can replicate what we're seeing here. I've been kiteboarding 20 years now and I look out to sea and I'm just absolutely amazed by what by what I'm seeing. And you need to be here as well. It's one thing watching it live, but get down here one day. You can get so close to the action. It it's unbelievable. It's such a unique spot to be at. So here comes Baby Shark again. San Ferreira. Here he comes. Has he connected? Oh, the wind is big. Oh, it's oh my days. What are you doing? You can't do that. He absolutely celebrates. I think that was a double loop delayed 
inverted front row board off. Are we, are we seeing that? This is huge. Joke. That's a joke. That is a joke. You can't do that. Unbelievable. Double loop, delayed front roll, inverted front roll board off. That will go down in my memory banks. Probably for about five minutes, the way this competition's going. Absolutely unbelievable. Did you see that? Did you see that? Cool, that's going to crash the scoring system, if ever I've seen it. So, the Brazilian, the only man representing South America here, taking it to the other riders. This is a decent takeoff, though. A bit delayed on this double contra loop. Board off from uh, Martin Janel there. As we see another rider just going out in the next heat it's over 40 knots now there's no two ways about it the live stream booth is rocking and there's a bit of a pit stop from one of these riders and there is a nice replay of nothing actually i don't believe this is a replay so okay the door is not be with me or bear with me if i don't come back the door squished me Marine, did you just see that huge double with a delayed inverted front roll there? Well, baby shark. But it was <laughs> insane. Delayed was the, inverted front roll. It was wonderful. Yeah, incredible. I was on the beach and I heard screaming and I looked behind me and I saw him just flying, flying high above there. As we see uh, a trick here from Julian, just crashing that one. Uh, baby shark on the five meter north reach, but apparently getting incredible height and power there with that double loop. But uh, the wind out there is uh, is very, very, very strong. Walking up and down the beach is uh, sand flying everywhere. Kites flapping. See baby shark here coming to the left. Not going for a trick there. Nine point five for that uh, for that double. Incredible, the highest score of the round so far, of the competition so far. There we go, taking off there. Huge! Oh, single Kai loop. Unfortunately, not uh, connecting there with a double, but uh, incredible performance from uh, Baby Shark in this heat. It's time to look at the scores here, really, Marine. If we get a second to do so, but look at the heights these riders wow. are going. This is just absolutely ridiculous. Let's get a bit of a, an idea of what's going on the scores now, because it's getting to that critical point. That's last year's scores. We don't need those. So it looks like the riders are getting to the business end of this heat now as left foot forwards into the box comes Martin Ranel for what looks like his fifth trick attempt. Ooh. Oh. I'd like to have seen... Oh, it's two loops at the end of that. But I, I would I say those are more considered down loops than... Uh, yeah, than I would have liked to have seen them at more of a critical stage. So Here we see the replay. Um, we can see in between the first loop and uh, the other two that there is uh, quite a delay uh, which gives the kite some time to climb and to lose tension. Here we see and now he only starts pulling the other two and you can see in the way he's floating that he's not getting pulled horizontally anymore by the kite uh, which the judges will consider as uh, not a good amount of power there but definitely good height from Martin. I have requested that we see a bit wider on these replays, as I'm sure you are at home thinking, look, we just want to be seeing the kites a bit more. We're getting to see that out of our window, and some of the shots you're seeing are a bit tight, but here, yeah, that's nice. We're seeing the kite here. There we can see a bit delayed there. I was probably thinking about pulling the front hand, but look how hard that is to land mm -hmm. something you've pulled out of. So Julian Hun is in trouble here in this heat he's had five trick attempts now he's got a 4.93 on the board so it's not all over for him a 9.5 was scored for that, yeah. jay san ferreira with that kite loop back roll board off now i didn't think it was a back roll i was convinced that was a 
just a front a roll there. Just so a front roll, yeah. Did you, how did you, did you see it, Mariah? I, I didn't see it, uh, definitely didn't see it uh, as good as I, uh, I should have if I would have been a judge. So I can't say for sure what it was. Uh, hopefully the judges have, uh, have accurately uh, seen that though. Uh, they're the ones that, um, that have to pay the most attention today to all the tricks happening. We see the red flag up for, uh, for Baby Shark there. Uh, and if you go to fantasykite.com, you can actually see for each rider some statistics on uh, how much they jump to the left, how much they jump to the right, how often they do front rolls, how often they do back rolls. This is all data uh, collected by them uh, from the previous two competitions in the GK uh, and also the Red Bull King of the Air. Um, we see that uh, Baby Shark is very consistent in his landings. Uh, if we look at those statistics, you can look those up yourself for each rider on uh, fantasykite.com. Uh, check it out there. Uh, and also, uh, he does more more back rolls than front rolls in general. There he goes again up with a back roll. And, ooh, wanting to go for the double loop there, but uh, just didn't go for it in the end. It was too early on the first loop there. We spoke about committing early on. I mean, he did actually get an uplift off the second one. That would have been quite some block with the kite down low on the second loop. Might have been able to pull it off, but just pulling that backhand early on that move limited the the uplift he was going to get but still it gives me an indication of how aggressively he can get around that double loop sometimes um if he chooses but that looked like a back roll on the way into that which would suggest that this has been named wrong in this category because he wouldn't be repeating mm -hmm. um although it was a uh, he's actually got kite loop back roll board off so he's already got a kite loop back roll on there of a 6.4 um uh, so, ah so maybe he is trying to to improve, improve that there, yeah, yeah doesn't help us with that category naming but this isn't going to score massive that's the end of the line for the chance to get some scores there if it's not really on the way up it's not going to count as in the distance the plane takes off from Perpignan airport ever so slowly climbing not probably far from experiencing some turbulence don't you think I think so would be a terrible name for a kite that wouldn't it the turbulence, the turbulence model <laughs> the turbulence pro model <laughs> There we go. Julian Hearn just doesn't take the board off there. He reached down. Just couldn't. He's just starting to fade away then, Julian Hearn here, who I believe has competed at Lords of Tram before, perhaps in the early two versions. Didn't compete for a while. But he's... Uh, must he be he's uh, part, part French, so he knows... Uh, he comes to this spot often to train. I believe he lives... Uh, he, has a, he has a house close by. Uh, partially living in Cape Town, partially living here in France. As we see Baby Shark go up, let's see if he can connect with the double this time. Early pull again! Oh. But this time he is connecting to that double. Wow! Committed I love his back double. roll there. I love his double, Marijn, because he, he hits power, yeah. it climbs again, and he still sends it. He has a period of time of actually not much tension. Wow! Amazing there. Yeah, the tricky thing is when you pull a maneuver like that, the earlier you pull, the more you get slung towards your kite and you lose tension in your lines. And that can be very tricky because if you don't have any tension in your lines, the kite won't be able to catch you. So to actually commit there, pull the early double loops uh, and then have the time and height to land it is, is very, very tricky. And uh, Josue actually showcasing that he can do that. I think you can only really get away with that in strong wind. That it's going to push your kite away from you enough. In lighter wind, you wouldn't want to go anywhere near an early double. Meanwhile, Martin Ronell, this looks awesome to be good. It's going to be his biggest move of the heat. It's a double mega loop with a delayed back roll, but Guys he's got lots of work to do. Here we oh, oh lovely to control! control. You don't get better control than wow. that. That can yank you out straight into a rally. But clearly here, looking at this replay, which has really got us off our seats here, Marine. Lots of commitment, nice back roll, but he had lots of work to do on this landing. He lost tension, and uh, I think I might request we see a couple more seconds of these replays. Yeah, that would be very nice. We see with this guy that is uh, just dipping out the sky a little bit. Uh, we see more and more in materials and kites that they are going towards lighter materials. Uh, and if you have a very light material in your kite, it means your kite can drift a bit more on your landing. So perhaps if you have a Lula kite, for example, that kite will be able to, to keep up with you there. As we see an S loop, oh, from Julian, oh, huge crash there from Julian. Kite hitting the water as well on that S loop. Uh, let's see if he's okay. Still connected to the kite there. Kite is uh is upside down in the water, as it would lay on the beach. 
He crashed with the board on, so hopefully all good there for Julian. Could be in for quite some relaunch here if that goes straight up through the middle in 40 knots, which it looks like Turn it's going to do. Turning but, uh, around now. Yeah. Wingtip is catching some wind now. But they can take it these days, the kites. So it looks like he's okay Jet relaunching ski. the kite. Jet ski just goes out for a little run to make sure. Big hit, though, that one for Julian on uh, what was his third trick attempt. So nice move. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough from Martin Ronell. So it will be the last trick attempt, just waiting here upwind from Jay San Ferreira. Do you like how I've <laughs> changed his name there? Baby Shark. There is the scene. Looks a bit calmer there in the rider's setup zone where the public aren't allowed anymore. They used to be in and amongst there as uh, riders likely to be getting ready will be uh, coming up in heat number Six, Max Tullet making his debut, 15-year-old from the UK, our, our hope for the future. Arthur Gilbert and Jamie Overbeek in his heat. Oh, he dealt a biggie. <laughs> what, what a heat to draw in your first ever debut world competition. But I can see him out on the water. He's taller than me now. Probably was at 10, though. It doesn't take much. <laughs> yeah, there's one last trick for, uh, for Josue. Uh, let's see what he's going to do. Um, hopefully he knows he's in a comfortable first position and doesn't need to do anything super extreme. Goes there for a double loop with a front rotation and a board off. Adding a rotation there. Wow, wow, wow. It's incredibly to see these doubles from, a, from uh, this young kid from Brazil. In Brazil there's no way they get the wins like this. So for him to be this skilled in these double loops means he's been training very well here the last two weeks. Uh, he's got his dad here on the beach for the first time. Uh, for him, it was a dream to compete with his dad right at the beach. Uh, his dad carrying him and his friend uh, carrying him as well. Uh, and we see that really coming down here in his um, in his moves. That he's super confident riding with a lot of power, riding with a lot of style. Uh, and definitely, so far for me, the most impressive rider. Uh, and a very, very, very good performance here from Baby Shark. Uh, the young kid from Brazil. Competed as well in King of the Air in, uh, no in December. November, December, uh, which he had a good performance there, but definitely uh, it's looked like he's uh, polished and shining at this event here in uh, in Barcrest so far. Um, he was here a couple of years uh, already, uh, struggled a bit sometimes with uh, getting used to wearing a wetsuit, getting used to the extreme winds and uh, the colder temperatures, but it seems like he's adapted and uh, adapted very well with amazing scores here for uh, for Baby Shark with uh, a 9.5 being the highest score uh, that we've seen so far, a 7.4 for that last uh, the trick before the Kylo Becker, and let's see what we get for for this latest trick of him. Let's let take a look at some highlights from that heat, which will feature heavily. Baby Shark here. Where do you start with those highlights here? Although here we have uh, Mr. Ranel. Should we go with Eslu Bordov here, I think? From Martin. No, the double loop back roll. Nice trick there. Yeah, he'll be happy with that one. He'll be coming off the water here. Uh, this happy was the one with... Apart the from the landing, I guess. With a dodgy landing. There, Baby Shark goes up. Wow. It was a front roll then, actually. It so, looks uh, like it. It was a double loop front roll with the board off there. Uh, incredibly, incredible height, incredible style. And it seems that um, that might have been a, a bit of a misconception there, uh, but uh, might, might, w might w be fixed later. Uh, it will score as three separate tricks. He has incredible scores with a 9.5, 7.4, 7.43, with a total score of 24.33 out of 30. So that's a very, very good uh, start for, for Baby Shark there. We're going to go to a commercial break before the start of the next heat.
There we go. He just started. And Max going huge there. Huge Kai loop from him. Landing it. Wow. Wow, what Bit a, a but, height. Uh, the whole of the UK watching, holding their breath. Absolutely massive height. Maybe not as critical the timing of the loop, but that was also quite safe riding from him. Didn't really want to go sending it straight through the power zone to start with, but the height was absolutely huge. We've got to be talking over 25 metres. And I wonder if Max has uh, experienced these winds here uh, before and for him to, to be out here on the water and uh, sending that, that height and that power in the first trick is pretty impressive. Max started from the UK and, and next up we have the white lacquer race for Arthur Gilbert. French local here and uh, one of the French favorites, uh, I believe, for the crowd. Um, doing incredible moves with the doubles and, uh, and S-Loops, king of the air rider as well and uh, freestyle world champion actually. Uh, we see him taking off here with a front roll, S-Loop, there we see the S-Loops from Arthur coming in already. I think that was a double contra. Was that a double uh, contra? Yeah, I, I was, but I had the benefit of looking out the window that I time, right? You screen. can't see, <laughs> but it had the same sort of feel with tension though, so I can forgive you for that. I, I was just staring at the kite, which they don't like me looking out the window. <laughs> they want me talking to you about what's on the screen, but sometimes you you can't help yourself. It yeah, just in real life, it just looks unbelievable here, doesn't it, Mariah? On the screen, you sometimes miss a bit the. The kite, yeah. but on, on the live view, you, if we look out the window, we can uh, have an incredible view, actually. There's a crowd gathering on the beach as well, experiencing this event uh, live. So we see Jamie powering up here. On a six. Doesn't get a super lift off. It's just there's a standard an, uh, S-loop. S-loop to open up. Yeah, lot, seeing a lot of that today. Just yeah. sort of a standard S-loop. It indicates to me that maybe it's not the most risky, but it scores all right. I, I really am a fan of how Heel does that S-loop. Yeah. It, it, to me is the real S loop. It sort of sticks out, does, gets nowhere near a full 360. It's more 270 degrees back under, hitting the power zone the whole time. I, I'm looking forward to seeing his variations of that. But yeah, for sure. Pulling a move like that from any of the riders at any time in over 40 knots on sixes and even fives, pretty special. Back to Max Tullet then. Now left foot forward. It's a good takeoff into a, a, a doobie loop, board off, kite loop, but he just Ooh. has to bail out. Now, I wonder... If he's been kiting in this level of wind out here, he wasn't here last week, I don't no, believe. I haven't seen him. So this is um, probably quite new for him. So he started this heat well, just crashes there, and he'll have to body drag back to his board. But Max Tullet, 15 years old, and we will see Aaron Hadlow, the veteran here, coming up in uh, the heat following this one, who was well on the way to, well, he'd won his first world championship. Max Tullet wasn't even born. <laughs> Yeah, that's that goes to show the the age differences and the level of the young the young riders rising rising up, and uh, for Max it, it's it's tricky to to as a competitor to come into these conditions as a big air rider especially to to train these conditions is, is rare you only get it a few times a year and then to perform there and and then perform in your heat here is uh, quite a challenge, especially in the UK there's not often that you have. Uh, um, these uh, these flat water and uh, strong wind conditions. So for Max, it's uh, getting used to his first moves, but uh, I'm sure that he's uh, going to adapt quickly there. Uh, we see Jamie bring back his board, uh, being very uh, sportsman-like, um, but uh, Max uh, already back on the water. Big shout out to you all watching on YouTube. We know you're there. Brian Dew, Baz Cohurst, Michael Erhart, you're all there. We're keeping an eye on your comments sometimes. We try not to get too distracted, but we do love the conversations you're all having as well. Christian Lie Beach, you're there all on go. there and you're watching. This is... Oh, wanting to go perhaps there for the S-loop, but there we see you that the kite is pulling you so much. Maybe had a you, gust, you that know. That you uh, had a gust, you hit a gust, and the kite is pulling you almost as fast as the wind. And then if you keep pulling the kite, you're not going to be able to land that. If you keep pulling the kite there, you're in trouble. Yeah, the kite will go as fast as you and uh, as fast as the wind and will not have time to actually come up above you and uh, and, and catch you. So uh, opting out there for the S-loop, which <laughs> I think was a smart move from Arthur. It would have been a big, uh, a big wipe out there, but uh, we can see that definitely the wind there and the gusts are there um, it's very nice actually to see the wind as consistent it's ca it can be at this spot that it's like windy like this but then 10-15 uh, minutes later it drip dips again we had this last week all the the windy days where it was really up and down but today so far we've seen very consistent wind actually if we see Jamie go up here better connection double loop with a delayed back roll not the highest one we've seen today but it's somewhere in the middle it's not the lowest as well so Jamie overbeak the uh 
King of the Air podium finisher in the past. He's had some tough runs over the years. When I start to think about some of the heats he's drawn that haven't helped him sort of make it through all the way to the top. He's uh, Who did he have? I think he didn't quite get to the final here last year, perhaps because of uh, Gil Vlucht. No, he beat Gil Vlucht in the quarters. I remember he was on third last year here. Yeah. Uh, um. No, I don't think he... Um, yeah, he must have beaten Lorenzo. in the. Yeah. yeah, He didn't quite get to the main final. Liam Whaley done him in the semis but he's in and around it all the time and even more amazing with him is sort of his little break he's having between sponsors yeah he's riding basically Amazing. whatever he wants at the moment uh, jamie overbeck uh, which is uh, very unique to see in uh, in this sport most riders are uh, riding a kite that they're sponsored by they're working together with the brand uh, and they have to ride the gear that the brand provides. And Jamie is not sponsored at the moment, which means he can actually choose the kites he wants to ride. Uh, and choosing here for the six meter kite to go with the Harlem. Um, the board is still from Ozone, so he's a mix of uh, he has a mix of different equipments. Another rider choosing to ride what he wants at the moment. Ruben Lenton comes to mind. That definitely wasn't the case ten years ago. There was no choice there. I can guarantee you that. Anyway. Back to heat number six. Max, I think he went for a kite change there. Going to a bit of a smaller size here. Ooh, just not going for that either a double or S loop. Has he just changed? Did we miss a pit stop there? Yeah, he just changed. It looks like he's on a Can he go smaller? Now. <laughs> Can he go even yeah. smaller? I think he went from seven to six. Uh, but yeah, I saw him riding into the beach uh, just a couple of minutes ago to switch to a different kite. Wow, yeah, and since that's the wind is pretty so impressive strong. if he was on a seven, because we're seeing lots of riders a bit bigger built than him on sixes. So unless he's gone six to five, which could be a possibility. But here is Arthur Gilbert. And as you quite rightly pointed out, Marijn, a former freestyle world champion, we don't see often now. So when he riders talented at both disciplines, it's an S loop board off, just pulling on the bar to make sure he got that oh. tension. And he's been mugged off by the wind there. Kite Huge lull. It, Where did the wind go there? We can hear it's not on the, the live stream booth anymore. And his kite managed to find a pocket of no wind on the way down here because it looked all right, this for landing. Very unfortunate. And that's where you see if you put the kite in a very powered position and you don't have the actual gust and the wind that will keep pulling the kite, it will uh, drop you out the sky, as we see here with uh, with Arthur having to relaunch his kite there. And yeah, look, I mean, great shot there of him pulling, leaning backwards, pulling on the bar, desperate to initiate tension with the kite as soon as possible. And uh, so often with something as basic as teaching people how to land their first jumps, you can land and be leaning back, pulling, pulling, pulling. There's nothing there. In that case, he was expecting something. But when you're landing a jump and landing downwind, you've got to land on the board 50-50 like you've, like you've released the there kite. Goes. No he fault launched. of his own there, though. Just expecting a gust to be there yeah. that perhaps didn't, didn't ever come. Which is, a, which is a tricky thing at this spot. Uh, the wind is, uh, can be surprising, and to, to feel and to maneuver your tricks around that wind is challenging. Arthur being very experienced, though, at this spot, uh, and unfortunately missing out on that, on that wind on this trick. Uh, but he's back up uh, riding up wind again, uh, which means it's the turn for Jamie. Uh, I see Jamie on the on the left of me uh, going to the left as well, uh, powering up now. There he goes. Classic takeoff from Jamie. Very railed. It's a huge S loop board off. Lots of control. Grab on the way down. That is a lot of confidence to take the hand off and grab it. You don't need to grab it at the end. It shows the judges style and control. Interesting for me here is this replay plays out, Marijn. He's been flying a D-Lab Durotone for quite some time. He swapped over to the Harlem. I wonder if that was influenced by seeing some of the earlier heats today. That can be right. Here we see the incredible Eslu Bordov with the stretched out legs. What a shot. Incredible shot there from the camera. Um, yes, he can He can have the choice to look around what kites are performing uh, on, on what tricks and choosing to ride with that kite. Um, we see here as well, uh, maybe a strategy from uh, Jamie as we see Max go up there. Oof! Bins it off. Didn't wow. quite get the height I think he would have liked and he gets absolutely nailed downwind. That board's way upwind. He just didn't quite get the height to go for that double. Another couple of metres and he might have gone for it. So Max Tullet it's got some work to do here, but he's definitely got the tricks. And it's so good to see the riders. They just come over. It's the quickest thing for all of us, really. Here's your board. Out you go. And it just saves us another few minutes because actually, I mean, this is the next rider in sequence to go here, Arthur. You, you wouldn't have seen this 
so much in my day. But then you would have been riding at the same time. There'd have been the pressures of, of time. This really is the right thing to do now because, he, of course, he'll have to get up win. I mean, he does put a bit of stress through his body to do this as Arthur mm-hmm. is just to your left-hand side. You can't see him. He'll be coming into shot very soon. But he's, he's probably added two minutes of upwind riding or maybe one minute of harder riding. He turns back around now and uh, probably will go for a, for a trick straight on the left. The judges are uh, favorable with uh, people bringing back the board, though. They have 60 seconds, the competitors, which is quite a long time to, to wait for your trick. Uh, and the judges will give him that time as well now because he was um, being very sportsmanlike, bringing back Max's board. You know, and he doesn't want to land on the board either. There's a danger aspect to it, but there's no denying that he'll be tired after dinner. That will be a bit of an energy burn for him, but I guess they don't they kite for eight hours, these riders these days. Here he comes in, left foot forwards. Will the wind gods be good to him after that rescue? The height looks reasonable for me for S. Trying the Eslu board off again. Oh, and again, you see the kite not catching the wind. Unfortunately, is he okay? Kite dropping in the water. Shaking his head as in to check in with the body. But he looked good for that. I think he's caught a bit of a lull on the way down there because he looked quite good yes. for it. One of the things these riders do so well now is a board landings and kick off the boards and get rid of them impossible during the bindings era best to go in head first those days <laughs> but he looks okay to me jet ski just going out and in the background did you see that lewis aaron hadlow with a shorter lines approached warming up 36 year old tour veteran can't wait to talk about him in this next heat i see the jet ski just checking up on archer if he's okay S- circling him like jaws if the if the jet ski is assisting the rider, unfortunately they are out of the heat. So the jet ski is asking the archer probably, do, do you, you want to be out the heat? Do you want to be out the heat? <laughs> archer probably said you. no. <laughs> I'm still good. And we see as well a strategy from Jamie uh, before with that Eslu board of uh, repeating the trick that his competitor Archer crashed, showcasing the judges that he can land that trick in these conditions. Uh, it can be a very strategic move to to show that uh, and to repeat the tricks your competitor are crashing to convince the judges that you are the more skilled rider in that heat. So a question coming in quickly that I can answer for Quentin Wisemath. Are you dubbed the Wisemath by your friends? Have we always been like this where we aren't timed? No, it's just the spot allows us to do this. Meanwhile, Jamie Overbeek doesn't get a super boost on that um, boogie loop. I think he wanted more. So a bit of a change in wind, I think, here, As we see some clouds moving in as well. We yeah. can see on the water, if you, if you look out there on your screen, there's uh, patches of clouds uh, above there, which can influence the wind here. Uh, and we saw that in uh, in this in this move from Jamie not getting the the gust there. It's still very very windy, but uh, the wind dips are increasing a bit, uh, a bit more up and down with the wind speeds. And just to f- to finish up that question for you, has it always been like this where we don't have a timed heat? This spot is quite a small spot, so it wouldn't be good to have so many riders in the zone. They'd be landing near each other, and the heights and distance they're going in 40 knots is completely right. Max Tullet won't wow. be doubling that. It's a huge. Doobie board off. Oh, incredible angle though with the kite there. Oh, he gets oh. so unlucky with that landing. He looked like he was going to be able to fight as he slams but the board down. But here on the replay, down. I'm interested to see the kite was a bit on the side before he looped it, which put the kite in a very low angle actually. He concentrated on getting the board back on well though. He dealt very well with a lot of variables here. But he just kite there on the right and there goes almost level with him. But this little chop out there, oh, that's what that's just booted him out of the board because he was really looking to absorb that. So unfortunately for him, he's not going to get a landing for that. But Max, he's got, still got a chance to, to get somewhere in this heat. He's got enough attempts left, I believe. Let's take a look. So hopefully our website's working well for you now, gkkiteworldtour.com forward slash live. And you can take a look to see scoring so he's had yeah it's not ideal for him that crash because he's now had five moves and only got really one half decent ish score that said Arthur Gilbert also in the same boat just got one score on there Jamie Overbeek is walking this at the moment but Arthur Gilbert there we go triple back roll Kai Loop oh Oh, crashing that unfortunately at least he gets his ball back but um back roll board off with a mega loop so Arthur and Max really fighting it out for second or third here. They'll both go into round two. Aaron Hadlow once again out the back going <laughs> massive, getting ready. And he's going for a different tactic that we haven't seen yet. Former five times world champion is following in the next heat. 
And uh, we're already starting to talk about him. Got lots of info on him. Jamie Overbeek then on this Harlem takes off. Better Doobie. lift on the way up. Doobie double. Has he going to land it, Marai? With a rotation there, yes. Taking it clean. Jamie's a very, very consistent rider, uh, calculating his tricks well, uh, feeling the wind very well. I think uh, of all the riders in the fleet, he's kiting maybe the most. Uh, whenever there's not enough wind to do his loops, he will grab a very big foil kite, which is a kite you don't have to inflate with a pump. And we'll go out there either on this foil or his twin tip to just practice these rotations and these board offs so that when the wind comes, uh, he's got all the rotations and uh, board offs down and just needs to add those kite loops there. Uh, and that showcases here in, in his tricks where he's very much in control of this heat so far. We see as well that, that if the rider chooses to, to go with a smaller size for double loops, um, the, the single loop tricks are, are more difficult to land because the, they'll try more technical tricks on, on the smaller kite, but it means they will have more exit speed in their landing. We saw that with Arthur now going for a single loop trick on the 6 meter, but having a lot of speed out of the, out of in the landing, which caused him to crash there. Max going up here with a straight kite loop on the right. He didn't feel it. It looked like an S loop that he was warming up for. So. Max didn't quite feel that. He's still got a chance to get through in second. So let's remind you how this works then. It's heats of three this first round. The winner's going straight into the quarterfinal. They skip around. Second and third place finishers will go into round number two, which is a four-man heat. They need to finish first and second to get through that heat. So even finishing second here is in, in your favour. You'll actually get um, a, a better draw. And also, you'll be positioned slightly differently in the order. And as we said earlier, it's way better to be further down the order. You get to react to the other riders. There we go. Is this, this going to be second place for Arthur Gilbert? It is. It does look like it, yes. Controlled landing there. Uh, we see that uh, he went for a single loop trick there. With a smaller size, but uh, in control of that trick. Having to... Uh, to slow down his landing a lot. With a small kite, it's difficult, especially if you're a more heavyweight rider. Uh, Archer is a big guy, a uh, strong guy. For that six to slow him down, he needs to uh, maneuver it very precisely in the air, which he did there and landing that uh, boogie board off with an extra rotation. Jamie. Then we go to uh, to Jamie Overbeek again. Uh, let's see if we can find him there. Red flag is up. It is his turn right now. Going to the left. Riding with a lot of power there. Front roll, S loop, board off with an extra rotation there. Oh! Oof, it looked like a double contra to me, that one. Let's see how it comes up on the scoreboard. But he definitely was on the limit of double that for me on the take. Lovely angle we get of takeoff here, just looking over the trees. But um, let's see how they score it. Just like he missed one meter of height for the guy to actually catch him and uh, ride out of that uh, maneuver. Warming up a bit in here now. I think I can take the coat off. Gone are the years where we don't even have a door. And we were in double pants, double socks, double everything. We were a bit later in April here. Just a crash then, that move. Did we see a replay in the end? I don't I think so. We did not see a replay, unfortunately. What is it likely he would have gone for here? He's got the S-loop board off in. Kite loop. I think because he's already got an S-loop board yeah. off a 7.33. Yeah. It would suggest that he did perform a contra loop, but we don't know. Kite loop front roll scoring good, so... Either going to be an upgrade. Max going roll. up there with a double loop board off. Oh, how wow. he would, how he would have loved that earlier. Maybe on. it's not second place for for Arthur. I think it has all. to be because he can't. Oh no, he'd have to get you have to, something uh, quite have to be special. Incredible score here, yeah. but uh, definitely uh, you see Max um, shaping up this heat and getting used to the conditions more with a very nice double loop board off there. He would need to score somewhere up in the seven point fives here. Or more, or, le or slightly under to, to do anything about that. Because Arthur is on 12.57 and still got a move to go. Thanks for joining us here at the 2024 Lords of Tram in Le Bacares down in the south of France. It is the Guitar Airways GKA Kite World Tour round one of the Big Air. You've joined us here in heat number six, 10.08 local time in the morning. Max Tullet gets 7.13. He was close in the end. He was 0.17 away wow, wow. from Arthur Gilbert. So I wasn't far off with a 7.5. Arthur going for his last trick attempt here on the right. Breaking there a bit, not going for it. 
But seeing as he only needed, he will know Arter that he couldn't. I wonder if Max had just gone past him by point one. He's got no third trick attempt here, Arthur. Would it have been sensible for him to just do a double front roll mega loop or something very basic? I mean, that isn't the play now because he knows he's got second in the bank. He can't do anything about first because Jamie Overbeek... I mean, he could. He could actually could. He could do a 10. That's a little board of there. That's a little board of what would This he time need? the kite is catching him. Landing is, uh, I would say, a signature Nine. trick for Arthur, the s board of. He needed something like an 8.8 .8 to do anything about uh, uh, that, the, the way I see that. Jamie Overbeek on a 21.3, Arthur on a 12.5. You know, if he puts a 9 on top of that, he could have done something about this, but it would be quite something to push Jamie Overbeek into a position where Jamie Overbeek will not, will, uh, would not have gone through. But Jamie Overbeek, highest seeded rider in this. But Arthur couldn't Going have for his last trick here. As it is indeed the the double front roll, uh, the double contra front roll board of probably the the trick he attempted before and crashed, uh, yeah, but I landing it so. now and landing it nicely. So that was a pretty special heat that one. Never see the replay. Not the most height on that uh, that trick, but definitely uh, good technique, good control, and uh, just what he needed to do to have a I would say a perfect three scores there on the board. Heat number seven, then, coming up now. Graphics of next heat, please. I want the graphics of the next heat. Forget the adverts. Let's go in, because I've got quite an introduction for the man coming up. No commercial. I don't want a commercial here. I want to go straight into this next heat. Little warm up from Aaron Hadlow. This man needs an introduction. 36 years old. We've got 24 riders in this competition here, Marine. I want to take you back 20 years ago where Aaron Hadlow was on his way to his first of five world titles. Half of this fleet, 12 of this fleet, weren't even born. <laughs> <laughs> Get your head round that here. Nathan Tessier from France, younger rider. There is Aaron Hadlow. Jason van der Spy appears to have jump and jumped out of the profile shot. But Aaron Hadlow in the middle of your screens, a former five-time freestyle world champion. Let me repeat that to you. 20 years ago when he was on his way to the first of his five world championships, half of this fleet, 12 riders here today competing, were not even born. Here we see uh, Nathan just warming up a bit. It's a big stat. It's one of the biggest stats I've ever looked at and thought that can't be right. Now, the average age of these riders is 20.9 years old here. It's a bit younger than the, the women, actually. The women is around 26 years old. So, mm, punching well above his head. 26 of the women's average age here. But Aaron Hadlow still got what it takes to qualify. He's been here so many times in this region. It must be over... 20, 30 times. He will be second in line here. What do we know about the other riders? Jason van der Spey. Van Jason, der Spey. That's Jason van der Spey is a South African rider who has uh, competed in the Lord of Tram uh, already, I believe, three times. Um, being a very powerful rider, riding for air rush kites. Uh, and Nathan Texier, who is a uh, local here, He's, he trains a bit up north usually, but comes down to Barcrest as well every now and then to train. He's a freestyle rider as well. As the door is knocked, uh, Luis is going to check uh, who is there. Don't uh, break the door. <laughs> not don't break the door. Oh! <laughs> Colin's just come in <laughs> there. He's going to take over from me a little bit. Mayday, mayday, door broken. I told you the door was going to break. Here we go. We can't miss this. It's the opening of the heat. Nathan Tessier. Opens up with a S loop. Oh, it's a big crash. It's a big cash crash. Cohen's in here. They've somehow managed to close the door. Hello, Lewis. Cohen Van Dyke, please grab the microphone. Hello, Lewis. Welcome. What happened with the door there? You fully bust it open. I was no, worried about that happening. Obviously, it's locked because it's windy. I'm like, I need to get in here. I don't know <laughs> if you guys hear me. I just pulled that lock broken. 
<laughs> but it's somehow fixed. you fixed it. No, you bent it back in shape. But it's fixed. It's fixed. I've had to resort to posting pictures on this group of the uh, the Boeing plane door blowout as the critical situation's got with that door. No one comes to fix it. I'm like, come on, the door's <laughs> going to blow out. But as <laughs> let's remind you one more time then that Kyan Van Dyke, top professional rider who's been out with a bit of injury recently, he looks to be like he's on his way to road to recovery. You've been kiting to, already. To be really honest, no, I haven't been kiting yet. Oh, you didn't go But kite. I could kite today. So right now, as we speak, I'm on three months of recovery. Okay. Uh, so I could have my first session, but it looks a bit hectic out there to have a first <laughs> session. A first eh? session, but here is someone that is definitely not having their first session in competition. Aaron Hadlow Aaron. going for a, oh, Ooh. he just had to bail out of that, gets caught early. Interesting decision this from the five times world champion looking to try and get in the judges' heads here by taking shorter lines. He's yeah, been he training short on shorter lines. lines. Uh, what, what line length do you reckon I, think, he I think he's on 15s here. 15s, and he's yeah. almost got the world record in Cape Town, 35 metres jump. He's got the highest jump in South Africa, or yeah. Africa, I believe. So yeah. this isn't just a silly decision. This this has been working for him. But he looks like he hit a gust on his first move there, yeah, blocked it out low. I mean, to be really honest, I would think taking shorter lines in these like gusty conditions would not benefit you because you want to have those long lines to catch those gusts. Yeah, I think perhaps the kite here, we've seen a double back roll, Megaloop board off with a, was that a board spin as well from Jason van der Spijt? Nice Spike. What execution, a landing. That, nice landing. You can really see that he has his strong legs. Do you see the distance he travels when he lands still? That's an extra 100 meters just traveling on the water. Not the best replay, that one someone bobbing around so i think we're gonna miss that one but just going back to that discussion about the short lines you would think that the kite would sit a bit lower in the window a bit deeper but aaron uh, somehow able to get this kite right above him and can access those gusts let's see if he can do that during and this heat the d lab is able to do that you know it's proven to catch those gusts nice. absolute board of there getting the oh not riding out of that. Wind's just dropped a little bit, Cohen, as you've come in here. The door nearly blew off as you came in, but you can just hear by the sounds of the door. Perhaps that's why the door Aaron tells didn't get us. It. The door tells you everything in here. The point it's going to break will be the time we know it's gone over 50. But Jason van der Spey then has had the best start to this heat out of the three riders. Very close in seeding with Aaron. He is seeded eighth, Jason van der Spey. Aaron Hadlow getting the, the best seeding out of the riders that have qualified via video entry and would be below 10 i imagine due to riders like yourself that had a seeding that dropped out and he got pushed below 10 because yeah, 10 riders I, in on seeding i heard when i dropped out the whole heat sequence got mushed uh, mushed yeah, again did. they were devastated they put yeah. all that cost into printing of these big ladders and then they have to put sticky tape I'm over sorry, it in the number. They, no but they should make it like yeah, they yeah. don't have it printed yeah you know with numbers and things but because you never know holy moly <laughs> It's a big deal. What a day already. Yeah. Like what we have seen world class tricks already and it goes on and off. Like you said, now it's in a little bit of a lull. Here goes Aaron Hadlow then lining up. Can he find the uplift this time? That's high. He does. He wanted the radical. He hits another gust here. We just had one of the riders here changing kites, interestingly. I think he's changing up perhaps Nathan Tessier. And uh you have to be quick. For a pistol. We've got loads to talk about here, Cohen. A lot going on, a lot going on for sure. But did you see with those short lines, you know, it's radical, but it's less controllable. Like yeah, totally. the control on short lines is less. And I mean, you could see already like it's radical, but the percentage of landings or or, or yeah, well, moments that you get to even take the board off there. He got so yanked exactly. there, he can't, but he's been training for so long with this setup yeah i'm just looking at that event site now and it looks like the wind has just got a bit more unpredictable perhaps than the earlier I mean, parts of the day Bucharest i think he would have gone on a lower kite unpredictable mm. jason van der spey though he's turning into Ooh, a that's master. high tic tac in there edit rotation <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this glide the time distance. he's the still distance in the air there Wow, oh, what that's a nice just floaty beautiful. landing. We haven't seen many floaty landings no, like that. No, that's beautiful. Beautiful execution there, beautiful height, nice kite angle. The judges must love that. I'm being told there's no replay for that, but in some ways that was almost in slow motion anyway, Oof, the way it, was it came down. It slow motion, yeah. You can replay the um, 
uh, live stream if you want to. Yeah. Just press back. I've got it in my head. Yeah. Don't wanna, I'm already pushing it with my internet connection <laughs> <laughs> to get this <laughs> scores in here. I'm on someone's Starlink. I don't know whose it is, but I've, I think it remembered it from a year ago, so I haven't oh, that's said anything. Yeah, that's I know. <laughs> but it's not the best reception. I'm far away from it. But here goes Nathan. It's after the critical Whoa. point, this loop, but it's but still lots of height. they have time now. They are floating. Still on singles, though. I haven't seen them do doubles. Not, well, that's why I'm thinking that it just doesn't look as windy, that event zone. At least it's clean on there's areas of a bit of glassy areas. Now it looks like it's coming back. I can see Aaron's yeah, yeah, kite yeah, moving. Yeah, you're right. But he hasn't been able to access much of the uplift, but neither you has anyone. You can see the whitecaps there on but the But Jason, right. definitely suiting a longer line uh, early on in this heat. But it, let's see what he's got for us, Aaron. He wouldn't be taking this kite if he wasn't sure it was working for him. Nathan Tessier, Aaron, Hadlin and Aaron Hadlow, and Jason van der Spray in this heat. Here comes the former five times world champion. Left foot forwards. Cloudy overhead now. There's the uplift. Whoa. Cool. If he'd have doubled <laughs> that. I'll, for a second there. I thought that he was going to I thought he was going <laughs> to. He got the guy stole. <laughs> if he'd have one and a half looped that. Yeah. Can you imagine? He might have gone over it. What if he did he a might've... double like that? I thought he was going to double that for a second. Here's like the it. replay. And you're talking about the aggressive, violent nature of the you first see loop. how here. he gets yanked. What's he going to get scored here? You've got to be in a bang. That's He'd be wanting his board off there as well. He's coming in. He's had enough of this setup. He's coming in. It was a seven meter, so there was no way. I think he's accepted that he's not. And I'm going to time the stopwatch. Why time? I'm interested in how long it will take him to get back up there because they just appear, these riders. Are playing at changing F1 the now? kite, well, a little bit, <laughs> but it's, I don't really get the moment when the kite's in the hands of the caddy. That should be about the time I start. But he's got to get back out there. It's his turn in almost one person's time. Not high enough from Jason van der Spey, but he'll put this move on the board. It's at least four rotations of a back roll board off Ooh. Mega Loop. Anna Hindenburg from the kite. That wind is starting to be. A bit funny now. We're 10.21. Maybe the heat of the land starting to affect things. But look at this cloud passing over ahead I mean, now. I was down there on the beach just now. And it's actually raining. Like the sun's out because the sun's on the left. But the rain is coming from the right. That, there was a bit of that in the forecast. So maybe this is a bit of bad timing for these riders in this heat. However, this man looks like he's got power. Ditch the replay. Someone's taking off. We're just going to get him on the way up. That's huge. Oh, oh dearie me. Could have gone for a second there, perhaps. Could have. Nice little one-footer, but was it worth the one-footer? I think he should have been focusing on landing That's that. That's where he uh, definitely got his chance, lost his chance to, to land with that one-footer. Aaron Hadlow then scoring a 5.93 for just a kite loop front roll. This is what his tactic has been about here. He's trying to show the judges more of a critical kite position and power. And I it, see. Always searching for that edge is yeah. the former five times world I mean, champion. It is relatively high for, for, a, for a front row kite. Dude. Yeah, just a front but, but that Timer, is timer, timer. Oh, he's back on the back water. Back on the water in one minute 40, but he's got to get back out there after Jason van der Spey. And I, I don't know, is Aaron Hadlow's go here? So fighting the gust. Now gone for a longer line setup here. And what meter do you think he's on? A six? Is he going to double? Yes. I think he is. I think he doesn't have two sevens set up. I think he's just thought to himself... I mean, the, he, like, like we were just saying, he's got a high score for a single loop here, but he's trying to just get into the judge's mind. He can mind, do all yeah. his board-off moves yeah. on that 50-meter line. Like, perhaps not in winds as fluky as that. You just said it's raining down there. Yeah. Aaron Hadlow will have to go for this left foot forwards then. Let's see. Let's see if he's going to go straight into a double. What's it going to be? Loads up. First trick on this. It's high enough. Good it, elevation. It's the S loop. It's a big S loop from Aaron. Mm. And can he... Yes, he can land it cleanly. So That's the master, perfect. the goat of kiteboarding, still well in this heat at the moment. He's got three tricks on the board already because he will be desperate to win this heat. How badly do you want to win this first heat and go straight to round three? I mean, three? it's such a relief if you do. Like, you, you want to do that so you can take off your wet shoot, get warm, chill down, get your mind cleared up for your next heat. But I must say that I also really like going into a second round because then you can keep on kiting and you stay in that flow. 
Um, but winning this one definitely boosts your confidence and um, you'll get into the next heat with a better mind state. Jason going for some radical technique there. Didn't get the board on comfortably, unfortunately. But if I had to hazard a guess, I'd go with four and a half back rolls yeah. doing that yeah. sort of tornado spin. Jamie Overby also very good at this. So what I would do personally in these kind of conditions, like it's, it's choppy. The landings are choppy. The wind is gusty. Avoid board off. So no, don't avoid board off, but avoid all those rotations because okay. they're going to make you dizzy and spin spin you out and you're going to lose a bit of control here comes aaron again it's definitely raining out there is this aaron no this is oh, Nathan. This is aaron. but it's it does look like it's this cloud is really low on us so it's so yeah. different than the start of the day with it lighter clearer stronger this is a tricky heat this is starting to fall into the hands of a man that's been kiteboarding over 20 years and has been in every different type of condition he's changed kite already are we seeing the wind even maybe changing a bit more northwesterly? There, no, oh no, it still like is it. that. It, it just, there's, there's the winds of change are in the air here, the I Lords think, of Tram. I think that, ooh, no, I think that big black cloud is definitely doing something with the wind here. So just a board off then for Nathan, who's in third. Aaron Hadlow is 3.2 two points away from Jason van der Spey. We're at sort of the middle way, but just over the middle way point. Seven trick attempts, their top three moves. Why did they move it from four top moves to their three top moves? I don't know. I think because they also have categories. You know, you have a back roll, you have a front roll, you have a board off. And I think they want to have, uh, want to see three different kind of tricks so that they don't have to score variety, but you already have variety in the tricks you land. Also, um, you have to ride more carefully because you do need three scores. The extremity of the moves they're performing as well, it does. It, 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 I think it encourages you to go for those bigger ones as well rather than you know try and get four on the board. This has got crazy written all over it, this wind right now. You've just reported rain. The cloud is low. Further away, you can see the water steaming up. Aaron Hadlow coming in left foot forwards. He doesn't get the height. He's gone for the double loop, Aaron Hadlow, just trying to stay in the game here. And those early landed moves from Jason van der Spey may really be, may, may pay off here. Yeah. As he's got Jason van der Spey, a kite loop back roll, I think multiple board off, uh, and a board off kite loop front roll board off. And Jason here is on an eight, huh? doing single loops. Yeah, so... Definitely having the highest score. Do you reckon he'll go into his six? I don't or know. Do it just, I don't think I've ever seen it just look so overcast here. And yeah. in the background, sun coming through. And this right foot forward. It's gone more north. I think the wind has gone a bit more north now, maybe, because he's cutting in. It's a contra loop. Yeah, having nice... Elevator. You can see yeah, how tic on there. it is. It's... It's looping him up when he loops. What a glide at the oh, end, though. That, guy, that air landing. rush really giving him a nice glide. Is there a drop of rain on this lens? I think even it's almost quite it's horrendous it like this, Cohen, because yeah. you look outside. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The body. Just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions. Will
is that? That's someone getting nailed. That's uh, Nathan. But what that- a replay! Wind has gone berserk here. There's no two ways about communicating to you what's happened here. In fact, the weather went so weird that the power just all turned off. So most definitely, the wind, the power, the mate, the wind made the power go off. It just it did something berserk happened. But to bring you the information that you need to know is that this heat is in one, two, three, four. Five, six. That's Nathan's last move. He's definitely going to finish third. Aaron Hadlow here in a position to perhaps try and fight for first, although he's got a lot to do because he's already got a 3.43. He needs a big trick. I, don't, I think he needed that last move on the scoreboard. So yep. Aaron was in the mix here. Jason van der Spey with a 19.8 currently and a move left. So Aaron, supposedly with the watches, they can tell the scores. But we must have had Gus up to 50 knots now. Look at this. Just look at this. The, the the cameras are shaking. <laughs> Here goes Aaron. Aaron Hadlow then for his last move of this heat. I mean, what do you do? Ooh, In, he even he's even he's losing his edge now, which says a lot. Losing edge on a six. Yeah, so apologize one more time that we lost you here. Let's see if we can Engage with you again. On the, I mean, it's the contrast here between the grey clouds, the the sun managing to shine on the water, is quite heavy. As Aaron Hadlow taking his time for his last move. Welcome back. I can see. Re- welcome, Rose. Someone that's made it all the way back in. Yes, we are in heat number seven, and there's a couple of moves left. One from Aaron. One from. Jason, but it looks to me like it's going to be hard. But Aaron here, will be Aaron goes himself. for his last trick attempt, taking off. Oh, nice lift up, but didn't get the second loop he in. Just, I think he just felt too and much power check. on yeah, the way yeah. up during that. But it's a good effort from Aaron. He's going to take second place here. These are the conditions where riders are going to be pushing the thirty to thirty-five meters at Mark Cohen. You and and you I think I reckon we're going to see triples. Yeah, first triples ever done in competition. I'm, I think Clement had a little feel earlier, didn't he? But um, Jamie van der Spey looks like he's not even bothering with his last move. Is he not? Is he is he off? Can't see him. There's no air rush not out no there, so rush. his uh, flag is up. He will know that he's taken the win here. And just thinking, maybe it's not worth actually bothering doing something in these conditions. These are simply put dangerous conditions. It even is for dangerous. the Cohen, to- you've been talking to me about that off air whilst we had that small break and I find that really interesting to hear from a rider that is performing all these double loops and, and you know and crashing sometimes yeah how do you mentally put yourself in a place where you have to convince yourself that you will not crash like that is the strength of a rider in these kind of conditions you know you need to be able to shut off go extreme and go for it like it's a hundred percent commitment and this is what I love about kiting because it forces you to go into this hyper focus and you just got to believe yourself and go for it and there's no time for hesitation there is no time so it's very much a mental game it is a full mental game i mean if you're not able to do this if you're not willing to go out in these conditions you will not train you will not beat andrea because he will do it if you don't do it he will do it and there's a whole lot of you riders. I mean, every rider here is prepared to go to that place to earn your spot in these events now. To remind you, 24 men here, 12 ladies, and they don't just get selected. It's 10 riders preceded, 10 video entries, winners, and there's a lot of videos and four wild cards to be good enough to get into these events these days. I mean, we're, I'm often talking up here about the amount of riders that could be out there that aren't in this yeah. competition. I mean, there is a whole lot more riders, but these are definitely the best of the world showing off right here for you guys. I wish to be part of it. Is it hard sitting here? When I you mean, it tingles. Competing? It gives me butterflies seeing this and makes me excited. And I, I kind of get lost, you know, because there's so much going on so much I want to do and just gets me off axis a little bit. Heat number eight then, it completes our round number one, our first round of the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour here at the 2024 Lords of Tram event. Welcome if you have just joined us, maybe welcome back to you if you did get cut off, we do apologize. We had a power surge of this bizarre weather here breaking literally everything, but we are back, we are live and we have 
the world champion about to come in here. Ruben Swart, though, from Australia, I believe. Lots of talk about this. I rider. am Can super excited to Tell see me more this about heat. Ruben. Ruben is an upcoming young talent uh, riding for North, and he's got a lot of potential um, to, go, um, to go up in this ladder. Uh, he does have to go against Andrea. So he's got a rough start, but at, last, at least he's got a second chance to show in the second round. Uh, if he loses, because I definitely think he can win. Um, he's and on a five reach there. Okay, and we've got Valentin Garay. He's 30 now. Valentin, the, uh, yeah, I know. He's, he's the, shows you <laughs> makes me feel my age now because <laughs> he was the younger brother of Sebastian Garay, the famous. Oh, smoke on the Ooh. water. That must be a 60 knots gas. Let's get rid of this graphic. Oh, they need to go. Look at that. And what a time for this win. Look at that in front of you. I mean, how windy is that, Conan? It's just white. It's all white. That must be 60 for sure. We call that smoke on the water in the business, and it has just come. What a time for it to come with the current world champion, this the, the is trilogy exciting. winner. He's going to be thrilling. third up here. But all this talk of uh, Ruben, it's so strange seeing go Ruben, go Ruben. I'm thinking Ruben, is, Ruben isn't here. What are you talking about? He's at home in the Netherlands. But it's Ruben's the new smart. Ruben. It's the Ruben 2.0. <laughs> it's Nuben. There we go. He's going to take off. Let's see what he has in store. Just going for a loop there. Nothing special then for Nuben, just getting something on the border of field. Because the other aspect to this event here, uh, Cohen, is there isn't really time to train, especially with a start time like today, which was 7.40. I mean, Ruben That's his first loop here. Ruben is from Australia. So he had to fly in, and he has an 11-hour difference from the country where he is from. When did he fly in? Uh, yesterday. So he arrived yesterday. And, uh, yeah, this kid had a little... Andre Alfagarat. Oh, that's a lovely big... Back. Maybe a good decision in this sort of win to just start oh. like that. But it just gets, he just gets nailed. He gets can nailed see. on one of the most basic mega loop rotations there is, and which showcases exactly. just how hard these conditions are in that horrendous chop down win. That was textbook. Everything was perfect about that. Perhaps nobody could have landed that move with and that chop. And there comes the world champ. Come on, man. Give us some goosebumps. Didn't fancy it left foot forwards there. Maybe right foot forwards. Interesting. Andrea attacking the starboard he side does. here. Is there a sense yeah, in that? Yeah, right foot. And that's one. Mega Just loop. Ooh. Ooh, was that two was in the S loop or was it a I double? think it was a delayed front roll okay. in, in, with that board off. But I saw two off. kind of loops. Yeah, I, mean. I think it was a late double, if I had to guess. Let's have a look at the replay and see. I mean, I'm constantly looking out the window, but I didn't see a hand ah, change. So it had to roll. Late double. Oh, he did get a hand back on the bar. I don't know, but we're never going to know now because I don't think we see it on the scores. But so I mean, all three riders crashed their first, first trick, and that just shows how hard these conditions are to ride. Yeah, and don't forget the first trick, usually the most, they're, they're bankers, you know. This right? is their you start easiest slow. moves. Yeah. Let's get back to the score. The wind just boosts through the door here. It is, it is blowing Thrilling. through. So it's picked up a bit, to say the least, at the Lords of Tran. We started the day with 30 to maybe 40 knot gas. It dropped a bit, actually, for Heat 7. It was a very interesting heat as the weather changed. Highest wind we're supposed to see today is sort of between 3 and 5, maybe. Something like that in the afternoon. So it could get windier yet. It's only 10.46. Are, are we likely to see... Is this crazy to say we might see a 4-meter kite out there? I mean... Has anyone got a 4 on the I beach? I mean, the only thing I've seen is 5, and um, I haven't seen people ride 4s or train on 4s, so I definitely do think people stay on 5s. I don't think they're prepared for this. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a competition competition with these gusts. Not last year. Definitely not last year. So you feel this is the windiest you've seen a competi big air kiteboarding run just yet? I think the gusts yet. we've seen just now are... The smoke on the water yo. does indicate something bizarre. And this, this cloud is really... It's quite low above us. And it's really uh, making things interesting. As Ruben put it going bluntly. for his takeoff. Looks good. Has nice height. Doesn't seem 
do want he to didn't, pull didn't the like loop. He was comfortable there. He's happy with the jump, but he's going to have to do more than that. Oh, but those are hard landings. He was stoked on the height there. He was stoked. Maybe he was starting to get... I mean, how long has he been able to train here for? I mean, I don't know he's ever witnessed or ridden wind like this. I mean, Bacares is one thing. 60 knots is another thing. Kite loop board of by the fin with a laid back roll. No, that's back not going to be a landing. I think he's going to take it injury wise. Ooh, that is his board was right in front of his face. That is the definition of a back breaking landing. Yeah. How right. has he taken that? Oh, ass first, I guess. He's a strong guy, yeah. but that looked like. I mean, I hate to see when the board is in front of them, Andrea. Oh, just Ooh. making it round the big contralute there. So we're definitely seeing that's how much power there is in the wind, you know, to have that much tension in your kite to perform that you need it actually to be super strong. Like you don't want to be doing that sort of move too light to win. You can't no, that's get why that we are looking for the most extreme conditions to so to show the most extreme kite kiteboarding as possible. A big hello, everybody. We don't quite have our jump info at the moment. We're trying to fix that for you. Rose, Emma, Mike Engelbrecht is there. They're all on our YouTube comments. I'm trying not to get too distracted with that. But it's great to welcome you on board here. And I bet there's plenty of you from Australia are hoping for this man on your screens right now. Ruben Swart with that yellow north. Here he is out to the side. That cameraman just found him. And it's a mega loop. Delayed back roll with a grab. Needs to land this, really, Ruben. And he's got it. Lovely soft landing. You'll definitely feel a bit more confident now. You can take a breath of relief in Australia as you're hoping for him to, at some point, open his account here because he had two crashes. And uh, being pretty blunt about it, I think he'll be hoping at best to be trying to get through in second here unless Andrea Principi suffers equipment failure. I mean, it's definitely doable if Fargarod... Doesn't seem to get his lang landings. That's a kind loop board off by the fin. Ooh, and not riding out of w that. What goes through your mind, Kyle, when you perform a move like that at that height and a stupid piece of chop gives you a zero? How yeah, do you or, react? Or the gust, you know, you also need the power in your kite to ride away out of these tricks. And um, it's just hard when you drop out of the sky and all your weight like you're falling down all your weight is on your legs and yeah you just need to cope with that you need to land that if the kite isn't there to catch you you just fall and sometimes they're too hard andrea principi the trilogy winner mega loop champion king of the air champion big air world champion with a huge s loop board off one Ooh, of the most aggressive we've seen even he him there. touches his head in shock as if to say that was pretty extreme. How close, how accurate is this man's height decisions? That was to make a insane. decision like that, that's enough of the bar pressure pull to know you're going to get a foot Here's the replay. Talk me through this, Cohen. Still decides to go for that S loop. Ooh, and just catches him a meter above the water. Now that's thrilling. I liked how he took the board off at the critical stage of that when the kite had gone through and he just just pulling that front hand. So Andrea Principi is having a pretty good start to this. Val Garaz He's just his warming first up, move. you know? Andrea is warming up. Looks like it's settled down a bit now, perhaps the wind. Still very windy, but it just... It looks like it doesn't punch up too much. Back to Nubin. S-loop from here. S-loop. With a grab, and of course, he got a real nice gust there, but took it well. Punches the sky. He's happy. He's solidly in second place right now. I mean, that's just mental. Like, you know, he doesn't kite here, and doing this in these conditions is just like a full mental switch. Is I'm doing this, I'm trying this, and he lands it. Could see by that shot the difference in the changing of the bar pressure from backhand to front hand. He's super, super stoked. Now that's going to be a good score. Three tricks on the board. Oh, 
Uh, it's just a beautiful day for this event. Oh, that Ooh. did not look right on the way up there uh, from Val Garah. I just broke out of our vision there because we got these trees blocking. What happened there? He looked like he sent the kite for a jump and then... It was fast, though, the kite. So he, he brought it back quite quickly. There was yeah. definitely uh, a strong gust. Something didn't feel right there for... For Valentin wow. Garay, who's got a lot of work to do here. You can clearly see all of the support coming no in scores. from Australia as they're hoping for a big upset. But I don't think they're going to be able to knock the world champion into second here. Here he is, meanwhile. It's going to be a insane boogie high. board off kite loop. I think there may have been two front rolls, but what a nice control on the landing. Good control, kite. and you could see that he didn't decide to go for his double loop there. He didn't, so that's probably why he didn't commit to it was a lot of power in that first loop and obviously he doesn't need to risk at this point once again a big hello to you all joining us on our live stream especially to my home spot everyone at the beach down there I wonder how the weather is back home I know it was windy yesterday I had 30 40 knots in the but uh, I can't remember I don't try not to look when I'm away how good it is there but hello to all of you and everybody else we are witnessing quite something special here. Ruben. Double loop on the cards. Didn't no, the late board off. Ooh. Loads of control here. Ruben just looks like he's having a That's bit of fun beautiful. now. And oh. I mean, once again, we just see how harsh. If you zoom away there from the camera, you might have thought he's well landed that. But judges, you have to show control in riding away. At what point do they decide, okay, the trick's landed? So this one is written out a little bit, but he flew out of his straps completely so i would count it crash but um i've heard they are flexible with points i mean it would just get a l very big decrease here's valentin Gural, that just a simple kite loop just to get so he wants to change he's marks down we're going to see a pit stop from val Gural here can i be bothered to time it he'll make it out so quick is the pit stop down here and just like i said earlier it's downwind they have to go they're not allowed to have kites or be in that zone where that big white flag is that now changes to a red, which indicates it's Andrea Principi's turn. They can't have kites and caddies parked up there. It's a nature zone. And uh, I definitely recommend any nature up there doesn't fly downwind into this zone, into these kite surfers. Here comes the current multiple world champion and the man to beat right now, Andrea Principi, who is in heat number eight, seeded number one. He gets the reward to go last. Contra loop. Board off double and his, t his accuracy of how much height he has and timing wise, and many would have aborted that second loop there, Cohen. But he seems to have a feeling for just when he can get away with it best. It's funny to see how he gets his car to fly up and still kind of do an early double loop, uh, a late double loop. I mean, the kite is relatively high for the second loop, so the kite also boosts him up again. You know, if those two loops are straight in front of you, you'll get the most pull uh, and free fall after that. And now while he's free falling, he's doing his second loop. And he just times that perfectly before his landing. And that's just extraordinary to see. We do apologize for our data not coming in from the Surfer app at this moment in time. Michael Earhart, I can see that you very much want it. It was brilliant earlier on, but um, they've got all watches on the riders, and it's never easy with this technology, but I mean, we did have beats per minute and all sorts going on. But to give you a clue of how much they want that working, Marine is headed down there, and he's very involved with this. <laughs> he's <laughs> very, <laughs> very involved. No, I mean, like, the concept is insane. Imagine... If you can see the heart rate of a rider after he's landed, you can see the score straight away when you're on the water. You can see the flags. You can see how many, how many points you need to be first. You can see your po the position you're into. You can see how high you jump. Um, it's just insane what data the Apple Watch can give you. Um, and useful, I mean, right there you're kiting and you've got no influence from caddies because you're too far away so if that watch can give you that information you need um it's way easier to get up that ladder that way i mean it is technology and you know it is extreme the conditions are extre extreme so it, it doesn't always seem to work so you're not talking to a caddy out there right now. I mean, can you get caddies far out enough up there? No, no, I haven't. You don't see the riders talk to caddies 
in this first round at all. So actually, it's everything on the watch, or actually your feeling and understanding. And you know, I always like to refer to a little bit at the subconscious understanding of the situation that F1 drivers have. They kind of know what's going on, where people are, where they'll be if they cut. The good ones do anyway. They come exactly. out. Of piece. They just have an awareness of what tricks and counting yeah, other riders. Do you do that, Kyle? Do, do you have a good sense of where you are in a heat when you're out there? To be really honest, um, obviously when you see some tricks of other riders, you kind of have this sense of what's happening. If you see the first one crash, and then maybe he crashes again, it gives you a very good confidence. Like, okay, he's got crashes, maybe he's getting into his head. Um, but no, I don't look at other riders. I'm very focused on myself and the tricks I want to do and I've got to do to be able to win. Because I also don't want other riders to get into my head. Yeah. That was a beautiful double loop from Andrea again. Yeah, the second loop, maybe not at the critical time, but whatever he's doing out there, he's landing his moves. He's landing it. He's more so confident. than nearly most other riders here. And he's just got to get through this heat. We don't need to see the best tricks. But, but we want to see. So really, whilst going back to you being out there, because we've got such a nice um, insight to you as a top rider and how it feels to be out there and what you're thinking... As you're not quite sure on the score situation, do you get a sense of the urgency of your of the importance of your last few moves, or are you just always wanting to score the best you can? It also depends in what heat you are in and if it's needed or not. You know, if it's the second round and it's your last chance, then you need to win or get second, depending on how the ooh just bumps out of that. She. It looked impossible to land that. Yeah. Maybe a double attempt there for Ruben. Yeah. But just going back to what you're saying. So, so if you need to win, then you're going to have to risk it. And um, then you just need to land what you have and land the top, tri top tricks you have. Because the level is so close nowadays. Is that you got to really take out all you have inside you. And um, try to win. And riding in these heavy conditions there's no time to look at others um, especially in the ocean right here it's flat and you've got time when you're upwind to check and wait for other riders but in the ocean cape town holland all those conditions with um, big waves and you need to take off on the waves you're, you're spotting your way through the heat you know you need a spot where to take off, you need to come back upwind. There's so much going on. And uh, here they're jumping um, one after the other. So it's a little bit more chilled this way. Um, but in competitions like Mega Loop or Red Bull, King of the Air, where you have to jump whenever you can, um, it gets a bit messy and you can't really see what's going on with other riders you can't really see the tricks they are landing so on those moments i really go into myself and just focus on what i have to do okay andrea principi current world champion it's the last trick of round number one sending well, he still, he still he didn't get a takeoff there it was just it looked didn't like a very strange sort of uh, weird, orbit huh? of that it was almost yeah. like it went around the world yeah. that kind that is the end of round one and it's been rather interesting. We've had what every type of win. We've had. we've had 30 knot heats. We've had certainly 60 knot heats. Lots of kite changes. Some massive crashes that the riders have obviously been training down the gym for. There were some huge ones. Valentin Garaz's backbreaker coming to mind. And a few... We had one kite slam straight down the middle. I think it was from Nathan. Took it. Just got straight out. So riders looking nice and strong on the water and we've got lots of action to come throughout the day thanks for joining us and uh, i think we will take a small commercial break you
We are live, I can hear in my ear as I've let Kohan out, as uh, we both, two grown men, have to hold the door. We couldn't hold the door, so it slammed. anyone behind that door would have been going to hospital now, um, but we've managed to forcefully shut it. He has to push the door whilst I'm on the inside trying to lock it quickly. He has gone for a bath and break. Hasn't it been wonderful to have Cohen Van Dyke, such a nice guy, and top riders have his insights to how it feels to be out there competing, performing these moves. You've just witnessed an unbelievable situation in front of us now. You've got a nice overview of the beach here. World champion Andre Principi has come out of the water at such a rate and at such a strange upwind angle. It looks like he's seen Valentin Garat in front of him. Somehow they haven't seen each other. They've made contact uh, right near the beach. It could have been horrendous, but they've managed to, um, very skillfully by Valentin, managed to duck under the lines. But it looks like we are not going to get a break, or I'm not. We're going into round two, heat one. It looks like Avon Klein is going for his move here, trying to finish in the top two, these riders. This is Avon Klein Shahar Sabri, Mark Jacobs, and Lucas Gramstrap fighting to stay in the competition. Top two continue on in this event. Bottom two, see you later. Au revoir. Okay, Gramstrap with a double loop board off, bins it, has to get rid. We're seeing lots of crashes now. This is called Blimey, he's gone so far downwind here. Entertainment values are high here at the Lords of Tram. There is a loud knock on the door. Hello? Knock, knock. Who's there? I'll be right back because I will leave you with... Uh, oh, sorry. This is Graham Strap. Yeah, we can be very open about our restroom breaks to you all online here because it's part of the deal. There's only a few of us commentators, so we have to take our breaks. You've just been outside, Cohen. How did that feel to go outside? Windy, fresh, um, still nuking. I got myself a little banana, some energies. Get a little excited about this next heat coming up. I've got Evan. Marky, Lucas, Shahar. I don't know that kid. No, there's a few riders that there's we don't know. New, He's leading. New talents. He's leading this heat. Oh, it's there's Mark Marky Jacobs with a double loop. He can do him in sort of any any loop. height. You might have thought that wasn't quite high enough, but he certainly. I think it's down to his technique. He gets so core tight. He doesn't have any centimetre lost to the wind. He doesn't get yanked out in a raily position. That core tension really helps him get that kite around. As soon as you get yanked towards the kite on any basic mega loop, you're losing tension. So that's how he gets that round. Mark Jacobs will be furious if he doesn't get through this, this heat, that's for sure. So he's just got to be calm. Um, reminder that you can see the live scores on our website gkakiteworldtour.com forward slash live. Meanwhile, Lucas Gramstrup needs to open his account up at some stage. Has he got the uplift for this one? It's just an S loop. Wind's just died down a little bit, I think, Koan, because we're not seeing super, super heights. I mean, it's still cranking. It's just that the lift sometimes in the wind just vanishes. And it's so weird, it's unexplainable, but the wind does come from, from the mountains here. So it doesn't have a full on straight line over, over an ocean uh, when it hits us. Any, 
Evan taking off to the skies. Oh, he's just, just got yanked. His board. He had to commit to a double loop there. Talk me through that, Koran. He well, lost the board. I mean, once you go for it, you need to go for it, <laughs> you know? If the board's not there, you're still going for it. You want that guy to catch you because you also don't want to pencil dive too hard and hit the ground. So that was his best chance of lift there. Uh, I mean, the fir he lost the board, certainly at about kite loop one. But with just one hand on the bar, his best chance of balance and lift was to loop it again. But just imagine, you know, that loop is going double and timing that. So you've got one. And once it's on one and a half, there's no way of turning that back. So you better, you better um, make sure that that kite shoots up again. So you, you also don't want that kite to hit the water. Um, then it's wet when your kite's wet. Then uh, your kite becomes heavier and it's maybe e it's maybe harder to double loop. Do you understand? Marine, Marine, nice big move then. This in the white rash versus Sahar. Can't quite make a clean landing, but he will get scored for that, Cohen. He will definitely get scored. He's riding out of that. You could see that the wind just dropped him there the moment he was trying to land. Also, with down loops, you know, we do kite loops and down loops. And the kite loop gets you acceleration, and the down loop is supposed to stop you and, you know, get you a nice and soft landing. But when your down loops are very small, then the kite's not, not going to be catching. It, you want it to have a nice and big circle so that... So it's gone through the power a bit more. You want you want that down loop to create power so it lifts you up again so you can land. Here's Marky with the double loop board off. Not the craziest heights, but he is getting points. You reckon you should go back on an eight? Maybe. It certainly sounds like the wind has dropped a bit. A little bit. It looks like it drops a little bit. We don't see guys changing kites or anything. I think they're all on small kites. Lucas Gramstrup from Denmark comes in now with that. Cabrino, it's a double contra loop, it looked like to me. They're not super high, but the guys are having to work through the conditions they've got now. Maybe they think the wind's going to come back up here. Here's a replay of that move. We've seen moves twice as high today, but this is what the conditions are allowing in this heat. He got that landing down. He'll be pretty stoked about that. Four men in this heat. Does that change things? You get a bit longer to wait, Cohen? Um, you get longer to wait. You get longer to go upwind. Plus, I think uh, two people pass, right? Is that right? Yes. So, yes. there's a takeoff there. Going for a double loop and an added rotation. Nice control there. I didn't think he was going to land that, Evan. And uh, he'll be pretty happy. So, we're going to have to take a look at the scores. You know, it's not being used, filmed. It's not being filmed using a cell phone. It's probably a bit dirty, maybe, the lens. We'll mm put a request on there but that wasn't a bad landing from Evan Klein those of you Dutch fans will be pretty happy about that you've always got a bunch of riders in this competition however France actually outnumbered French, you they've Dutch, got six they have in a here. lot they, of people yeah. France have got six they've got a quarter of the fleet here I mean it's a French competition yeah, obviously I guess and they can choose I mean the it's wild their cards. it's their home spot so they can show so they should do yeah and um, no having four riders in a heat gives you the ben benefit to get second yeah. and I honestly like that because this way you know one for one is sick it's it's thrilling it's cool but what if you meet Andrea yeah, in, you get in the quarterfinals you, you get a tough ride and now at least you've got the opportunity to, beco to become second and still advance through to the final so this way I feel like it gives everybody an opportunity to hit that podium and um, yeah, like like I said, you can get unlucky with um, um, the the rankings, uh, and that's just a bummer, you know. Because even though you deserve to be second, you can get out. Oh, I like this. 
that's just Double beautiful. Mega loop, back roll, board off there. And that's from Mark's Mark Jacobs. signature move. Like he has been landing that in his last heat already. He's been doing that in Tarifa and last year here. He's got that trick dialed in. It's just looking too smooth. Not really high, but crazy technique. Cool to see from Mark that he's still up and running on top of his game, on top of the game here at the highest world, highest level of kiting. So that move then looks like it will put Jacobs comfortably in the lead for now. That will be his third trick score. He started really solidly in this heat. Three landed tricks. Lucas Gramstrap will be last in the order to go here. He's also got two tricks on the board right now. And it is just a simple mega loop. It's not going to score a lot for Lucas Gramstrap. So Mark Gait Jacobs, a former King of the Air winner, of course, top rider and highest seeded rider out of these four. It's a kite change coming in. Lucas Gramstrap just passing in front of us here with a six. He's going to drop that six. Probably Will go he go up eight. to an eight? You, yes. would you, is it off common to go up two sizes? I mean, I would always go up two sizes. I mean, I don't kite my seven too much. I use my seven to double loop as well. So if I want to create nice and big, slow double loops, I grab my seven. If I want to go for technical double loops, I take my six and uh, eight for singles. The seven is just too small to get a nice big single. Okay. Uh, yeah, a nice Kinda big not worth single, it. single and also a good catch and float on the down loop. Lovely big double mega loop from Evan Klein there. He looks really happy with that and so he should be because he's got a 5.1 kite loop back roll category on there ticked off now. He's got to be trying to fight to get through. He knows this spot. Here's a nice replay of that move. Very good bar positioning there really pulling getting the you know the pulling hand close to the center of the body and the pushing hand away in central it's easy to try and loop a kite with your hands to the sides but you've got to try to get that extra leverage you know Definitely. you want to be pushing that front hand forwards and central and actually know that Evan here jumped a record european record so this is a spot he does know very well he, he knows this spot you can watch it on youtube and uh jamie also got a very high jump yesterday which was Incredible. Shahar Sabri then representing Israel, the only man from the Asian continent here. Replay of his S loop here, which he looked like he had it under control. He's uh, he's still in the mix with this because he's got three tricks on the board. So it's hard to tell. Mark Jacobs clearly looking the favourite to get through this heat in first at the moment with only man scoring well over fives for all his tricks, apart from the 5.1 of Evan. Here is Mark Jacobs lining up to go right foot forwards. Yeah, which I is, think um, he's going right foot starboard forward. Starboard tack. Sends his kite deep low. What's he going to go for? He's done a kite loop front roll. Look at that edge. Not super it's high not this. The height Still there. manages to find Ooh. a double, but I think even he didn't think he'd get no, enough lift out I of that. I think from the start, from takeoff, he already knew that it wasn't going to happen. Often with Mark, if the wind it, it dies in a heat, which it looks like it has dropped heavily now, he really is affected by that. He's a bigger guy. He wants to get that more power, and it's so obvious when he's not powered. So I wonder if we're about to see a kite change from Mark here. Now How many trick attempts do we still have? Mark has still got three trick attempts, and he's done really well. He's already got, if you like, his good ones in on this so he, he's gone out right foot forwards first which tells me that maybe he is gonna but you know the thing is here in Barker is that in a second a gust can come through and then you do have the right kite there's also three riders to wait for before he can attempt again doobie loop contra and he's if he rides Ooh. out of this it's ridiculous <laughs> he had one Ooh. foot out the board there he just got the kite underneath him did uh, Lucas Gramstrap, and if he'd ridden out of that, he's on an eight meter kite. What do you think Mark's on here? Seven, uh, six. Six, okay. It does beg the question when you watch and observe from the outside here, if the wind is so up and down, why not go in the middle and take a seven? Right, that's what that's what I would do. Like, like I said, you don't want to go for too much technique here. You want to make sure you get the height, get the extremity, and you don't need the most technique to get the points you know if something is huge you will get the points you need so i would grab my seven but also you want that kite to go double and not one and a half because that means you'll die 
<laughs> Basically. Here, here goes Evan Klein. This is big. It's a double mega loop board off. It's wonderful. They'll be loving that back at home in the Netherlands. They've got not much to talk, talk about at the moment, especially the Ajax fans. But he's landed that <laughs> wonderfully. Look at this. This was right on the limit of getting the support from the kite. Very aggressive kite position. And Could that be the extension. move? Beautiful board off extension there from Evan. That's a good score. Mark here has got the highest score. That's that's good. Looking at the moment like it could be Evan Klein. How do I say his name correctly? Evan, Evan Klein. Evan it's Klein. Is he? Uh, he should. He's so perfectly named to get like the underwear sponsor. Evan Klein. Uh, not, Kevin, not, Calvin not Calvin Klein. Klein but Evan, Klein. Evan Klein. Klein. Maybe his own range. <laughs> Kiting range. Brand some pictures of his face <laughs> on copy the balls. Copy the logo. <laughs> just totally copy the whole yeah. brand. Of Put Calvin it on the Klein. kite. <laughs> or change his first name to Calvin Klein. Would that be legal? I don't know. How can you not change? You should be allowed to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here we go then. So Isn't that copyrights though? Well, how, can, how can your own name be copyright? Right. Like you must be allowed. Right. Like surely if you was a Steve Jackson, you could become a Michael Jackson. Yeah, like, you're right. You know what I mean? So anyway, Jahar, back to the seriousness. Jahar Sabri needing to pull out something big here if he's going to edge past the likes of Evan and Mark here. Evan and Mark looking like they've got a hand into the next round so far. Let's just have a little glimpse at where they would go. It's always Mark interesting. Mark again. Better take off. Yes, that's height. Oh. Yes, oh, please. That and a small sneaky board of there catching that landing. That was beautiful. Boogie oh. S loop. It was a boogie S loop. Was it an S loop? I think Replay. It was. I Boogie, think, yeah, I think S loop board off. It was. You're right. Yeah, uh, well, I was looking out the window. Once you look so at this, it comes out the shot sometimes. So, but you saw him right out of that. We see him swim right now. Is that a landing? Because he was back on edge, and that's where he crashed. I don't know. He was back on edge. Who is that guy? That's massive. Stino right there. Stino just Holy sent a biggie moly. on about 200 meters. But just off back live to fighting for his life in this competition is Lucas Gramstrup. There is the yellow flag on the beach. Suggesting it's his go. He's connected here. It's a huge contra loop. Board off. Boogie board off. But he butt checks it. But he'll get something for that. Did Cohen. you see that? Did you, oh, and he crashes again. Did you see that? Mid air. He didn't slightly. He, he slightly got it, his feet back in. But not fully. And that's why he had that butt check there. He wasn't able to block he the wind He wasn't able break. to put his feet in fully. Okay. And then plan a on the water to get that control and balance on his board if your feet are not correctly in it's insanely hard to balance on your board we because the position of your strap is pretty precise and if your heel is just on the outside of that strap then everything's different especially here with these choppy landings downwind your feet need to be yeah, in and we perfect were we were having this wonderful conversation off air Kai, and i think it was off air about how you ride with your foot straps I was asking you, how do you keep control? I, for one, fall out of my straps if they're not super tight, and, and it's a skill of yours to kick the board off. So how do you land like that? You were saying you have to be so central over the board with your board weight super that central. you can't land and go into an edge too quickly. You can't depend on your kite tension. You need to be super... This is big. Shahar with a lovely Beautiful. double mega loop delayed back roll. Exactly what he needed. This is his sixth trick attempt now. Can he throw it to Evan here if he's going to try and fight for this second place? It looks like Mark Jacobs may well have it, but there's still another round of tricks to go after this. This is the replay here. He looked really focused here, Cohen, like that a man that knew he had to land this. He knew he had to land it. He knew he needed that trick, and he did it. And that's uh, one of the greatest feelings. That's definitely for sure. But All I will say is that, is that going to, sorry to interrupt you, is that will that kick out his kite loop back roll? We'll see. We'll see about that. And yeah, we can see that Shahar, Evan, and Lucas are fighting here for second place. Marky just coming in with a huge S loop, late back or late front, but checking it. We'll get a bit of a score on landing, but a little score. 
But yeah, it does. This heat, we have seen a lot of crashes. We have, and just going back to Sir Harley, that was very sensible riding actually. His lowest trick score was a four for the kite loop back roll. He's gone for the. It's still in the same category effectively because it was a back roll maneuver. It's a five point eight, and it just puts that little bit of extra pressure that he on Evan Klein. It looks like Lucas has still got a lot of work to do. He's got to upgrade the two point. Three, three. However, Lucas is last in sequence. So here he is. One footer. It's He's got to get that foot back in. If he lands this, no, and he didn't get his feet in. So much goes on up there. Every rider listening has been in a position where you've jumped and your foot comes out. Now imagine it being 40 knots in a world competition and you've looped the kite possibly multiple times. The focus required to get that foot back in without using your hand insane. is insane. And, and then we just saw there how it hard it was. It requires a little bit of luck, to be really honest. Really? It just it blows does. into your foot. And Sometimes you're like, oh, no. the wind blows your board off in a, in a weird way, and then you can't get your feet back in. But what I sometimes do when that happens, when my foot just uh, flies out on the takeoff, I grab my handle and take the board off or put my feet back in. I try to grab my board and put that feet back in. Is Evan going right foot forward? Definitely wanting to go for a good double contra board off there, but didn't get the height for the guy to catch him. What a crash though. He really got out of the injury there, very yeah. close to it. I mean, if he would have put the board back on, then... Um, yeah, you basically land on the floor, basically land on ground. So that's why we do have to make sure that when the kite doesn't catch us, the board is off. So we pencil dive in the water. You don't want to hurt yourself. And um, the board is definitely the worst object to have underneath you when you're falling out of the sky. You don't want that to happen. You want the board to be as far away as possible. That's so this is, sorry to interrupt no you, Kai, and we're at a, I don't like to do that, but we're at a crucial time here because Sahar, this is his last chance. It's not in Evan's hands now whether or not he gets through. Right now, Evan is in second place. He's had all his seven trick attempts. Sahar needs to beat his 4.2 contra loop front roll. He's gone for Ooh, just a mega loop. I'm not sure, what was he going for? Oh, I think he was going for a double loop. Perhaps he wanted to upgrade his kite loop. So right now, Evan is currently going f forward. What was he going for? He needed to kick out one of his scores there. The Contraloop family would have been the one because it's got the, the 4.2, its lowest score, or perhaps a new family. So Evan will be hoping then that Lucas Gramstrup can't come up with something special, but I've got a feeling Lucas... If he stomps out a nine then. What's he um, going to... Yeah, so right now, let's get rid of two off that nine. He does need something bigger than a seven. So this is the information that the watch would give you when you're on that water, you know, those last tricks you need, you can see the score you need to go to second place or first place. And, ooh, that hurts. A, that does hurt. Ooh. It hurts to watch, so it must hurt to feel. Ooh, that could be his ribs. Took it on the back quite a bit there. Did it, yeah. What's well, your feeling on the rescue here? We've got two jet ski guys... It's absolutely poised and ready to go. Should they just go anyway? I or mean, not? The thing is then they add risk to it. Or the they're, thing they're closer. Is we are crashing a lot. You see a lot of bad crashes. And uh, we just stand up and go again. So the moment you see a kind go down, I think that's where you have to go and start paying attention. Gramstrap needs a biggie. This isn't going to cut it, I don't think, to keep him in the event. That's not going to be enough, no. It sadly. might well put him in a fourth place perhaps it's certainly going to replace one of his lower scorers but he looks like that so he's down and out here so very much mark jacobs winning that one comfortably in the end evan klein just sneaking through ahead of jahar zabri here comes evan going for a jump let's see if he breaks the record again Waving mm. to the crowd. So will he know now via his watch how he's done we haven't got that he data coming in on your screen he should know I mean, to do a jump like that and wave at the crowd, you'd like to think he did know? Or was that a wave goodbye? Uh, or maybe a a <laughs> maybe goodbye <laughs> wave. I always give the crowd a goodbye wave and a high wave. You uh, know, I also want to go... A high, I'm in the next round wave. Yeah, exactly. Um, coming back to the security part is that when you have a bad crash and the kind stays in the air, that means that the rider is knocked out. 
uh, is not knocked out so he still has control over his kite even though he's made a big crash if you see that kite shoot down the rider not move then i think action is needed so a very tricky heat that one kind of we see some highlights from mark jacobs he used his experience to get through that he evan here on your screens will be pretty happy that he's pulled through that and uh, this was one of his double mega loop board offs he really the wind did drop a bit in that heat so but he was able to get that's what lift. i wanted to say like yes uh the wind goes up and down throughout the heat but when you get that gust like mark had on some of them then the six is enough and then those tricks will be enough so it's a hard guess if you should take a bigger kite or, or a smaller kite it's it's better to commit on the kite that you're at because uh, you don't know if it's going to blow again if you're going to catch that if you're going to catch that that gust and when you do then you better make sure you land how many competitions koan um do you find you can't get to your other gear like like this this is far down say that again lewis H how many competitions are you so far away from your other kites that's a big factor here you can't get to you're your right. other kites. you're right um it's not too far it's one tech basically um, okay so it's not too it's bad it's not too bad it's it's definitely not bad i think uh sometimes it's even worse on other competitions because um uh uh, you you go downwind after uh, your jump and, and then you have to come back upwind. It's easy to go back of, upwind. Um, it looks harder than maybe it is. So, so let's bring in round two, uh, heat number. I can't even remember, but it's the two. second heat. Oh, round it's two, second, second heat. heat. It'll have a yeah. it's probably ten. We've just done nine, ten. Edgar Uric from France, Josh Gillett, South Africa, Stino Mole from France, Clement Huelp from France. So Not lots of French riders in this one. It's half their fleet, so at least they will be getting at least one through depending on uh, what mood Josh Gillett is in. And we are off. First to trick will be Edgar Ulrich. And we've got another four incredible riders here. Josh Gillett working his way up, being able to compete in these competitions now. I've literally kited with him when I, when I started as well and uh, saw him saw him uh, get better and better, and he definitely deserves to be... Come in. He's <laughs> been knocked on the door here. Right, I'll go and get the door. Strip um, ruffle. Strip ruffle. That's a Dutch it's thing. Ma it's Marine strip ruffles, uh, but I'm having one before he comes in. No. Uh, Josh Gillard definitely deserves uh, to be in this in this competition. And um, definitely showed that last heat. He was getting incredible height, just missing his landings a little bit. And... Um, we got Stino, incredible Dutch rider. Edgar just, you know, getting things, getting tricks that you didn't even know were possible with an extraordinary style. Got Marijn coming back into booth here. What's up, G? What's up? How's it looking out there? Oh, it's insane. How did it go with uh, getting up the watches? Yeah, we're working on some technical things with the SIM cards. We just got them in. Sweet. Um, so that means that the riders will have internet on the water. Yes, we're activating them now. For now, the riders will. For now, the riders are uh, using actually a uh, phone that's connected to their watch that shares the internet. But so the, the watch phone can actually. Uh, the phone is on the chest. Yeah, in in your wetsuit. Uh, but we want to get rid of that, so we are activating sims only on the watches. It took a very long time for them to activate here in France, but uh, we can see Stino coming here. Is he on the seven meter kai? It looks like Second it. Second trick attempt of the heat. There we go. Huge elevation in his trick. Taking the board off by the fin with the late back roll. Stomping that landing. That's his first trick and a good score for a first trick. So that's what you want to do is get a good score on your first trick. Just for confidence and security. Can we call that trick the Stino already? It's uh, by quite signature uh, Stino's opening move. I don't think Board of there's back by the fin. I don't think there's anybody else doing that trick nowadays like he does. Yeah, with the kite so far behind him after the loop. It's cool how you see him float and rotate with his kite. Definitely, definitely. Here we see Clement coming Clement up with the Harlem uh, kite. Yeah, Clement Harlem kite, a six, me six meter. Board off with the laid back in between the loops. Or I mean, um, double loop, I mean. With a laid back in between the loops. Very stylish, clean, not the most height, not the most pool, but uh, clean execution from Clement here on his uh, home turf. So uh, he will have a score. 
We got 6.4 and 6.4 both for Josh Gillett and Stino and uh, 3.93 for Edgar. Uh, as we're waiting for the score for Clement to drop in here. Beautiful to see how scores are so close in heats. Yeah, it's tricky for the judges to really separate these riders by their skills since they're all very, very talented. We got a 6.5 for Clement, which uh, will bring the top three very close together. As uh, we see Edgar taking off here. Going for an s board off there. Huge. Wow. Beautiful. Um, funny to see that that double from Clement is scored higher than the singles Josh and Stino are doing. That means that this trick of Edgar would have a, go a good score. Seems like the judges are liking those doubles. Definitely. Um, you sacrifice a little bit on your, uh, if you don't go that high, on your distance and your power. I mean, uh, you But you're way more technical. I mean, you sacrifice because the wind goes up and down. So you are in a risk. Yeah, taking out that smaller kite, going for those double maneuvers is, is a risk. So we see Josh here coming up. Is he on the seven? I, th I believe he's on the seven there, uh, which you can use for singles and for doubles. But uh, most likely in this uh, heat, he's going to use it for doubles. I hope he does. And... Going up there, does. Doobie double loop. There we see a, a, good, a good example of where you have a very technical trick, performed well, but not at a very high, uh, um, not very high powered, not very high executed. Uh, let's see what the judges uh, score that because it's a very technical and difficult trick to execute. You loop the kite twice to the left while you rotate twice to the right. So quite a difficult trick for him, but uh, not the most high. Yeah, so it's difficult, not so high, so that will decrease the score. And um, we've got Stino coming in here, left foot forward, trying to get speed. Nice edge there. Contra, front roll, board off, edit. Also, Stino's signature trick. He's playing safe in this heat. He wants to make sure that he has two or three tricks on the board before he goes and takes risks. And that's smart riding because you have four people in your heat and you don't know what's going to come. Yeah, and you want to have those safe tricks on the board and then... Uh, once you have those three tricks ready, you can start actually pushing uh, and trying the tricks that are more tricky to land. If you crash your first three tricks, it means you have to ride safely for your last four in order to get good scores. There we see Clement jumping, wanting to go for the double contra frontal, Not unfortunately missing out and crashing there. That's hard. That hurts. It's unfortunate when you don't get the gust up and then the gust especially here, it, there's a lull with that drops you and uh, means you cannot do the second loop, but also means for him that he cannot land this trick. Uh, he will have to body drag, but it looks like Stino is riding towards him to bring him back his board. Now well, that's just... Ah, he got his board already. Stino was just checking if he needs to. With four people in the heat, uh, each rider has plenty of time to ride back upwind so they can help each other retrieve the boards. Nice move from Sino there to check if Clement needed some help, but he's all good riding back upwind as we go for uh, for the turn of uh, Edgar, who's riding very powered to the left actually at the moment. He's very used to this spot and used to the gusts, so let's see if he can catch this one up here. I mean, Edgar knows this spot like nobody else. He didn't get the gust there, but... Double front roll he can with the board off. He can get things out of the bag that you'll be shocked of. For sure, for sure. And it does seem that uh, since I was last here in, in, the, in the commentator booth, the wind has dipped a little bit more. Uh, the sun has come out a bit higher, making it a bit more warm, uh, which can mean that the wind uh, can dip a bit more as it we've, we are seeing now. We don't see the heights that we were seeing uh, at the end of the round one, uh, but we're definitely seeing uh, nice moves as we see Josh Gillett here lining up for another trick. Whoa. Laid back. Is that a? Did he do a back roll before? I, I believe there was a back roll double loop. Sick. I want to see the there, replay on that. There, there we see the go. replay. I haven't seen this land this beautiful before. It might laid be for him double. the first time ever landing this. Laid back double. That's just beautiful. Now that's a world class trick that I haven't even landed yet. And that's cool to see. That's going to be a good score. Um, you are always. In the judges booth, Mariah, now you're here commentating. Tell the people a little bit how about how hard it is to judge those things because the similarity of the tricks is insane. Um, just the power of the rider makes the biggest difference. Um, how hard is it? Yeah, it definitely can be very tricky as these riders are at a very similar level. Um, the thing that differentiates the 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 tricks for for me as a judge is uh, the displays the uh, the display of power and control in your move. 
uh, the higher you go, the more powered your kite loop is and the more in control you are of your trick. For me, the higher your score should be regardless of what trick you execute. There are so many different tricks nowadays, as we see Sistino going for one here. A front roll, wanting to go for that boogie board by the fin, Ooh. unfortunately bombing out there, getting pulled, getting yanked by the gust. Uh, that's a bomb out for him. And that's, that's, that's just gust. That's, that's just pure gust. gust. Yeah, and it's a very tricky maneuver for him to go into a front roll while taking off the board by a fin I mean, it's and lovely, looping the kite. It's lovely to see that he is one of the only riders that takes off the board by the fin. And it's extremely hard to do yeah. that. Yeah, and as a judge, you see this. You see, for example, here, if he would have had the board off by the handle, probably wouldn't have been out as much out of control getting yanked by the kite as that he was now. Uh, here we see Clément. Is he going to try... The front row contra again. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oy, oy, oy. just not getting enough wind, I believe, there to to perform these doubles tricks. Uh, that Harlem kite is very very good in doubles, but it does need quite a lot of wind to perform those double tricks. Um, and as I was saying before, regardless of what trick the riders do, as long as it's high powered uh, and has a good technicality, it can score very high. Here we see Edgar going as well, going up there. Is that a back roll as Lubordov? I couldn't really see. There was a little bit of a... Now that's just exactly what I mean with Edgar. Getting things out of the back that just come out of we nowhere. We see the replay. Ah, it was a front, front roll. roll. Double ah, contra. Double contra Bordov. And an edit rotation. Now that's just beautiful. Very controlled Execution. on the landing as well. Uh, Experienced on this spot in the chop. So we see that display here in this last trick of him. And you only need one or two of those kind of tricks that just, you know, when you get the good gust and... There we go, Josh. Wow. Huge. Kite level on that double loop there. Amazing performance actually here from Josh Gillett, who is a South African rider, not really used to the flat water, used to the big waves in, in Blower, Cape Town, showcasing that he's actually uh, in very much control of this heat so far. He has the highest uh, score of this heat. Uh, oh, we see the score for Edgar just drop in now, 7.73 for that contra front row board off. That's a great uh, score. Taking the highest score of the heat then away from Josh Gillett, who had a 7.1 for his double loop now back row board off. Josh Gillett here is going to get another good score. That means that it's Just waiting for it now. Loading. As we see Stino approach his next, next trick, he's gonna probably going to go again for that boogie front row by the fin. There we go. Huge. Doobie by the fin. Can he stick this? Oh! Oof. Big wipe out there, but if he would have landed that, that's maybe one of the one well of the harder single loop tricks to perform. To hardest. do a double rotation while you're holding the board by the fin is incredibly difficult for There's Sino. Not a lot of riders that can do that. Great performance there for trying it. I think that he uh, he got pretty close, just missing out on the, the extra lift in his down loop to put the board back on. As we no, see a 7.63 coming for Josh Gillett for that beautiful double loop with a back roll. My back roll. A relatively high score compared to... Edgar's trick where Josh Gillett didn't even get the board off and uh, Edgar definitely got two rotations in, two loops and a board off. Um, see Clement going up, going again for the double contra front roll. Will he land it this time? Yes, he will. That's the third time he's tried this in a row. The judges will be aware of that for, for, uh, for the trick score, um, but definitely good for him to land it. Uh, I think he's happy with that because he now can focus on some other tricks in his next three moves that he has left. He's done four now in total. Um, but that double front roll, contra, double loop, is good for Clement to get that score in right now. Uh, as we will see uh, another turn for, for, for Edgar here. Now Josh Gillett is in first place. Josh Gillett and Edgar are going neck on neck. Just beautiful to see that Josh Gillett is pushing these guys to Not perform. finding the gust there, eh? Unfortunately missing out on that one. Just a straight loop from him. Wanting to go for a double. Uh, maybe to do the board off even. He has uh, his highest scoring tricks are an S loop board off, a contra loop front roll and a contra loop board off. Meaning that um, he actually needs uh, to do some kite loops maybe to to get another score in uh, that's in a different category for the judges. As uh, so we see Josh again approaching here, leader of this heat, jumping. Wow! Oh! If he would have landed that, that, that would have been insane. Unfortunately, the kite was so low. Let's see if he's stalling. okay. It was stalling in front of him and not recovering quick enough 
Do but definitely amazing, amazing attempt there from Josh Gillett. Balls. Incredible riding from him. It's, it's a bit of a... I'm, I'm, uh, he's exceeding my expectations for this event. Uh, he's a very, very good rider, and I haven't seen him perform this well in Flatwater yet. Uh, I see him usually go in Cape Town, one of the people going the highest, as it's his home turf. But he's uh, really taking it to the, to the locals here, to Clement and Edgar. Um, I to mean, he is showing that he deserves to be in this contest and deserves to be competing at the highest le level of Big Air, which is just insane to see, because I have seen this kid just get better and better every time I was training. He was always training in the same little uh, area as where I was in Cape Town. Let's see if Stino's gonna go for that uh, Dubi. I would want to see him do that Dubi front roll with uh, Board of by the Finn. Let's see if he's gonna go again there. Not connecting no. with the gust, unfortunately, just a Dubi loop there. No, you can't do anything about that. I mean, you've got something in mind that you want to do, and if you just can't get that takeoff, then... You see on the replay there that he, he doesn't just have the, the height here coming up. Still managing to, to perform a double rotation there, but uh, yeah, that's unfortunate for Stino. Missing out on the gust there. Um, putting him a bit on the back foot as Clement is in third place with 13.27 and Stino is now in, in fourth with 11.8, meaning that he needs, uh, he needs another high scoring trick, which is very possible. Uh, but in order to be uh, second and progress through, the, through this round, he actually needs to get uh, a very high score to beat Edgar or Josh. Clement going up here for his, uh, for his fifth attempt, just tacking back, not feeling the wind gust there. I mean, I would love to see what the riders need to get in the first or second position. And the uh, riders do have that information on their watch. Let's see what Clement is going for. That's Luke Bordov. Beautiful execution. Just Good not technical getting trick. the height. Just he barely missing out on the height, unfortunately for him. But he will definitely score a good six there. Where Edgar... And Josh have two incredible high scores, but their third score is relatively low. So they're going to have to go and improve those low scores. Um, we see Stino coming back to the beach, probably going for a kite change. He's on seven now. Do you think he would switch down to the six to go for double loops? Or do you think he would switch up to the eight? His last trick, he didn't go as high, so he might change up a size. Could, could be, could be, because um, I know that... Stino wants to risk the doubles, but um, didn't seem to quite get them in the last heat. So I think he'll go safe and maybe he switches up, or he'll just go and risks it. I think for most riders, for single loops, the, the eight is definitely the most comfortable kite. It's what they train on the most, so he might just switch back to the eight, uh, as this kite feels more familiar, as we see Edgar go up here. Going doing for that double loop as well. We see this heat that the riders are, are some riders are choosing to stay on the smaller sizes, uh, and they're sacrificing a bit of height and extremity, uh, but still getting those technical tricks in. I wonder if that's a smart approach, Con. If this was your heat, what would you what would you do? I would definitely be on the six doing doubles. Um, you can definitely see that they score the doubles well now, and um, yeah, just have to wait for their gust. You have to wait for their gust and hope for the best, and. Um, Landed after that, of course. But it's a hard decision. Like it's stressful to to have to make that choice. What are you gonna do? What are the judges gonna score? There we go. As Luke Bordov as well from Josh Gillett. Stand. There we go. Stomping landing it. the landing. Not the highest, but showing the judges that he can do those tricks as well. Looks like Stino has grabbed a smaller kite here, so he's definitely gonna go and try go for that double. Interesting move there from Stino. Josh coming to the beach there. Probably checking his scores with his caddy to see if he needs to change anything or is it just in, in control enough. Sino just switched back kites and uh, his red flag is raised, meaning he needs to go for his turn right now. Uh, Tacking back around, we see also Edgar who is uh, there actually upwind in the competition box. So pretty curious to see how we Sino will maneuver around Edgar there, but seems to be all right as there does seem to be some extra wind there on the water. Let's see. Let's see if we have good hope for Stino. Having a takeoff. There we go. Getting a le yes. Oh, double board off by the fin there. Yo! Whoa! That's sick. Look is how that happy he is. Is that a first ever in competition, Replay, 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 replay. There we go. 
Incredible trick there from Stino. Now that's just See beautiful. him commit to that Kai loop. Once you have that board off, you can't you can't not commit to that double loop there. And like we said, on the fin is extremely hard, especially on a double loop because that double loop is going to pull you off, off axis. So getting that board back on your feet is a skill. Just incredible and Stino just needed that score. Very nicely done by him. Clamart here on the back foot then as he would have probably seen that trick from from Stino. Uh, there he, he did jump. I wonder if the judges are going to count that as, a, as an attempt or he's going to get another tech there. It seems his flag is, uh, is still up. No, he, he looks a bit bumped though. I'm curious he's to see the score up. come in for, for, uh, for Stino here. Yeah, that was the... Yeah, that was uh, Clement's turn there. Unfortunately then uh, missing out on an extra attempt. Um, I'm I'm wondering uh, how these scores will drop in for, for Stino here, uh, for that double the board off. We see Edgar powering up here for his last attempt. Eslu board off with a late front row actually. Now that's... That's incredible technician there. And riding out with a little back stylish, there. Stylish move there, probably got some freestyle experience in that move. He's happy with his uh, performance here. He's currently first place if I'm right. We don't have the latest scores drop in here yet. I mean, here you see as well that Josh yeah. Gillett, Josh Gillett has a seven, seven, and a five, where Clement has six, 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 and um, that gets Clement. Oh, oh, we see him there, Josh Gillett with a doobie double loop on the right, landing that. That's a very technical trick. Josh is very. Uh, this is a close heat. This is a very close this heat, is actually. Very close heat. We see now as the scores have updated for us, we get a 7.5 for Stino's double loop board off by the Finn, putting him above uh, Clement, who's in fourth, by 0 0.03. So that's a very, uh, very close. And then in, in second, we have Josh with a 20.5, and in first place, Edgar with a 21.6. Insanely close. This heat means that the two top riders will progress to the next round, and the, the riders uh, now in, in third and fourth. Uh, need to actually perform a very nice trick or they might be kicked out of this competition, unfortunately. Stino's turn is up there. Red flag is up. Red light for Stino. Here we go. What, what kind of double trick is he going <laughs> to perform here? He needs a big one in order to be one first or second. Here he goes up. Is he going to do... Oh, once again! Whoa! And oh! oh, no! Just bombing out that one. The kite was pretty level with him on the second loop there. As we see the replay here, let's see if we can get the kite in the frame. Well, that's one of the most beautiful tricks I've seen so far. Wow. Look at that commitment, eh? Just looking at his sky oh. while it goes double. And there you see the, the, how tricky it is actually to land in that chop if you have a high speed landing. But it wasn't a fairly smart move from Stino because he's got a 7.5. There we go with Clement. Oh. Double front row contra board off double Edit. loop. And an added rotation. With an added rotation. No, he just needed that. This is so close, Mariah. This is a very, very this tense This is so heat. close. You can really see that these riders are fighting to stay in the competition. Uh, the, the, the third and the fourth rider in this heat, unfortunately, are going home. So they're really battling to, to win this heat. As we see, the scores are slowly coming in. At, at the moment, it's Edgar and Josh uh, who are in first and second. Um, but anything could happen from that last trick of Clement. N knocking out perhaps Josh or, or Edgar down, uh, I'm down shaking. a peg. I'm shaking. But Josh still has um, an attempt, right? No. No, he doesn't. Seems like the heat is over then. Uh, as we're just waiting for the, for the final scores to drop in. This is so close. <laughs> this is a very close, intense heat. So I'm going to move over to my other laptop to, to check the scores on this screen. Because they all... Need one extra score to come in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. No, we didn't get the. Let's see. Yeah. So Clement. Here we go to a to a replay of the whole heat with some highlights. Here we see Clement with a nice double loop with a back row in there. No, that's just incredible. Edgar in first place, Josh Gillard in second place, Clement in third, and Sino. Beautiful. Wonderful performance there by Josh Gillett, my rider of the heat for me 
incredibly impressed by his uh, his tricks there, Definitely. showing an incredible kite angle and incredible commitment to those doubles. Uh, Edgar uh, showcasing that he's um, he's definitely the favorite uh, French rider in this event so far, and the most technical rider of the heat. Yeah, for sure, having a having a more technical approach than, for example, Josh, but you're showcasing uh, that uh, the power that Josh has and the angle that he has in his kites is and the uh, height he and the was height going high is uh, is rewarded by the judges as well, which which makes it interesting for the riders and their approach towards the heat. They of course look at every score at every heat, what the judges are scoring at the moment, and try to adapt to that. Um, for sure, going as big as possible is important, but the more technical tricks you try, the harder it can be to actually get that kite level and to actually get the height you need. So these riders are making a decision between going on a bigger kite, going for more power, for more, um, for more extremity, uh, or going for the more technical approach, and they're basing those decisions of what the judges are scoring throughout the day. As we have the next heat coming up, there's three Frenchies in this one. Three! Three Frenchies, so I wonder what the people at home are, are rooting for. Uh, we have N uh, Nathan Texier, uh, local here, trains a lot on the spot where Edgar's riding as well. Uh, we have Val Valentin Garat, uh, also very, uh, very well-known rider, um, known as well for his freestyle capabilities. Uh, and then we have Arthur Joubert, Frenchman, uh, freestyle world champion. So those are the three Frenchies. And then we have uh, also the new face, Martin Ronel from Estonia, riding the Elevate Kite. So we have two Elevate Kites on the water. Uh, we have the the blue one is belongs to Edgar. The red one belongs to Martin. It's nice that the the red lycra is um, riding with the red kite. Right, yeah, that looks cool. Uh, and then we have two duotone kites as well. So it's going to be for you at home maybe a bit hard to tell apart these riders. But uh, we have coming up first here in the blue lycra, uh, Nathan Texier, who's riding to the left, pretty powered here. There Looks like go. he's on a six meter kite, going up there. Just not Ooh, not getting. connecting with the wind there, dropping out oh. actually in the sky a bit there. So that's what the gusts do. It makes it very in unpredictable um, yeah, to do things and to land because you don't know if that wind's going to catch you, or get you, up in the, or get you up in the air. As the white flag is raised, we, uh, we see Val coming up here. I think he's going to go for a right foot forward trick here. Let's see, edging, back on edge. He's going to turn again. Did not get the power he wanted. Looks like all of them are on smaller kites, opting for, for double loops here. I mean, we have seen all the riders s stay on sixes. For sure, yeah. It's pretty rare to see a kite change back to an eight in these competitions because we have seen that the double loop score, we know that the wind can be there during your heat. There we go. Foul going up there. Oh, do you think he will wanted to go fin. there for uh, for a double loop? Or no, that uh, would just be insane. That would double be pretty loop, crazy. Laid back board of by the fin. It wouldn't be my first trick attempt if I'm in the heat. So I would take not. it a bit safe and then if I, you need not. to push, go for that. But it just landed that uh, kite loop board of laid back there pretty easily, showing the control to the judges. As uh, it's the turn for uh, Martin pretty soon. His uh, flag is not raised yet, but there we go. Red flag is up. Meaning Martin Ranel from Estonia is up here. No, One of his first competitions, first world tour for sure for him, first world stop. This is his time to show what he has. Gets up in the air well. Double loop with a laid back roll. What do you think of that trick, uh, Koan? I mean, it's nice. Didn't get the, the gust he wanted there to go high. Obviously, you just want to boost 20 meters up straight from takeoff. And looks uh, like he might be heading in for a kite swap. No, feeling that first trick, he wasn't getting the height and the power, he might change to a different kite. Probably goes a size up. Now, it's cool to see how back in the days when doubles were in a thing, we didn't really have kite changes. And now, there's three or four happening every heat. Which is cool to see, because, um, yeah, Lewis was timing one of them earlier. Go Arthur. Here we go. Looks like the wind has dropped. Whoa! Oh! I would have yeah. not gone for that second loop there. And that's the thing, you know, when you go into a front roll, you, you do kind of lose the awareness of how high you go. And if you then commit to that second loop, you'll just drop like a rock. You see how precise these moves have to be. Uh, if, a, if a big air trick is done uh, stylish and with control, it looks like it's easy, but it takes so much precise work on the bar and steering the kite and feeling actually feeling. how high you are. A lot of feeling. And it's a lot of experience, as many hours on the water as possible. The more you have, the more you can get this feeling, recognize this feeling, and 
go for tricks or go not for tricks. There we go. Another trick for Nathan. Connecting there That's with huge. a gust, it seems like. That's huge. Front row contra with a board off. Stylish grab in there. He's on the gust there, eh? Now that's going to be a good first score. He's going to be stoked with that. Judges are going to be stoked 18 with that. 18.3 meters seems on the surf app with 174 meters of travel distance. Where where are we getting a surf We will see this course. after the replay. We ju I just saw it on the, on the stream for a short. There we go. You can see mm, how, nice he elevates, how he elevates a second He sticks lift. to the wind. Attach he's still attached to the gust there. It's beautiful. You could see his second lift within his jump. You could see that the kite was catching that wind while he already jumped and got an extra lift. Now those are one of the most incredible feelings ever. Up next is uh, Val. Previous trick was a was a laid back board off by the Finn. Uh, let's see what it's gonna do for this one. Huge going up as well. Pretty big there. The kite was leveled on that country. It just big gust in the kite loop, I believe. I think he got a lot of wind, and that's why he didn't manage to get his board off. He's got pulled off axis and uh, couldn't commit to the trick he wanted to do there. You see, his hand went towards the board, got pulled by the kite, and pulled out of it. Yeah, you don't want to risk uh, having a big wipeout in the begin beginning of your heat. 18.9 meters there for Val. Pretty high trick as well then. As we go back to Martin Ranel here. Doesn't seem like he switched kites there. Doing an S-loop though. Pretty radical S-loop there. A large commitment from him. I mean, he pulled that S pretty late, which requires balls. Doesn't look as great he as still those goes for it low, there. Yeah, as those low... Low uh, S loops, uh, Hill does or Lorenzo does, but it is still very ballsy. Yeah, the name the name S loop comes from the the letter S that you draw in the sky with your kite, uh, and in order to do that, you would actually have to send your kite down halfway through your loop to draw that S. If your kite's going up a bit more, it looks a bit more like an eight. There we go, double contra from Arthur. Oh. Just that looked uh, like a painful landing there. He was getting a lot of speed there. Yeah, a large amount of speed in his landing. Unfortunately, crashing that one. It seems like the wind is, is back a bit more than uh, at the beginning of the heat, though. It's the rides up. are getting better heights as we see 16.4 meter there for Arthur. Um, quite a steady heartbeat, 135. I would be a bit more... Uh, my heartbeat would be a bit higher yeah, here funny. in these winds. So I haven't seen this yet. We can see the beats per minute... Are those the Ks and hour they are currently riding yeah. or what they are achieving when they're landing or... It's, it's li their life speed. Constant. Yes, constant their constant speed, speed, which uh, the Apple Watch is measuring every second. The height every two and seconds. the distance of the jump. That's just... So we see here Nathan is riding with 41 kilometers an hour into this trick. Going, going for that trick there. Getting the height again. Crashing there, crashing. unfortunately. Oh, and it's and kite the unhooked goes. there. Luckily, he's not on the safety line. His kite coming under, out of his hook there, and uh, he needs to hook it back in and, and try to relaunch it there in the middle of the competition box. Looks like his board is a couple of meters upwind of him as well. And a big thing is when you are riding in these competitions, it's uh, it's about 20 minutes, 15 minutes of well, top sport. And it requires energy, and um, you know it's 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 quite a thing being out there. Then if you crash and you lose your board and you're needing to go upwind like this, body dragging, that's where you lose your energy. It costs a lot of effort to go back up towards your board. Riding on your board is easy, and um, kind of being a boat in the water is just uh, yeah, it will take take it out of you. So you want to do that as little as possible obviously because you want to have a score but you want to keep that board as close as possible when you when you crash and just let it go before you hit the water just so let it, it doesn't go hit you i sometimes even throw it down when not even not even i keep it with me <laughs> i hold it when i pencil dive i know it might be a little bit, bit dangerous. dangerous but uh danger is my second name <laughs> so that's why you're wearing a helmet nowadays as exactly well. protect your head a bit i've had the board on my head uh, once in my life uh, I, had a, I had a small cut on my head 
I had to go to the hospital and stitch it up. Unfortunately, I'm not riding with a helmet yet. Maybe uh, I need one more punishment before I decide yeah. to really change to the helmet. We see a lot of the riders riding with helmets nowadays. Really inspired, I think, by, by the Italian guys, uh, Andrea Principi and Lorenzo Cassati. Here we have Fogara taking off with a lot of power. Gus is coming through. Wow, Huge. beautiful rotation there. That's just a... Oh, oh Unfortunately, no. they're just a big, big butt check. Do you think this, the judges are going to yeah, score that trick? Yeah, he's riding out of it. He's riding out of it. Just a big, big, big bounce out of that trick, is but a very beautiful a rotation there from Val. 15.3 meters on that trick with a distance of uh, 97 meters. Uh, good height there and good power in the loop, actually. Unfortunately, so uh, a bit of a butt check, which will cost him a couple of points there. Well, wha what I once had... Uh, while kiting was I I dropped my board and it was upwind and I was wanting to go oh. S loop I, I board think off. it was a contra ooh but I left my board uh, my, my board fell upwind and I was body dragging through the waves in Cape Town head first pounding upwind and my board got caught in the wave oh, that oops. I had to head first dive into while i went into that wave i just heard duke board on the helmet made a hole in my oh. helmet so imagine no if, helmet if i didn't have a helmet and in, in 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 that session i'd just cut my head open yeah it's dangerous with the boards sharp fins on the end of the board uh, sharp rails uh, they're all made of carbon nowadays very stiff light material to to have give as much attention in the board as possible to the riders so to have those boards on your head is uh, it's not very comfortable as we see unfortunately a crash there from martin uh, i believe he was attempting a double contra loop with a board off he's delaying the loop a bit which uh, is a bit more dangerous because you're falling down a bit faster after your of your kite loop um there we see archer coming up he needs to get a trick on the board now there we go contra oh Oof, just squeezing in another rotation there on the way down. I think this uh, showing some freestyle experience there, managing to, to land that trick with that extra rotation just before the landing. Here we see the replay. And going up in a front roll, going for that tic-tac there, and then we see at the last moment here, just stomping that. That's a quite, a, quite an experienced rider uh, landing there, being able to land with, uh, with that speed in the chop. So up next we have uh, Nathan again in, in the blue lycra. It's uh, it will be his fourth trick attempt. And do we know his age? Uh, I believe he's. Uh, I'm, I'm just writing, checking Lewis's notes here. He's well well prepared and he's not got as prepared whole notebook as us. Here I see. As we see a trick there from Nathan again, going huge there. Getting the landing? No. Oh. So that's the thing when you go so high, it's so hard to land because you fall from so high um, and you need to keep that together and it's just incredible skill to you know keep on your board and really ba balance in the middle of your board next up here Val on the wide lycra going for that contra board of there not the height he probably wanted sliding out of that one this will be considered a crash though Losing the board on the landing. Wow, what a beautiful day so far. I'm so amazing. excited. Very amazing. I mean, we were at the beach already at seven. seven. Uh, watched the sunrise here on the beach. And the wind was already blowing at that moment. Uh, just before the riders meeting, the boys were already bumping up their kites. You know, we're all excited. There we go, Martin Ranel going for another trick attempt there. Only has one, uh, only has one, uh, two tricks on the board, sir. So he needs to land this one. S loop board off. Oh, oh just ah, too much speed bouncing on the out, Bouncing out there. Very hard to control that landing with that amount of speed. So unfortunately uh, crashing that one, as we can see the replay right here. I mean, that's what happens when you fall down with so much speed. Stretching the legs there. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. And because the chops, because of your speed, you kind of ride on top of the chop. And sometimes you might even like be in the air. And um, if your board is not fully connected to the water, there's no way of balancing on it. You get what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it, there's no way of edging anyway because there the, you're riding over the top of the chop. 
Yeah, you need to get uh, tension in your lines as soon as possible to keep riding out of that trick. And if you don't have any tension there, uh, it's really it can be really hard to, to ride out because the board doesn't have enough volume to keep you afloat. So you really need to use that kite to keep the momentum there. And, and that, that unfortunately didn't work out there for Martin. As we see, Archie are gearing up for a trick to the right, changing it up there. Our local rider. We're going in for Getting a front roll. Right. Do you Ex think? Adding a rotation, keeping the board off for a bit longer. Probably wanted to go for a I double there. I just ask, no? do you think he, he wanted to go for a double there? I do think so. I just didn't get the gust. And then it's smart riding to actually not go for it and just at least get a trick there on the board. Because he landed. You see the replay, adding rotation there. Soaring through the air and having a nice landing. That's sweet. So it does put a it does put a score on the board for Arthur, but we can see with a height of 11.8 meters uh, just disappeared now. But um, didn't get the high in high enough for for a double loop. I think you need to be a, a, a bit above 13, 12, 13 meters to get that kite to actually go around twice. So Marine, how do I update this laptop here? Sorry, so I'm, I'll not I'll <laughs> I'm not a technical. <laughs> I'll uh, go to your screen quickly. And uh, our which heat are we in currently? We're heat three. So we can check the scores right there. Sweet. So we can Thank see you. now uh, it's. Um, Martin Ranel actually in in uh, oh no, it's Valentin uh, in the lead at the moment with 11.5 there, um, two scoring tricks and Martin in second with two scoring tricks and then third with Nathan only one scoring trick, and uh, Archer just landed his first trick so that will mean that he will be uh, uh, getting a score for that finally. Um, so we are we've had four trick attempts now. Going towards the fifth, here's Nathan taking off with a front roll kind loop board off. Edit rotation and a butt check. That's Ooh. what we call a doobie loop, but he didn't ride out of it. Seems sadly. like he was completely under the water. Uh, the, consider the, the judges consider that a, a crash. If you're not riding out and you're completely below the water, um, you've not landed the trick uh, with enough control to get at least some points on the board. So unfortunately for Nathan there and uh, crashing that one, he needs uh, to land his last two tricks. Otherwise, he is only has one uh, or two tricks on the board, and there are three scoring out of seven. So and here's Fagrat. Taking off right foot forward, going for Pretty a huge big kind of board of there. Yo. Getting yanked as well during that loop. Nice extension of the legs. His body went horizontal. Here we can see on the replay. Big pull on the loop Yo, as they're I'm getting coming. a knock on the door. Knocking Lewis. on the door. There we go. Extension there from the legs, getting swung by the kite actually during that loop. And good landing there for Val. Means he will get another trick score in there. Uh, probably will mean that he's the first rider that will have three scores that are counting on the board. He did a Kailu back roll board off, a contra loop front roll, and now a 6.07 for that Kailu board off. Uh, giving him now the first place position with a total score of 17.57. Pretty comfortable lead so far as um, Archer and Nathan have crashed uh, all but one trick as Nathan goes there for a huge... Double con was that a double contra board of I, I believe see. so. I, I saw, I think uh, there he, he uh, did contra. stick the landing on this one. Here we see the replay. Yeah, yeah contra. double contra there. And here we have Lewis coming back in the booth. You guys should actually oh, yeah. see. Oh, not yet. After this, hit. Uh, <laughs> after this hit, Lewis will be back. But you guys should just see how we have to open the door. From this, uh, quite a mission. Yeah, it's like the moment the lock goes off, the door flies, flies open, open, and it's a huge, heavy door. So you fly with it. <laughs> um, so me and Lewis were just holding the door with two people <laughs> to try fighting and fighting the it, way. <laughs> yeah, to try and get it closed again. That's Maybe for next year they can put the door on the other side of the box, so we, nice. we can get in and out comfortably. Uh, that would be nice. But um, this heat so far has been. Um, we've seen quite some crashes as we see a trick there from Arthur. And the boys are going back oh, to... Bombing out of that one as well. The boys are going back to single loops this heat, kind of, huh? Yeah, yeah. it seems that the wind is not favorable enough, giving them enough gusts for the double loops. So the, the riders are, are staying with the single loops for now. Uh, but if you're on the water with a six meter kite, uh, planning to go for doubles and you have to do singles, your technical tricks that you normally do with a single loop are actually becoming a bit harder because you have less time in the air. You have a kite that's a bit quicker, more aggressive. So to perform then your technical tricks, is is also quite hard and to land with the uh, with the control, um, yeah, it's challenging for these riders at the moment. But I mean, like, if it were if it was easy, it wasn't fun, was it? For sure. That <laughs> that's why these riders are pushing here the level. They're they're pushing each other. We've seen the level in the past four or five years skyrocket. There's a new tricks landed every month, and uh, 
these riders are pushing each other and pushing themselves to to get those uh, new tricks on there uh, and to show the best the best tricks of big air to you watching at home and i, I hope you're enjoying the show as we see uh, nathan come in here for another trick there he needs to land uh, he needs to land this trick and and the trick after otherwise he won't have three scoring tricks for this heat He's currently sitting on, on fourth position with a 6.7, but that is only because he, he's been going very, very high, but he has not been landing his tricks. So if it just takes another two tricks, he could be uh, actually in first or second position and uh, progress through this round. I mean, he doesn't need very, very high scores. If he is able to get another two sixes, then that would be it for him. Looking at the other people's score, and Arthur also needs another trick to be able to um follow up with the guys i mean coming back for another tech there nathan i didn't think i don't think he had the wind in the in the beginning there but hopefully you connect there with the gust now that's here huge. he goes goes big again he better just lands this one oh. oh you could see he got out of control there in his down loop that means that he has only one trick attempt left but unfortunately, he has only one scoring trick so far. It's going to be really hard for him to then uh, no, to then actually edge out, come into first or second position. Though yeah. unfortunately, it probably means that Nathan is uh, oh, the local is is out of this competition. Too bad. I mean, that's just sad to see that he didn't get to land his tricks. He was going very big though, well, maybe one of the highest single loops uh, in this heat. So it's unfortunate to, to see that uh, he was not able to land those tricks as they would have scored pretty good if they if he would have landed them. Coming in here then Valgarot. Back roll time. with the board of and a contra loop there, getting the board back on his feet. Also oh. didn't stick the landing, but at least Valgarot has three tricks in. In a bit more comfortable position than Nathan for sure. Definitely. Currently leading the hit, leading this heat with a total score of 17.57. He still does have a chance to show. And he's smart that he went there for the contra loop uh, board of front roll. That's a trick that he uh, that he needed there to to upgrade his uh, his lowest trick uh, score is 5.33, which is a contra loop. Um, and to be really honest, looking at this, I am so bummed. I'm not kiting. I'm so bummed. <laughs> I'm I'm very uh, very <laughs> bummed that you're not kiting either. I always loved, I always love watching Cohen go out. He's uh, probably one of the most committed riders out there. As we see this double contra attempt again now from Martin. That was also committed. Very nice Beautiful. there. Very stoked about that landing as well. It's very good of him to 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 bring it to to Valentin actually. Perhaps taking the lead, possibly taking the lead in 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 this heat with that trick. Yeah, well done, Martin. As we can see the replay here, going up there. Good height. We did see a bit of a delay in between the loops, playing a bit more safe. And the loop didn't push him forward so much, so there wasn't a lot of speed gaining after the loop, and we do want to see that. Yeah. So I wonder where the judges are going to score this. Scores are coming in slowly. But as I was saying, uh, as soon as Cohen is back on the water, I'm going to be happy to see him ride again. Uh, next competition, we'll probably see well, the most uh, extreme and committed doubles again, as we saw last year from Con here. Very I big uh, double board off. I can't and wait. And here we Marais. see actually Archer go pretty big on that one with a single loop. Oh, oh again. Oh, man, man, man. Seems like this heat, there's something in the water that's preventing these riders from being able to land their tricks controlled. Unfortunate there for Arthur as he has only two scoring tricks at the moment well, and really needs a third one. one more chance. They yeah. have one more chance. Each rider has one more chance with Nathan, unfortunately, uh, probably out because he has only one scoring trick as he is riding here, going for his last attempt. Wonder what he's going to do. He's going to take a lot of risk. Not necessary there as he goes out and unfortunately bombing out of that one as well. Not his heat. That's just a bummer. Uh, and Arthur really has to perform. He has two very good scoring tricks, a 7.6 and a 6.07. So if he does land a very big trick now, he actually could take the lead in this, in, in this heat. Arthur only needs to land. He just Which, uh, needs to land. It makes it interesting for, for Valentin and Martin. Um, Valentin currently in, in second with 17.57. But he's not guaranteed to be uh, in second if Arthur is going to land uh, the last trick of the heat with a big one. So uh, Valentin actually needs to perform a pretty pretty decent trick here as well, as we see still uh, Nathan body dragging towards his board, just found it there, uh, heading making back to the beach. Uh, making as space he's done for the other attempts. riders to take off again. Who's going to be taking off now? Val, Vagarat, his turn. 
his last attempt and he has three scores on the board he, he could use a big one there though deciding not to just, go there just on to the secure right. his seat you know he is sitting in second but it could change if archer lands a big trick at the end or martin here we go feels like a gust is coming through there yeah we feel the container shaking and vibrating Let's go. Let's see if, if uh, Val can catch this one. There we go. Unhooked. 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 Oh! Oh! And Ooh. the bar snapping out of his <laughs> hands there. <laughs> he <can> wow. <laughs> he it's the it. first attempt there we see. We felt the container shaking. <laughs> I did Lewis, not expect he was going to unhook Lewis there. Lewis screaming here on my right hand side. It's so <laughs> funny. Almost choking on a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> How's that sandwich, Lewis? <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, pretty committed there Why? to go for that, though. Why do you think he went for that? What What I'm do not you sure. think is the reason? I'm not sure. Yeah, perhaps the Tramontana got to his head. But uh, <laughs> definitely a very experienced freestyle rider. So he does have these tricks in his pocket. But uh, to perform a handle pass here is very, very tricky because the wind is so, so strong. And so it feels so punchy that the, the bar got ripped out of his hands there. So we see Martin go Martin. up there, not connecting Just with the gust. Still going for it, though. Going for an the second loop. loop was more of a down loop there, in no, my that's opinion. Not gonna, that's not going to increase his score. It's not going to be very, uh, he very big score for him there. Play, so now it's on Arthur. Happy to see that uh, Val's both his arms are still on his body yeah. there. Uh, this is Arthur's chance to... He needs to land an, uh, at least a six, I believe, here. Uh, not not that big. He can do for sure can land a, a good five, score. If he has a five, he'll be there. Yeah, he'll so be second or first. Just uh, hopefully Arthur knows this. He can see the scores on his watch. So hopefully he's aware that he's in third position. And he can actually see on the watch how many points he would need to be in second. So hopefully that's going to help him here to perform a safe trick that he's going to land. But that's going to be giving him a high enough score that will put him in the top two of this, uh, he of this heat. Foot there we go. Speeding. Looks like he has wind. Getting a nice elevation. There we go. S -loop. This Playing is smart riding. There. Smart that riding is there. Smart. That's beautiful. That might even put him in first place. Probably uh, very helpful for him that he had the watch on there because he knew that he needed to get he that definitely score. Definitely knew. Played it safe. Didn't go balls to the wall. High. But there we go. I would like to see that data on the live stream just to see what he needs. You know, 15.5 meters there on the on that S loop. Pretty impressive. As the score is slowly coming in. So let's see. I, I'm guessing he's uh, he's gonna be uh, knocking First. Val down a peg, and Val's gonna be out of this competition, yeah, unfortunately. Definitely. Let's not have any presumptions here, but that's what my expectations are saying. We can see that Archer has done seven t seven uh, tricks, but only landed three. But that's enough to actually, uh, perhaps it's enough to actually uh, progress through this heat as we're. Yeah, he doesn't. He didn't need a super high score, as he probably was seeing on his watch. He didn't need to to there you perform go. anything tricky. Five point five there, taking Congrats. first place, and uh, unfortunately, local Val uh, Valentin Garat is uh, is out of the competition right. together with Nathan. And here you can al also see that every ki everything can change last moment. The start of the heat is very important, but the last part of your heat is as important. You know, you got to finish what you started. Here we go to highlights then of this heat as I give my microphone back to Lewis. Oh, what? And I'll take your But can I, can I, can I, oh yeah, okay, okay, sweet. I really need to go wee. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Thank you. Thank you, Koan. Thank you, Morain, for looking after things there. Um, cool, that was, I went right down to the water's edge to really have a look myself. Um, but we're going to have some graphics. Oh, here, these are the replays that we're yeah. talking over. These are what you've just seen on your screen. I just saw them from the beach, and it was a pretty epic heat that going right down to the wire with that last move just knocking out, unfortunately, Valentin. But Koan is now let out of the live stream booth. Don't hold on to the door. You'll, 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 you'll go with it. You'll go with it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Careful, it's not secure yet. Blimey, you literally... It's like actually doing a mega loop and go, uh, holding on to the door and going with it. But these are the highlights that we're trying to bring you. Graphics, overlay, next heat. Do it now, in no, no time. We've seen all these replays. There we go. Julian... Oh, come on, where's my graphics gone? Graphics. It is very much the goat versus the lamb. Aaron Hadlow here with Max Tullet, more than half his age in this heat, both from Britain. That's too quick. Graphics, please. 
Wow, the third time lucky. Rubens Fart, everyone hoping for in Australia to, to deal with this. And Julian Hun from France. Where's Max Tullet? In my eyes, that buggered from looking outside. Or is he in the black rash vest there? No, it's, uh, it's a picture that's not uh, not actually Max Tullet there, but um, we know what it's like. He's a tall, tall, actually tall guy from, uh, from the UK. Interesting he this then. He's only 15. How tall... How it doesn't matter age anymore, does it? About how tall you are, he's way taller than I am. But uh, what a what a heat we've got here! Then twenty one years of age between them. It's Julian Hun from France that will be kicking things off here in round two, heat number four. Welcome to you all, still listening and perhaps just joining us on the live stream. It's epic action here, going straight in for the wow. big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. I like that. No chance of landing, oh. unfortunately. I nearly landed it. Uh, might as be considered might as a big butt check there. Maybe, as the wind has picked right up here. That's what my two and a half year old would say. It's a big one, it's a big <laughs> one. She says that when she sees the big jumps. And Julian Hoon just can't quite, I mean, he's gone so far downwind there. It's outrageous. So, Marine, uh, there was two pretty epic heats there, I think, in the passing of me walking down to the water's edge. But they were going big down there. Did Stin Mole make it in the end? Unfortunately, it looks he like a... a he had a yeah. hard heat. Yeah, he had a very hard heat. And he did a very nice trick at the end, just crashing it in the last second uh, I do think unfortunately that he's uh, he's out uh, but it was an incredible heat to watch with uh, I like that um, he brings something new he's something unique with the borders by the fin we don't see that often especially on the double loops as we see here uh, young Max Tallet jumping going for his attempt there Kyle Bordov staying it safe landing that just to get the first score on the board there Probably wearing the watch on his uh, wetsuit there, as we don't are not receiving any heart rate from him. Uh, so probably the watch is not on his wrist, but on his wetsuit. As we see a height of 15 there come in for him. Very uh, nicely uh, executed trick from him. S safe opening account there. Taking it to Aaron, who is now uh, up next. Twelve twenty-four local time. Then, cool. We've got seven and a half hours left. I think here, Marine started here today at seven forty, so we're not even halfway <coughs> through the day. I've been told we may well be getting onto the ladies at some point, but it will be round three of the men taking place. Aaron Hadlow here finds himself in the second round. He doesn't like being in the second round. Let's see if he can get through here. Decent takeoff into a boogie board off. This is the part where you got to stay calm. And the former five times world champion landing cleanly. Good start for him. Yeah, definitely a controlled start there. Uh, looked at Max, uh, maybe thought um, I'll try uh, put some tricks on the board at first. That previous heat, there were a lot of riders that unfortunately didn't get uh, all their tricks landed. So a good strategy is to go for your first three tricks that you know you can land, you're, you're more experienced in, and then start pushing. Uh, so we see that from uh, from Max here and, and now from Aaron as well. Uh, getting some tricks on the board that... Uh, that are important for the judges to have your first three moves uh, locked in. And then from there you can start uh, pushing it and, and taking it to the other riders to, uh, to actually improve your, your tricks that you've landed. Uh, we see a 5.17 for that Kyle Border from Max. So we're waiting on the score for Aaron to drop. 5.9 we see now coming in. So a little bit higher there, adding an extra rotation compared to Max. So uh, Aaron in the lead. What can this man do? Obviously had the better of the first heats compared to the other riders to be fourth in order. It's Ruben Swart. He's uh, looks like he's got a bit stuck, up, hung up there on that S-loop board off. His yeah. foot just didn't come out cleanly there, Marine. And you only really get one shot, I imagine, to take the board out there. Yeah, and you have to you have to commit to that, uh, that S-loop. As soon as you start steering the kite, you have to... Uh, you can't go really back uh, after you start steering the kite for that second loop. So, uh, unfortunately, then you, you have to accept it and uh, crash that one body drag back. Uh, and that's what happened here to, to Ruben. Uh, I think he, if he had a bit more height, maybe he would have been able to fiddle with his uh, bindings, get the foot back in the strap and land it. But um, he's currently body dragging in the competition box, just finding his board now and uh, going back upwind. Can I have another stroop ruffle, please? Go for it. How you do like I say it. that in Dutch? Stroopwafel. How do I say, can I have another Stroopwafel? Mag ik een Stroopwafel? Mag ik een Stroopwafel? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. They're the best. They're the probably and then the we say, eet smakelijk, which means uh, It's enjoy. Eet okay. smakelijk. Thank you. It's probably the best thing you can have brought into a live stream, a Stroopwafel. I brought them just from home as I... Uh, Did you make them fresh? I didn't make them fresh. Unfortunately, I don't have a waffle iron. Just like grandma used to make. Meanwhile, autofocus struggles... 
with Julian here as he uh, looks like he landed that, but I don't think it was a big move. Just a boogie loop there from Julian. Uh, he needs to get a score on the board there. Um, controlling that kite, adding a grab there to show a little bit of more control to the judges. Um, but good for Julian to get some scores in. Previous heat, he unfortunately crashed some of his tricks, most of his tricks. So uh, he needs to try and land his first three, four solid tricks and then start pushing there. 5.17 for, uh, for, for Julian then. There goes Max. Looks like a doobie. Kite loop, bit delayed on the loop there. Doesn't get the timing of that one so well. So that is going to score as a crash for the Brit. 121 beats per minute is heart rate at the moment. I'm pretty sure he's going faster than two kilometers an, an hour. hour. Yes, the wa the riders are wearing the watch, and sometimes they wear the watch uh, on top of their uh, on top of their wetsuit. Sometimes they're wearing it under their wetsuit. Here we see Aaron probably is wearing it on top, as he's not showing any heart rates. The the watch detects heart rates directly on the skin, um, as we see as well. Uh, Aaron riding and uh, waiting for that gust here. We see the speed now increasing there. It uh, updates every s every few seconds, so we don't have uh, speed as in Formula One yet, but we'll get there one day. And uh, here he goes into his trick then, riding on the left. The speed working here, as you can see, it builds up. Here he goes. Kyle Bordov with a, with a laid back rotation there. Clean landing, very good approach from him uh, here, Aaron, to, to get those, uh, first a front roll Bordov, now a back roll Bordov, uh, just to get it in there and uh, solidify his first three tricks. Probably the most experienced co uh, competition rider here in this event, Aaron Hedlow. As he's done, uh, I wonder if he's counted actually how many how many events he's done. Ten thousand, probably. I don't know, somewhere <laughs> around there. All the talk was about Tiger Woods making the cut on the weekend, but should Aaron get through this heat and make the cut into the quarterfinals, it'd be quite some number I come up with there for how many cuts he's made in kiteboarding competition. But back to Ruben Swart. looks a bit more powered here. It's going to be a double. Oh no, it's going to be an S loop board off. Trying Bins the board. Off. Tomahawks down. What's going on with the wind right now? We've got lots of people asking us on the stream how windy is it? What kite sizes they are? Marine, what do you think? I think uh, currently it's a bit up and down. We've seen uh, more and more clouds move in. Uh, the wind is still pretty strong. I would say it's around uh, 30, 35, and it can get to 45 in some scenarios. And that's why these riders are still riding with smaller kites, hoping that once their turn is up, they actually will have that gust and uh, can go super high on the double because we have seen the highest score come in from these double loops. But if you're missing that wind, if you're riding in 30, 35 knots with your small kite, it's going to be pretty hard to to get a score on the board that's impressive enough to to beat the other riders. So uh, that's the approach for most riders uh, so far. Let's see as uh, Julian goes up here again. Not getting the wind either there. Going for a back rotation with a kite loop and a board of there. He'll get a score, I think, for that. It wasn't the yeah. cleanest landing, and he did stop a bit. But a bit of a bounce. He definitely has the um, ability to go super big off the single loops as well, Julian. But for him, I just hope he gets the score, the tricks he wants in here, because he has all the makings to put three big ones in. But as we've seen so often today, the landing's so difficult. The riders always seem so in control in the air. It's only the last quarter of the trick that they get undone so yeah, Max seems to connect a bit better with the wind then doobie loop and I think he wanted the doobie double mm -hmm. but uh, he just didn't quite feel it so Aaron Hadlow in control of this heat right now as a someone's going to break the door down and it's broken jeez okay that was a bad idea it's officially broken now oh dear so so it's finally happened. The door is broken now. So perhaps you can still hear me, but it's very much feels like I'm in a wind tunnel. Um, yeah. Keep it pushed or he'll go out with the door. Push it, push it, push it. it <laughs> we need to get someone in here to, to not only fix this, but to film it because such is the job on the door that anyone from the outside can bust it open, but then... Aaron Hadlow sending quite a big boogie contra to the right-hand side. What a landing from the five times world champion who's absolutely comfortable in these ridiculous conditions out there. Score 
after score for Aaron Hadlow. Lovely technique. Backwards on. Goes round. Super extension. What is that? That's like the splits there from Aaron. Forget about pointed feet. Super clean landing. The boss, or the goat, as they like to call him, has still got it. I feel ter helpless here. H how are you doing? Is it nearly bent back? As we see on your screens, Ruben Swart looked like he got out of sorts on that one. Marine, I, I can't do any more than on this WhatsApp group post pictures of the Boeing airplane with the door removed as, as to try and give an analogy of how bad our situation was. Is we keep going on about it today, but it is very much a feature of our our day. Why has no one fixed that yet? Someone's going to get injured. Yeah, this lock is probably made by Boeing. It's hanging on on the thread <laughs> right now. <laughs> Um, no, the door's still closed. It can't be made by Boeing. The hatch is, <laughs> <laughs> the hatch is made by Boeing. Coming <laughs> off uh, every every couple of minutes. Um, and the door slams open with the wind. So hopefully no one uh, gets injured today on this door. We should get the technician here as soon as possible. So not someone from Boeing, but... Uh, Two young females opened the door just yes. then. And they were very they were lucky not out. to get squished like a you know like a fly with a fly swap slap oh Massive there we go Julian, huge. look at that that kite just wow. climbs up to the top that slingshot going. He's can he do the hard work there. is he going to deal with it oh. oh unfortunately bombing out there i'd love to know so how far he, he traveled there marion but look at this kite it gives him a secondary lift so well he really does go back up again i mean this likely going to be quite zoomed oh dear Broken door. Need a Makita. Makita? We don't need a Makita. That will just make it worse. Let's get a Dewalt on that job. What's your favourite power tool brand? Are you a Bosch guy? Mm, Bosch. Yeah. It's just solid. German. Good batteries. It's German, right? Bosch, Bosch is German, GmbH, yeah. Yeah. German engineering. Do you know we tried to get a sponsorship with Bosch once? Mm. During the freestyle days where we were landing so hard. Bosch, every landing. Wow. They, they wrote back to us. S Loop Bordoff. S Loop Bordoff there from Max. Super landing it there. Wow. Impressive move from him, taking it to uh, to a nice level there with that Eslu Bordov. See a replay, he's just waiting there for, for his turn on the right tech there for that Eslu Bordov. That's just perfect commentary from you joining us today on the live stream. A door off, a <laughs> mega loop door off. <laughs> we had one of a few great. of those already. We do have to take uh, our hands off uh, to make a round of applause for Joshua Rothlesberger for the... Mega loop door off. It's all funny right now with this door, but once it goes, we're in trouble up here. This is Aaron Hadlow concentrating for a left foot forwards takeoff. He's connected. It's going to be a boogie board off. And it's a clean landing from Aaron Hadlow, landing another move. Seems like he uh, squeezed in an extra rotation there. First front roll there, and then here going for an extra rotation. He's so in touch with trick categories. If there's one person that understands the the format and the rules better than anyone, it's Aaron Hadlow. The way he's going through his scores here, he's slowly upgrading. It was such a nice... It's the perfect heat from him so far. But what can this man do about it? Ruben's fight with all that support from Australia, we can see on our live stream. You're a judge. Was that big enough to hit a zero on, or was it just an aerial transition? Mm, it could be just a transition for me. I'd like to give him another opportunity there. As he goes straight to the to the right, for me, then if you go straight after, um, it would still count for me. Just because the judges haven't quite made their mind up, get on with it, and then they might not have given you a exactly a crash. But what we're talking about here is that the riders don't get multiple chances to take off, and uh, that wasn't uh, the move that he would have liked. Ruben Swart, he's in trouble here. There's no way else to to what is it, to describe it to you in Australia. What even time is it over there? It uh, should be about 12.30 at night. On which side? Doesn't it change? Something ridiculous. I don't know Backwards. what's... Which way are they... Which coast are they on, though? East or west? Because that's a few hours different as well, at it's least. True. As Julian Hoon is now playing into the hands of the Brits here. Mm. As uh, it's, it's Max and Aaron Hadlow, the UK folk at home and here in this live stream booth will be very happy about the way this is going right now. 
And what a moment in history this will be for these two riders. Arguably the biggest, maybe the biggest age gap between two riders. Certainly from the UK, it's been in a heat. 21 years in difference between Aaron Hadlow and Max Tullett. I believe. Oh, maybe not as much as that. I don't think Aaron, I think he's about three years younger than me, Aaron. But then it's my birthday soon. And it gets confusing <laughs> anyway, but I know it's at least 20. That's for sure. Oh, no, I do know he's 36 because that's what I had written down in front of me with my stats given to me by the person that worked out all their ages. That's a job. Conveniently, we had their email addresses and phone numbers on their <laughs> sheet. Very useful for live, live stream <laughs> commentating and favourite colour. <laughs> but here we are, Aaron Hadlow, his left foot forwards here, next to Trick, in control of this round number two. And it's a back roll, board off, double back roll, I think, mm -hmm. here. Look at the control Aaron Hadlow Calculated is demonstrating. There. He's definitely going to land that. Aaron is in control here, Ryan. He'll be making the cut here, getting into the... The quarterfinal is almost definitely now. Here's the replay. Moran, talk me through this move. Yeah, very controlled there. Uh, he he was in control of every rotation. Uh, the kite was uh, in his control as well. Here he goes into the second rotation there. Putting the board on, keeping the kite under control. He's down looping. Two down loops actually to, to have a nice clean soft landing. Uh, and that goes to show that uh, he's very experienced, knows exactly what to do as well on the water, knows what the judges want to see in variety-wise, and uh, it's just uh, taking this heat trick by trick. So we uh, see uh, Australian Ruben Swart now approaching. Can he get, get a good gust here to go up? S-loop there, not connecting with the wind as well. It's not bad, though. He's got something on the board there, which is what he needed for that trick attempt so he'll be pretty happy who said milwaukee on here mil rocky navi milwaukee Makita, okay but milwaukee isn't that and they sell that in poundland and that's not it's a bit harsh that do you have poundland in well, i guess you don't <laughs> you don't know what it's like to have your own currency do you have euro land we have euro you land. do have euro land you oh, know we had, the, we, <laughs> no had, we had the gilder but it was uh, a gilder land so gilder land became uh, sorry euro, euro land okay yeah. Wow, and you can go to any Euroland in Europe. I'm opening I guess. the door quickly. Yeah. Here's Julian Hoon. He's unhooked. It's ridiculous. He's on a mega loop, unhooked in the air. Oh, he just can't take it. Is it over? The door is broken. The door is officially broken. Just at that point where Julian Hoon's heart and all French people, people's heart must have broken. <laughs> Look at this. Unhooks the top of his jump. Massive unhooked mega loop and nearly takes it. And we're now referring to jamming something. Does it even fit? It's a, it's a mayday. I, I can't. Mayday, mayday. Broken door in the live stream booth. Urgent assistance required. Double loop. Crash from Max. What do we do now? We're going to have to go on a temporary break. One moment. There we go, I just managed to uh, squeeze the pin back in, but it's hanging on for its dear life. Um, it's not that bad that the door can open, it's just very bad that if someone opens the door and uh, a big gust of Tramontana wind comes through, they might actually be squashed like a bug. Just two French ladies bringing me my, my lunch, which is very nice of them, but uh, luckily they didn't get, an, didn't get a container to the face. 
So we see the red flag up, indicating that Aaron's turn is up. Opting to go to the right here then, looks like it. If I wasn't 100% confident that Aaron was going to get through this heat, I would not have taken the time to upload that video because we have been banging on about it. And you've done a great job at bending. Did it snap then? Yeah, really? so it there we've, we've lost all the way. And I tried to oh, this is big. Look at Aaron Hadlow, meanwhile, going massive. Oh, what a landing as well. I think it might have been a board spin Ooh, yeah, front roll go. contra loop. Let's get our heads totally back in this because Aaron is displaying riding here, which would see him do well. It's a board spin. Contra loop, I believe, from Aaron. Front roll, which he's, he's warming up for the next heats here. What a heat. He's landing. I think he's one of the only riders to land every single trick Wonderful in this from heat. Him, so his totals aren't reflecting properly to me here. Oh, although the machine is just doing the calculations. So, yeah, so this very, is very good riding from Aaron then. Uh, managing to land every trick. It's. It's it's this hasn't been be done. Another not NBD in this competition so far. Just needing to get through in first or second. Currently occupying those spots are the British riders. That's right, the two English riders. Aaron's heart rate, 63 beats per minute. Someone joking on there. He looks pretty calm, but looks I can tell calm. you, he has been training so hard for this in every condition, every kite line size. He wanted to be out there on 15s today, as we saw, but they weren't working. But here goes Ruben Swart. He has got two tricks left there we go. to do something. It's, it's a massive wow. double. This is a big Marine. Wow. Finally connecting He's there then, with it. the gust. Very happy about that as well. Cheering with both hands in the air. He needed that. That's going to really be. That. This is going to be over sevens for me and above. And I can hear the the celebrations going off in Australia here for this move because this was massive. Marine, you know how this feels, and you've done kite loops like this where the second loop really there wasn't much tension in that one, but yeah. he, he was high enough. It's pure commitment, and then it comes down to being high enough. Uh, you need definitely as much wind as possible. The higher you go, the safer these tricks are. But also, uh, the more commitment you need, because the, the harder the winds are, the, the stronger the winds are, the harder it gets to commit to this. <coughs> someone just oh pulled out the door. Uh, we need someone to fix that door, like, bad. I'm sorry, I'm, we're getting boring here talking about this. But what happens is people try to get in. Maybe, maybe perhaps you could give an indication to me how... I should be writing this on the WhatsApp group. But the, the Boeing reference to the door blowout, obviously not um, a clear, uh, inst clear enough instruction to anybody to help us here. We have seen a man with a drill go around, SDS drill fixing stuff. Where is he when we need him? But right now, we are at a crucial stage of this heat right now. Only a 6.55 for yeah. that huge double. I thought it would be more than that, but it's enough to cause problems for Max Tullett, who finds himself down in third place here with one move left. Julian Hoon's out of this thing. He's already got out. It's a back roll mega loop Ooh. from Max Tullett, and I think he can't believe it. He punches down, and he's just been ousted into third place by Ruben Swart, and that very well is the end of the road for Max Tullett with uh, Aaron and Ruben left. Those two are going through devastating for young Max Tullett. Who Unfortunate the there for, for Max and uh, success for Ruben there on this last uh, on this last double. It might be only a 6.55 uh, since he is riding a very small kite. He's a lighter weight rider. He's a young uh, young kid from Australia, so he can't hold on to the, the biggest size. Uh, but he's on the five meter and the, the doubles on the five are a bit more easy than on the six or the seven as we see Aaron go up here. In control of this trick as well. Warming up a double, perhaps. I wonder, was he on a seven there? I think he knows that he doesn't need to do anything crazy. He's in uh, he's in, he's in, uh, first position of this heat, and uh, he can see that on his watch. Uh, and on the last trick, uh, Ruben has one trick left as well. He knows that he doesn't need anything crazy to progress to this heat, as we see him now looking at his watch, actually. What does he need to get into first, though, perhaps, Ruben? Um, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, it's going to be no, quite he tricky need, for him. He needs, he needs over something about, about eight, an 8.5. 5. 8.15, I believe. But he's warming up now, as uh, some of the fans have been saying on the live stream. He likes to get warmed up. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't need to do anything crazy. He's uh, he's progressed now through the next round, so hopefully he doesn't try anything that uh, could injure him. Um, but uh, he's he's up for his turn. The, the yellow flag is up. Last trick attempt uh, from Ruben and last trick of this heat as well.
There we go, going up. Front roll with the Kai loop there. And an extra front roll. Probably knowing that he's in a safe position there, not needing to do anything crazy. Landing that still, cheering, hands up in the air. And he must be happy with his performance there. Uh, had, had an unfortunate start with the two first tricks crashing them and the second trick not connecting there with a the front roll. But then managing to uh, to actually take it to max and uh, put, it, put a really good performance down here actually. Super impressed by Ruben's control. You can lose faith a bit if, you, if your first three tricks are not going well and you only have four tricks left to, to get three high scores. It can be very nerve wracking, but uh, showing that he's in control there. Um, and uh, in second place then, Ruben Straff from Australia, managing to go through to the next heat. And unfortunately, uh, young Max Tullet from the UK and uh, local Julian Yoon wildcard, Julian Yoon from France, uh, on out of this competition, unfortunately. As I just saw Gil with a gigantic late back roll, just warming up there on the right. Um, that's indicating that we have a big kite on the water, it seems like. For this next heat, I'm um, going to check the, the ladder now, but it looks like I see Giel on the water. Um, I see an Elevate kite, which must belong to Arthur Gilbert. I see also a Harlem kite, which could belong to several different riders. And I see a F1, which can only belong to Josh Gillett. As we progress then now into uh, round number three and heat number one. We got a replay here from the previous heat. Aaron's beautiful moves there with the uh, stretch legs. Good landing there. Here we see uh, a replay from Ruben's attempt here. He really got himself back into the mix. It was the big double, I think, for me. That Was this the one? Was that the big double, perhaps? Yeah. Where that, that was the moment where he really woke up and realized he was going out here. Both hands in the air there, celebrating. I mean, his start wasn't very good at all. He was really fighting to the end. And unfortunately for Max Tyler, he just done him on the line to go through in second place. Behind the go, Aaron Hadlow. Um, so Julian Hoon out, unfortunately, and Max Tullet from the UK. And we're not even halfway in the day, or are we nearly halfway? Have we done seven hours yet? No, we've only just come up five. Next heat then, round three. We see here an assortment of different countries. We see Gier from the Netherlands, uh, Leonardo Cassati, the, the brother of Lorenzo Cassati from Italy, Arthur Guilbert from France, and Josh Gillett from uh, South Africa. Josh having a very good performance in his previous heat with uh, some of the most extreme angles uh, we've seen on the double loop so far. Um, and I'm curious to see uh, the difference between his performance now and Gilles, since they are closely in style. Uh, they're probably going to be the more powered and extreme riders in this heat. And then Arthur and Leonardo are very technical riders, with Arthur being the, uh, the local experienced rider and uh, Leonardo being the young, relatively uh, competition-wise unexperienced, but definitely uh, very calculated rider with his dad supporting him, who is a um, caddy for Lorenzo and Leonardo. And he was very aware of what tricks they need to do, uh, what tricks they're always training together. And uh, it's an exciting heat. Let's see how it's going to unfold. As the buzzer goes and the blue flag goes up, it's uh, the first turn for Josh Gillett there. He looks to be on the, the same kite as the previous heat, the 7 meter F1. Not taking off there on the left then, but going going for a trick on the right. As I, as I do feel and hear a gust coming in here. Nothing on the right there as well. Turning back around, hoping to find that win then. So for a place in the semi-finals, top two here will go through. We start to get to crunch time. We've actually run over half of the heats. We've got seven heats left, four quarterfinals, two semi-finals and a final. Doobie double there then from Josh. He was waiting a bit, riding up and down, waiting for that wind. He's probably stoked that he waited that long and um, actually got the gust here. As so we're going to see the replay right now, taking off on the right, Front roll there, two loops, not the height and not the extremity that uh, we like to see from the big moves, but uh, technical wise, it's a very impressive trick. As uh, so he's probably going to get a good score for that. Uh, and to start with that trick in your heat is uh, you need some commitment to go for that. Uh, and impressive then from uh, Josh that he's, he's he's done that and landed that. And um, up next is the, the white flag is being raised for, for Arthur Gilbert, who's riding on the left there. Good speed into this. 
Cool, it looked like a bit of a rewind <laughs> there. How quickly could you drop out the sky when you look like you've got to move, but it looks like a move's in control? It, it looked to me as if he then rotated the opposite way. I do like to say rewind a bit prematurely, yeah. but uh, it did look like that had happened. Yeah, the kite had dropped him a bit after that... Uh after that loop, so it's hard for them, uh, for them, uh, for the riders then to keep in control of their body and keep in control of the kite. Uh, it looks like he's jumping as, as well a lot to the left. Uh, and in my experience riding at the last week, if you're very close to the bushes and to the to the crowd, basically, you're somewhat jumping over the rocks, which can put some holes in the wind there as the wind is curving around the small stature that's uh, built right on the right of us. Uh, so that might have a uh, affection on on the kite then, uh, but Arthur is a is a local here and should should be very much aware of the of the wind. As we see Leonardo going into his trick here, opening up with a double loop with a late back roll. Oh, not having the height and the kite stalling there on the second loop. Very lucky that he was able to kick off his board. Would have been a pretty painful crash to land to crash that one on the board actually. It's such small margins as well. You're talking like half a foot there. Sorry if that's a strange measurement. You know, maybe 30 centimeters of difference. That even he, so he did get caught from the kite eventually there, but he wasn't 100 percent that that was going to happen. But that's how on the limit these riders are to make that decision to do that second loop. The riders are having to do. Such a quick calculation. How is this uplift felt? Have I got tension? Yes or no? The riders do not premeditate doing doubles until they make that decision up there. I, I can only guess, but with most big air moves, you are not going for it. Well, actually, the first time you learn your mega loops, you send it before you go off, and that's yep. why you often get hurt. You're so excited. Yeah. You, you pull the bar no matter what, but the longer you're performing any sort of move, the more time you're going to have. Here we go. Left foot forward. Hill Vlugd. Double G. Aborting that tech there. Yeah, it's, it's especially when you're going for a rotation in, in a double loop. It's, uh, it's split-second decisions. Feeling, actually, 100% feeling if you, if you have the kite there. And uh, it can be very, very hard for these riders to decide to go for that. Um, Gil going back around here. Wanting to go to the left, I presume. I think he wants to do the same as Leonardo, which is a double loop with a late back row in there. It's usually one of his opening moves. Let's see if he's gonna go here on on actually the the statistics on fancykite.com. Gil is one of the most double looping riders there, as we see that double loop laid back as I as I as I thought already. Singing it though, compared to Leonardo, he's landed that trick. Not the most height uh, and the most extremity that we're used to from Gil, but definitely a good score to open up the open up his heat. Yeah, he will be really looking to push through here. He's used to get into semi-finals and um, perhaps hasn't had his moment for a while of winning one of these events, but he's definitely got what it takes. But it looks to me like he's on a slightly bigger kite than the, than the six is. Yeah, he's on seven, same as Josh here, who's going for a, board of, for a double loop with a late back row as well. So those riders both on sevens and then Arthur and uh, Leonardo looking to be on six. You need to have a kite though that's uh, capable of doing these tricks and not every seven meter or every eight meter is actually capable of doing these double loops. Shape comes into it so much, doesn't it, Moran? We're talking about shape and construction, line length also a big part, but just looking out at those conditions right now, it's certainly, as far as we'd like to call it here in Baccarés, on the lower side mm -hmm. of the stronger wind. Seven, a nice choice to split the difference right now, but you could easily be on an eight. However, some riders are on a six, and we can see they're not going as high with a boogie board off here from Arthur, Arthur Guild Bear. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky choice then again for the riders to pick the right size. Uh, if we uh, were to rewind uh, five, six years ago, I think a lot of the bigger professional riders would be here on the nine meter, uh, going as, uh, as big as possible uh, and going for single rotations or a board off. Not doing the highest technicality, but definitely having uh, the most power, the, the biggest kite they can basically hold in the wind. Um, but now these riders are going for more technical tricks and they're choosing to ride with a bit of a smaller kite then um, to perform those. I remember, Lewis, you would always be on the nine, on the nine meter sea kite, and no matter the wind, basically, the stronger it got, the, the more fun it got. There's something about the nines back then that they just could take it. They just seemed to be, they'd got that nice low loop, but then the... Sport changed, things change, you know, and actually it was the complete opposite of what I think we were all expecting was to start taking the smallest kite, you know, who saw that 
coming, but that is where the sport has gone. But I tell you what, looking out there right now, I think my old 9C kite would be going right now. That said, give it 30 seconds and the wind would blow me off the water because we're in a lull situation here. Mm -hmm. It's almost calm in the live stream booth because we saw that replay of a manoeuvre there no higher than 10 metres from... Leonardo Casati. So that's a moment where you might argue, well, that was a bit unlucky that it was your turn. You'd be buying as much time as possible here if he was on a six-meter kite. But here comes Kielflud working that kite up and down. Let you can see he is not very powered. And I don't think we're going to see a trick from him right foot forwards either. I think he may well take his time here. Turning back round. Yeah, and we haven't really seen this. Obviously, yesterday during the devastating opening of the competition where the ladies were forced to give up after one trick each from Jasmine and uh, I think it was uh, the call Zara. right Zara that's right so Hill doesn't it's in Hill's hands here what he does he's working the kite up and down he's not I don't think he's going to trick here it's, he has now got to send a message this is where the real gamesmanship starts of being a competitive rider he can signal to race director Cedric look I don't think there's enough power you're going to let me go downwind and change my kite um, if he tricks now he sets the standard for the other riders maybe having to trick. However, this this is the wonderful grey areas of our sport. But although he's looks like he's Connecting going for it here there. now. Whoa. Oh, oh, he oh, sends a double sure. loop. And he gets away with it, Hill. But by all means, that wasn't the biggest. But no. part of the thinking behind this for Hill is that if he is on a seven-metre kite and there's two on a, seven, on a six here... This is not, not the biggest move you've ever seen from Hill. It's going to score okay. If the other two are on a six, he performs his move on a seven there. He'll now be putting pressure on race directors to keep this running. Look at this six-meter kite wow. going up and down here now. Clearly under power, but Hill will be saying, well, I've just performed my move. Get on with it. Yeah. So, yeah, Gilles, smart riding there from him. Managing to stick that uh, only a nine-meter high uh, double loop, which is pr quite incredible that the kite was uh, uh, not dropping him completely there. Uh, and Josh now having to work that kite to get some power in there. Arta coming in, sorry to interrupt you, um, Marion, because Arta Gilbert is changing kite in front of us here, and he will be after Josh Gillett. So if I was J Josh, could you, could, well, could you change a kite, though, if you were Josh? Oh, wait, go for a trick now to, <laughs> to like, where's the next guy? But, yeah, Josh has now wasted a trick attempt here. Double in bedroom. some ways, this has very been influenced by that trick from Kiel. Yeah. Hill was the man that could have blocked things up and said, look, have we got time to change? But could have actually gone and spoke directly to the race director, who is positioned upwind by those flags, I believe. So Hill has pushed this through. It's still on the flag colour of Josh. However, Arta is at least three minutes away from getting back out there. How quick has he made this pit stop? I don't see a kite yet in the sky there. So I'm going to move around a bit to see if I can catch him. What size is going to be launching? I see him there on the beach now, checking his bar. He's, he's fixing his lines, actually. He needs to be quite quick, he's though. Gonna be, he's he's going to be timed out, I think, here. This is just too long. Unless the wind stays very light. But no, he was straight up to the flags there, saying, what's going on? You know, he was... Got a point here. Has Hill rigged for this situation? I did. Did someone just get launched there? Yeah, and Archer just launched his kite. Then took, uh, I think, too long. Maybe Hill could even do a trick to show to the judges. Though Arter, it seems, is going to be given enough time. But this is the first real bit of drama with the Tramontan wind. As perhaps the sun coming out has caused this. As the white flag is just being raised now. Yeah, they're raising the flag for Arta, who's going to appear to your left-hand side, not in the middle there. That's the Harlem kite of Leonardo. So even now, if he hasn't taken an eight or more, he's going to be a little bit underpowered. Now making the correct decision to change is Josh Gillett speeding in in front of us for his pit stop. Could have come in a bit earlier, I think, there, but perhaps he was gambling on the wind picking up. He's going as well to his caddy to check should I change. And looks like he's going to drop his kite then. Slow Go pit for stop this he's though. Going for a bigger size. He does have some time. Yeah, he would have seen that. He would have seen that with Arthur. But, it, you know, it takes a bit of energy to get in and change quickly here. Especially if the wind is a bit more from the northwest. A bit easier when it's a bit more northerly to cut up right foot forwards into these riders. But a bit of drama here in the first heat of round three 
let's see if Archer has uh, made the right choice then uh, to switch to that kite then. Um, riding up and down, I, I wouldn't give him too much uh, time now. He's been changing kites, he needs to go for a trick as soon as he can. Uh, he changed to an 8 meter, I believe, uh, which will probably give him a little bit more power than, than the, uh, the kite he was uh, riding before. And it looks like this kite is uh, equipped with Alula material, which makes it even lighter. Uh, which hopefully gives him enough power then to perform a trick on the right here, because he really needs He's to go to for go, it now. Yeah, right, this has got to be, for me, his last turn. Oh. Now, Heel now, I'm watching Heel's body language just behind, and he will be... I would say his turn is over now. He, he will either be understanding this situation... And there we go with the white situation. flag. He will be understanding this situation if the wind is, is gone, but he's positioned himself on your screens there. Can you see Hill To the right-hand side, there he was, the black core. I can only imagine Hill's thinking, well, I've just done a trick in this same wind, or has it dropped sufficiently that they're putting it on pause? In which case, Hill may have felt he could have done the same, and more importantly, the rider before him, Josh Gillett, will be wishing maybe he was the one to stop the sequence. But these are the... For me, some of the most exciting moments of these competitions, Marine, where we see the unknown factor here. So, who is this? Arta Still, uh, his flag is raised now. Interesting to see. Uh, they have they have a minute, which 60 seconds is quite a long time, but I'm sure it's over by now. So, maybe the race director is deciding uh, whether to continue now or whether to, to pause this heat, because the wind definitely has decreased uh, by about 15 knots, I would say, compared to the previous heat. Um, Gil being able to actually work with it, uh, being one of the more heavy riders, is uh, impressive for him that he, he can deal with that wind. Um, but yeah, definitely a big change in the wind currently. So here's we can see him on your screens. That is Arthur Gilbert, the former world champion of freestyle. Actually, that year did combine big air and freestyle, it has to be said. Um, but he's a very, very all-round rider and showing just how good he is here, as um, we just see out the corner of my eye. Another rider just going out, ready for his heat. Wind looks like it's coming back in now. And you can see the spray picking up from Arthur, who will now get on with his trick. So it looks like they've worked through through that. It's only a contra loop. Not Ooh, high enough yeah, as well, then. Contra loop, board spin. I, th I think it's a board spin or a tic-tac. Yeah, I tried to go for a tic-tac there. Yeah. But definitely not the wind. Uh, the wind he needs to go big. It's uh, Arthur and Gil who are uh, the heavier riders in this uh, in this heat as well, having to challenge uh, the heavier you are, the bigger a kite you need to get to get as high as the the, the more lightweight riders like Leonardo, for example. We see eight meters there uh, for for Arthur. Definitely not high enough to perform a technical trick like that. He wanted to go for a front roll with a with a contra and a tic tac, which is a uh, you need quite some height for that trick to have time to put the board back on. And uh, unfortunately for Arthur, then. Missing out on that, but he was gen generously giving uh, given a lot of time to to catch hopefully the wind, as we see uh, Leonardo now up for his turn and uh, riding back and forth as well. So just in from our tour manager here, actually Liam Dredge, just sending me a quick message, just saying the drop of wind has meant the judges are being a bit more flexible with time, and that was what was described to the riders, and that's why we don't have big timers here. We have seen that in the sport of kite surfing with riders being timed out, and it can still happen. In this situation, but good to see that they just got through that. But it still looks a bit marginal. This is a situation you don't want to find yourself in unless it's the last trick of the heat and you've already landed a few more, three biggies and you're going through. You wouldn't mind at all then, would you? No. And then it would be if if you then would have a heat postponement, it would come to a discussion if you were to continue this heat or reset the heat when the wind comes back. Or even whether you would continue this round of tricks for the riders. That's always an interesting point where you'd say, right, you've all had three trick attempts. Even though two of you have had four trick attempts, perhaps scoring amazing scores, we're wiping those two mm -hmm. trick attempts. That is always something that was very um, difficult to explain to the viewers and to the judges. And that would be so annoying when you, you know, that's almost like, to think of the comparison of that where something is taken away from you in another sport it can have maybe you've got the fastest lap but you you know you went over the white the line limit. too far and maybe that's not the perfect description what can you come up with marine it's a <laughs> it's a hard comparison <laughs> with this wind there's not a lot of wind sports that uh, that um that we can reference to as we see uh, actually avon here riding back riding a foil kite for the past few uh few minutes there training out the back um he'd probably want it to run now wouldn't he with that 
he's got plenty of power in that kite, as we see here. Leonardo is still on a six. I do. I would say, as a judge, that if you're a rider who switches to the biggest size, you can hold at the moment. Whether it's a ten, if you can perform tricks on a ten now, you could still uh, bring it to the other riders to say, "Hey, you're on a smaller kite. You could be on a bigger kite and uh, choose to just go for the big single loops that uh, that are very beautiful as well to watch." I know Giel, for example, has um, is still on the seven, but has the capability to go on a, on a ten meter now and uh, switch that. We do see, I think, the the orange kite from Josh is a 9, so he should be the most powered rider in this heat at the moment. Curious to see if uh, how long how long Leonardo gets this attempt, or just they're just waiting for the wind at the moment, I think. Maybe the Tramontan is just is giving us a sign that this is the right time for lunchtime. A big welcome and hello to all of you that are tuned in on our live stream on the YouTube right now. Lots of German speaking going on at the moment. That is verboten. I'm joking with you. Every language welcome on our live stream comments we can see you there from wherever you are why don't you let us know in the comments where you are tuning in from around the world i'm lewis crathen and sitting next to me is marine prug who is the spacex co uh ceo i guess and very involved with surfer pro rider and a uh, very experienced judge which i'm loving his insight as to being a judge he's sat in every judging booth in the world from king of the air to cold hawaii to mega loop and and having that in it because i haven't I mean, I kind of only ended up in the live stream booth because I thought I can't be a judge because I'm too biased on what I like myself. And I think that must be a very difficult role to do because you must have your favorite moves and favorite styles. So how do you separate that from your judging mindset, which has to be neutral, Marine? Well, you always reference back to the, to the criteria. So you look at the criteria and that's always your base. And then you compare that uh the tricks you see to the criteria that are set for the competition uh, and that's where you base your your scores from and then uh, as a judge i'm i'm riding as well a lot with all of these riders and i'm good friends with most of them if not all of them uh, and that makes it as well sometimes hard to uh, to judge them but uh, i see it as a more objective approach there as we see a double loop again seems like the wind has come back then for leonardo for a, with yeah, a double back loop roll. back roll there yeah Squeeze so he's, in. he's just indicated to the riders this thing should be going on now on his six meter but well we're well within the interest of riders to be your friend i'd say marine <laughs> right, maybe, maybe that's the reason they <laughs> want to be friends i don't want to break it to you but they're just being your friend because you're because you're a judge but going back to how you're describing how well you have to remain neutral i still feel that i've you know i might be pretty good and be like oh, 6.0 should be for both of those riders but the english guy will give him 6.1 <laughs> you know like that's that's tough i think to deal with that here's kill Klug then double g riding in left foot forwards loads of power in his kite now we think he's on a seven or eight meter kite now mm -hmm. looks like he's on the seven i believe it's uh it's the black kite but it has uh his branding uh, from capital com is sponsor on the sides I know that uh, only a 7 is currently is branded. He's probably going to get the other kites branded as well. But that's how I can tell that it's a 7 since there's no number on the kite at the moment. Uh, but he's riding to the left and it seems like definitely the wind has come back. I see more and more wildcaps building on the water there then. As we see Giel powering here to the left. Going for a trick then. Oh! 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 It's the big S loop that wow! we know that. Hill is so famously got. There's a moment in that trick where wow. it looks like he's been sent into a front flip Incredible. onto his head, you know, but he manages to bide out, uh, ride out the time. Just look at this moment here where he loops it so early. He's almost oh! going forward. I would have definitely kicked off my board there. Yeah, but he, he, he has to go forward because he has to sheet out to bring that kite to climb back up. It's so nice to see that move. And what a time to do it when wow. the wind's maybe not quite set wow that was a you need 100 percent commitment to that because you don't know if you're if you're gonna make it and to keep the board on to to have faith in your kite and to have faith in your height that you're gonna make it is uh you need a lot of commitment for that as we see josh here uh riding as well not Didn't managing to the get gas. the gust there good narbund uh yusuf the wave or chris from keel talking to us on there you're all enjoying the action here and we are too very special moment to be up here at the 2024 Lords of Tram here at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour, round one of the Big Air in France. It really has become one of the established events on the tour now, starting things off just as spring moves into summer sometimes here. It goes from freezing to warm. You don't know what to pack when you come out here, but for sure you pack it all every time. And actually we're in just a jeans and a jumper at the moment. We do have uh, a door currently is still closed but some years we've had no doors and we've been in double pants 
double trousers, double socks, everything you can get hold of. Zero degrees we've even had here. Because it's a cold wind, this, the Tramontana wind, which is coming in, created by the difference in pressure from the above the Atlantic and Mediterranean, rushing in from the northwest direction. This catabatic cold wind from the mountains behind as we see a again contralute board off and a big tomahawk down there. Oof, must have been a couple of meters under the water there. Uh, going like a pencil into the water and um, yeah, trying repeating that trick that he tried before, which is a front roll with a tech tech and a contra loop. Unfortunately, again not having the height there to to land that trick uh, for for Arthur then, uh, who's only got one score on the board, a 4.8. So really needs to to bring something to the table here, which is very hard as a rider because the wind is very up and down this heat. He'll managing to to actually uh, ride perfectly so far with three. Three pretty good scoring tricks in his last uh, S-loop being a 7.77. Quite a high score there. Yeah, and I think lots of riders are going to see that. The real experienced ones are who are watching every number here, they're, they're not just great riders, but they're very good at maths, naturally, and very good at calculations quickly to work out what's going on, especially the riders who are now not in this heat will see, wow, a real low committed S-loop is going to get me a 7.77. I don't have to take the board off. I don't have to do loads of rotations. That will be on their minds. I think we may see more of them. But meanwhile, left foot forwards is Leonardo Casati, brother of Lorenzo, now trying to make a name for himself at these competitions. It's his debut event. He's already made the cut and got through to the quarterfinals here in Bacares. A difficult heat, this one. It's the longest heat so far, what with all the delays. It's the first heat of round three. A South African, a Frenchman, an Italian and a Dutch rider. Can you believe a Dutch rider? in this heat there's so many of them <laughs> these days but here we go then leonardo just searching and now with him on that six he'll be making sure he doesn't pick a, a low low gust to perform a double that's for sure good confidence from gil then uh, sticking to that seven being um, probably one of the heaviest riders of this competition he might uh, benefit from switching down, but he also might benefit from staying on the seven and waiting for that gust to come through as it did on the S-loop before. We see now that uh, Leonardo has uh, attempted a jump here. Going for an S-loop as well. Definitely not having enough wind there, but sticking it though. Totally different style though, it has to be said. It's a different style. Maybe the lines could potentially be a little bit longer, but it's, fu it's fully completing a 360, then bringing it back round. And this is why it's, I don't believe, going to score within two points of heels being done at such a critical stage. We were talking about it off air. I think it was me and Koan just saying that the heel doesn't bring it round more than 270 degrees. You know, it's facing out the side, then it's coming back down all in one movement. There's no halfway feeling of lift again and it going back up to 12. It's yeah. all one movement with heel. He looks to me... Like he's going to be coming back left foot forwards. Let's take a look at his scores so far. You can do the same at the GKA Kite World Tour dot com forward slash slash forward slash live. And Keel is currently well in the lead at the moment. He'll be looking to replace a 4.57 with a kite loop front roll. So he's got options available to him. Hasn't really got hasn't got a double in here yet. But and we're going to see one. There it is. The Beautiful Boogie double then. with a late Ooh. 180. Where, this, where was the wind there? He's just desperate for any sort of tension to pull him around. And he got into the last 180. He'll be furious that yeah. he hasn't stuck that. Yeah, perfect execution there. But unfortunately, yeah, the wind just dipping on him on that down loop, giving him definitely not enough speed to put the kite round and to ride out there. Um, but for him, he's a, he has a very solid performance so far in this wind, in this heat. Um, Josh Gillett coming up then here. Also turning back around. But yeah, unfortunate there then for Giel, almost uh, riding a perfect hit so far. Um, bombing out that uh, that boogie with an extra rotation. It's hard to come, if you're coming down and you don't exactly know where the kite is and you're going to downloop it and you actually don't put enough power in the kite to ride out. Um, but it's hard to for them to tell uh, while, while they're falling down uh, what they exactly need to do if they don't feel the wind in the kite. And Josh also just taking... Check, checking left and right to, to see if uh, there's any gust that he can, can grab. It is uh, coming up to afternoon. It's uh, quarter past one at the moment. It's a bit more uh, warm then in the middle of the day, which can affect the wind as well. So we do see the wind shifting and turning a little bit, dipping a little bit, but I'm sure that as soon as the temperatures will 
um, will change, then we, uh, yeah, then we'll uh, we'll hopefully get some Tramontana wind back again. Yeah, the sun I think has caused this at the moment. Like it's really difficult the way the sun affects things with a bit of cloud as well. We still see snow on the mountains in the background. It's wonderful. The earlier we get here in April, sometimes there's still a lot of snow on the mountains. It's such a cool place to kite. It's on the list of places you have to kite. And I'm not going to tell you you're going to have a lovely, pleasant 20 knots of warm sunshine. You're going to be in for an experience here, but it's definitely an experience you have to tick off because you just, no matter what the wind's doing here as a kiteboarder or anybody in a wind sport, you just can't help but have these moments of maybe I'll just keep riding this tack and go 20 minutes in one direction and I'll be over that side of the water or that side. And even here I can see kites five or ten k's away just riding around exploring it's a place for exploration as i was explaining yesterday on the live stream a wonderful place to discover in your motorhome you'll be very welcome here from around the world the people are lovely the town's really cool this baccarat place has got everything probably some of the best water slides i've ever seen outside there's one where you go down a water slide almost into a vert vertical drop but then it comes back up the other side flings you out i'd love to see all the athletes down there they'd be triple flipping quadruple flipping <laughs> there's go-karts there's absolutely everything it feels like to me the whole of france definitely come down to this region certainly the kids at school get a lot out of this and spend a few weeks here they, they really do embrace active outdoor people and i think maybe even come to, i just met a guy down there who flew in to watch it a guy called elliot i know from uh I think it's Stuttgart. I hope I haven't got him in trouble now if he's supposed to be working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's down on the beach, flew in this morning, flying out, tomo- flying out tomorrow morning back home. Drove up from Barcelona and he's just walked in about a couple of hours ago. Um, and I recommend you do the same. You, very hard to find a better place to watch a spectacle inland because we have to remind you we're inland. We're not on the open ocean. You know, the the scenes that we see are the king of the air and certainly the mega loop and cold Hawaii's open ocean riding with big waves, totally different. But this is equally impressive and showcases what riders are able to do on flat water, which is a totally different, it requires a totally different skill set. Marine, tell me, whilst these riders are riding around underpowered, what is different about, let's start with taking off flat water to start with. Why is it different than being out on the open water? So riding in flat water, it uh, gives you the ability to choose when you're going to take off. If you're riding towards a wave, you have to take off when you hit that wave. So you have to time your jump more perfectly. If you're riding towards a wave, you have to make sure your kite's in the right position. And uh, if you're taking off on the flat, you have a bit more time to calculate when you're going to take off. So we also see riders that are training on flat water for technical tricks. They can uh, easier, more easily put their kite in the same position always um, for every attempt. Then rather go for a wave. Every wave is different. Every takeoff can be different from a wave. So to train technical tricks in waves is harder than in uh, than doing that in in flat water. So we see a lot of riders train those tricks in flat and then try to to mimic them and to to reproduce them in waves. As we see, for example, Josh Gillett is a very experienced wave uh, wave rider, and I would say it's easier uh, for a wave rider to come to the flat than for a flat water rider to come to the waves. Waves require uh, an insight into when the swell is coming through, when the when the kickers are there, uh, what kicker you can take, what kicker you should avoid taking. And by kicker, I mean uh, a kicker we refer to as a wave where you take off from. Uh, the perfect moment to take off from a wave is actually when the wave is curving around and just about to roll. As we see, I see a kite change for Giel now, switching to a 10 meter. Blimey, a 10. That's interesting. He Holding wants this thing to continue. There. He wants this thing to run, and he'll now be pushing again. Here we go again. We've had a bit of a break of the action here whilst you're explaining about flat water and waves. Nicely, Marine, but he's going to take. That was a 10. It looked like, like a 10 to a me. 10. That's a bit. Maybe I don't know. I didn't see a number, but you know these kites better than I do, Marine certainly this brand and he will be doing so trying to get the judges to run this and saying look this is 10 meter weather i can deal with it yeah and now he's going to give us an example right on your screens here it's not even his go um hopefully they can pick that up on the camera they're onto the wide here. is he going to perform a move just to show the judges look this is the kite we need and the others should be changing because he can perform his moves on bigger kites some riders don't want to be out there on the biggies 
what I was perhaps pers uh, expecting from Archer that uh, he would go for an unhooked trick there. Uh, he's up now for his attempt, but uh, he can do very nice unhooked maneuvers, and he would really take uh, we be able to take it to the other riders if he manages to do a high uh, kung fu pass, for example. But he's uh, still waiting for the wind to change. Uh, it's very, it's very, uh, very light at the moment, yes. Uh, but it's it's still possible to perform some some big tricks if you just grab a big kite that can loop in these conditions. So I'm curious to see uh, the approach of the judges, the approach of the race director here, as we are just waiting for the wind to fill back in. Yeah, Archer here on the right, just not not finding any wind. As the two riders behind him are uh, are looking like they want to go out for a trick, kind of putting the pressure on Archer then. Archer now riding to the right. Bit of a spray coming off his board then now, yeah, as he is going for a trick there. Double back roll, Kailu Bordov, but definitely not the height he needs to to uh, to land that trick, unfortunately. And now uh, we do see uh, a decision coming up for the for the race track and the judges uh, to do something. I, I think they would want to see Josh and Gil perform a trick now as well, just to see how they will do with this wind. But it, it's a tricky situation for uh, both the judges and the race director to to make a call then w with the current wind speeds we have. Riders just comfortably sitting there upwind, as you can see on the left. Sitting on the clay and the grass there, just waiting for the wind to fill back in. Hello? We do see Gil, it's not his turn, but maybe he wants to showcase that he has got some power or he's currently on the biggest side. So if he's not able to perform something, I'd, I would say as a race director that currently the wind is not strong enough to run this heat. Let's see if he can give us an example of uh, how the wind's looking. It's a pretty big kite he's on. There he goes with a laid back roll, with an add rotation. Not the highest then, but uh, he is showing that he's uh, he's able to loop that kite, add rotations. I wonder what the, what the judges and the race director might think of that. While we're waiting for wind though, um, some of you watching at home have probably uh, partic are probably participating in the game uh, made by s a few enthusiastic kiters uh, called Fantasy. On fantasykite.com, uh, riders have, uh, people at home have been able to pick their own favorite uh, league or their own favorite team with riders they expect to do well in the competition. I've got some statistics in front of me where I can see that there are different tiers of, uh, of riders based on their seeding in this competition. With uh, tier A, for example, uh, for men being Andrea Principi, Lorenzo Cassati and Gil Vlucht. And on, on the statistics I see in front of me, 58% of people pick Andrea here for, uh, for progressing through the most heats and winning the most heats. Followed by Lorenzo Cassati, 36% of, of people pick uh, Lorenzo here. And 4% only pick Gil, so that means that people at home and people picking their fantasy teams are... Um, are uh, not expecting uh, Gil to, to do the best here, but so far he's been actually uh, doing really well. So I wonder if people uh, might want to change their teams as they currently are locked in, so they can't, unfortunately for them. Uh, if we go to Man B then, it's uh, Jamie Overbeek standing out there with uh, with a high percentage of uh, picks and Jeremy Berlando as well. Both, uh, both riders are picked very often. And uh, we do I do hear a buzzer here and I, see, I hear a flag going down. 
wi which probably means that there is a, a heat gun on standby. If we uh, if we check with the female uh, rider statistics, we see that uh, Zara Hogenraad from uh, from this competition is picked the most in women A, uh, with a percentage of 33%. So 33% of people picking their riders in fantasy think that Zara is going to take the win here in this uh, in this competition and progress th through the most heats. Uh, on this website as well, you can uh, go to fantasykite.com and uh, if you go to heat letter, you can actually predict yourself who's going to win what heat, and on that heat letter as well, there's a uh, live scoring. So you can see uh, if you're close and accurate to the scores you thought, and uh, you can actually uh, see the heat progression there and uh, make your own predictions. Follow along with a competition like that. It's a very fun way to participate in this uh, event. And there are prizes up for grabs as well, if you have guessed the right team and have made the right predictions then. As Lewis comes back into, into the booth with me here. Uh, I did hear a horn out there, Lewis. Did, have you uh, any news? I can see the AP flag up there, the red and white one. Is that the AP one? Or I believe that's the AP yeah, flag, that yeah. What does AP stand for? You're a judge. Yeah, AP is heat on standby. We're just uh, waiting for, uh, for a decision made by race director, and it, it looks like the wind is just not there yet, so we're just waiting. Currently, we're not progressing with the heat, and we're just waiting for the wind. And I'm not sure the proper definition, but we've always referenced that in English as the A-prob flag, the AP, which generally means there's a problem. This time, AP is up, and the problem is down to the lack of wind, believe it or not, which is supposed to be stronger. Um, Marine, do you need a break? I'm comfortable up here. You've been in here for a while now, or you... Well, I just looked up AP. It's answering pennant which is denoted a flag in a vertical red and white stripes communicating to sailors that the rate is yeah, race is postponed sounds very sailing answering pennant <laughs> which uh i thought that was something you wore oh no that's a pendant but yes i'll, I'll have a quick break lewis uh, there's a big po board of lunch in front of me so uh. <laughs> i think we're all going to have a quick break here we're going to go to a commercial break Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The body. It's just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. come true and let's go for the next one only a chosen few heed the call a magnetic force drawing athletes towards a challenge like no other when the cold and dense violent tramontan wind lashes the coastline below the eastern Pyrenees Barcares becomes a battleground for a select group of athletes from across the globe. We are ready to crown a new Lord and Queen of Tramontan. The double loop goes on there nicely. And when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive loop. We are like oh, oh my word. From the 29th of March to the 28th of April, the world's best men, women, legends and young guns will defy the limits of the sport in the wildest conditions. Are you ready for takeoff?
Wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. My name is Thibaut Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate cab surfer. I'm Max. I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etienne here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding maker, promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey. We are only at the beginning. My name is Mike. I have lived here on the spot for 20 years. When I came here, the spot was a marine park. There was dolphins, crocodiles, and seals. There was thousands of people coming to watch Flipper. Yes, Flipper, the original dolphin. In 1992, the marine park closed. It was time for a new era. One day I saw something flying over my house. Kite surfers. This was my first contact with this crazy sport. For 15 years, Parc de Doss stayed private, reserved to a small French community. Then the Lords of Tram came and everything changed. Barker Res quickly grew into an international spot like Cape Town and Tarifa. Now I see a lot of professional athletes and kite surf lovers traveling from all around the world to enjoy holiday in Barker Res. The Tremontane wind blows with immense power, propelling riders to dizzying heights. Many records have been broken when you catch the legendary gust. This is it's ridiculous. So He's meters. still going. 200 meters. <laughs> 200 meters. He oh. loved it. Oh my word. Replay. Right, can I get a replay? With the snow capped peaks of the Pyrenees in the background, Parc de Dos provides an incomparable setting for passionate riders. Ce spot de Barcares, il est fabuleux. Il est fabuleux pour moi, c'est euh, mon spot préféré, je dirais, pour m'entraîner. Tout est facile, l'accès au spot est facile. Le plan d'eau est magnifique et le vent fait qu'on peut monter à des hauteurs folles et, et s'entraîner dans les conditions qui sont optimum en France. En plus, grâce au Lord of Tram, ça a pris tellement d'ampleur. Euh, on a tellement de bons riders qui viennent s'entraîner, tellement de, de notoriété qui vient autour du, du spot. Et, euh, et voir ça en France, dans mon sport, dans ma discipline, moi je trouve ça incroyable et, et, et ce spot, c'est pour ça que je l'aime. Euh, J'adore venir ici, euh, c'est euh, vraiment top. Il y a tout qui a été pensé aussi pour euh, la glisse, le spot du Parc des Doses qui a été totalement refait il y a quelques années pour accueillir les pratiquants, euh, les jours sans vent qui existent euh, quand même euh, dans la région, on a un punk track, une ville super accueillante. Euh, L'été, on a des festivals avec plein d'artistes. Euh, c'est vraiment super de venir aussi en famille. L'hiver, il y a le marché de Noël. C'est vraiment une ville où il fait bon vivre, euh, où je me sens vraiment bien. Je suis content euh, que Barcares euh, soit mon, mon lieu d'entraînement, euh, mom spot, comme on dit. Welcome to Barcares, the new mecca of big air kiteboarding. Let the show go on. So your mate thinks he jumps 10 meters high? You can follow him live right at the beach. But don't keep the joy to yourself. Live stream your session to anywhere in the world, reach new heights and climb up the leaderboard.
Join the ultimate kiteboarding game today. Check out thesurfer.app. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. This is one of the most iconic racing designs in motorsport at all times. We transfer this design onto the kite. It's a really good match. It will definitely stand out.
L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
My name is Thibaut Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate cave surfer. I'm Max. I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etienne here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding maker, promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey. We are only at the beginning. Welcome back then to the 2024 Lords of Tram. The red flag is up after that little break that we've just had with the wind, although it appears to be not perfect yet, but race director Cedric deciding that we can re-continue with uh, the heat that was paused. This is Big Air Men's round three. First heat of round three being uh, 13. Josh Gillett, Arthur Gilbert, Leonardo Casati and Gil Vlucht are battling for a place in the semi-finals. Gil currently looks like he's doing pretty well here. Josh Gillett, he's the sort of um, dark horse here that we don't know loads about in competition that's had some really good heats already putting it together and can score sixes and sevens. Arthur had really got a lot of work to do here. He's your French rider. Those of you French Frenchies here hoping for a strong national performance. Marijn, you're back. Uh, you've just had a little break out the booth as well. What's the scene like down there? Um, riders are quite calm. It's, it's not as busy in the riders area as well. It seems like uh, some of the riders have packed up their gear, maybe gone uh, somewhere else to, the, to their car to pack their stuff since they're out of the competition. Uh, we see uh, the, the blue flag here rise again for Josh. Let's see if the wind is uh, strong enough then for these riders again to perform the tricks as he goes up here. Beautiful, oh, just missing the board there. Unfortunately, letting go of the board in that move. Uh, went for a kite loop board off with another rotation, but uh, the, hand, the board slipped out of his hand, apparently. That's what it looks like. Gilles bringing back the board right now. Did look like uh, Good angle, good height, uh, like the wind is there to perform some some tricks. Not double loops yet, I would say, but uh, it's getting better. Grabbing the board now, riding back. As we can see as well, the crowd there on the beach. Walking back to the to the rocks to, to view the action again. 
as uh, next up uh, will be Arthur, the French French local rider, uh, who has only one trick on the board at the moment. He needs to land this trick and the one after in order to have three scoring tricks. We do see Leonardo go up now. It seems like he's on a bigger kite. Went for a board of lead back. Uh, it was his turn then. It seems that Arthur is not in, not in this heat anymore. I did hear something about his kite uh, and uh, some medical staff being there. Uh, so it seems like Archer is not in this heat and uh, Leonardo just landed a clean board of laid back roll uh, by the handle. Um, and these riders are now on the on the bigger kites choosing to go for the single loop, single loops here. Um, as slowly the yellow flag goes up then and it's Giel Vlucht's turn, who's on uh, a very big kite, probably the biggest kite of the day so far. And there he goes, doesn't connect with the wind there then. And going back to the right. Giel's uh, looking pretty solid in this heat with a total uh, points of 19.21. A very high score for that S-loop if you can remember. A very aggressive S-loop there from Giel. Uh, turning it back around now. If he, uh, Hopefully he can find the wind there to perform a trick to the left. Some spray coming from his board then. Here we go, taking off then. Board of laid back, managing to squeeze it out there. Not the best hide, but managing to make it work in the wind he's got. Good performance then from him. Uh, he needed a board of maneuver to score because his uh, current three scoring tricks are uh, a Kylo back row, a Kylo front row, and an S loop. So this board of uh, will probably score a bit higher than the than the Kylo front row. He has the 4.57. Let's see what the judges will score it. Unfortunately, they don't have the wind. Uh, we would love, but definitely these riders can perform some tricks in this wind. Um, as up next is uh, Josh Gillett again. Going to the right, probably going to go for a front roll here, since uh, I've seen him do more front rolls on the right. Going for that doobie there, not very high, unfortunately, and smashing the kite into the water. Probably going to get a, a zero for that, not riding out cleanly. Yeah. Unfortunately, then uh, smashing the kite. We don't see it on the replay, but uh, yeah, as we can see now, 5.27 there for uh, for the board of laid back for uh, for Giel, uh, which replaces his Kylo front roll score, which was a 4.57, uh, putting Giel now back in the lead uh, or more in the lead with a 19.91 in total. Yeah, that looks like it's added 0.7 to his trick score so slowly building up higher as we see a front roll contra loop double front roll contra loop big crash Oof. on the board looks like it on an eight meter kite then here is uh, leonardo casati that had that wonderful opening heat of this event his debut into the world scene he really rode beautifully and was one of the big surprises in the first couple of heats where the 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 lowest seed riders actually outperformed the I'm getting confused now. How you, the highest seed, the the best seed riders best seed got rider. got devastated in those first few heats. I guess is the way to put it. Uh, I'm missing uh, Archer in this heat. I don't know, um, Lewis, if you have an update on him. I I did hear from some riders that there was a uh, medical uh, support and his kite might have exploded there. So we see, oh, pretty nice from Giel there. He's great at that extra rotation to bring himself round, going through the gears. I did also see him down by the jet skis here. I saw the kite the, the did explode as we see, well, uh, we see the takeoff replay from here. So, yes, that is why he's not in this heat. I don't know what happened, but it, he was sitting upright. So That's good. Um, it appeared that it might be um, perhaps related to ankle or hand, but you can't guess this stuff. I'm not sure, but it does very well seem that this heat... It's just with three of them, so they have better chances of making it through as the top two will make it through here. So it's Josh Gillett who's in trouble at this moment in time, and we're nearly up on trick attempts. Five, six. Last so attempt there for Josh, uh, it is. This is his last attempt. He is with the blue rash. This is it right now. Last attempt then for Josh Gillett to do something go for about a board this. He has to do a board of there to get the third category in, and he does. Board of that back, sticking it cleanly. 
that's good. That's going to improve his score a lot. Uh, the lowest score from his three yeah. scores is 1.83. Needs about a five. So it's going to knock him back if you take away that 1.83 to about just below 13. 13 plus, well, 17.71 minus 13. He needs about a five, really, to be comfortable. Which I is think, which he's going to get. He's going to get achievable score with that trick, I would say. Yeah. So sensible riding from very much a newcomer to the scene here, knowing what trick that he needed. Although, hold on. Oh no, it's only a kite loop back roll scoring as a five point seven seven, not a kite loop back roll board off, which would have been trouble because yeah. he would have been not able to replace the. It's the one point eight three. So we await very much. Eager to see that score coming in here. Lots so the wind is coming back now all of a sudden. It looks like it. Yep. Eight meter kite starting to get overpowered. There goes our nice little break in the middle of the day here at the Lords of Tram. If you are still on board the live stream, there's drama in this first heat of round three as Josh Gillett now going into second place. And currently he's got a hand on the quarter final but what can leonardo cassati do here lots of maths for us to do very quickly here but all we know is he's got to upgrade a 5.77 there he goes will he do it with this boogie board off kite loop what has he got so far yeah what I does do. he need he needs more than 5.77 he needs that. a decent score i don't think it's going to be enough he needs 1.2 he needs about a seven really here or very high sixes to, in order to get past 18.91 is what Josh is on. Leonardo Casati is on 17.71. And he's already got a 5.77 scoring. It's going to be a trick one for then. Uh, for I don't Leonardo think he's going to make it. No. I, unfortunately for Leonardo Casati, by my maths, I don't think that that move's going to be big enough as Kiel just performing a mega loop delayed back row. It's a 6.17 coming uh, in. He was his last trick attempt and the last trick of the heat. He knows that he's in first. He doesn't need to do anything crazy there. That is the uh, the, the final end of the there. heat. Yeah, that's the end of the heat. Red flag goes up. Longest heat of the day. Probably uh, an hour, an hour heat, if not longer. With a little postponement in there. I just lost my board. Help me, please. I lost my board. Help me, please. Ah, it does look like he lost his board. I hope you got that message, huh? And let's get him out of trouble. Okay, my friend. Help is on the way. Good to have a friend in the water. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back then. You have just joined us here in heat number two of round three. It's the second heat of the quarterfinals. Evan Klein, Aaron Hadlow, Jeremy Bolando and Lorenzo Casati. What it's a, a heat. Spanish armada against the UK and Dutch rider. We've got vested interest here, Marianne. Are you allowed to say that? Is it in you as a former judge to say things like that? Ah. Uh. Come on, you must want I don't have a, I don't have a country bias. I have a, I have a rider style bias as a commentator here. Oh, I, I really it. like uh, <laughs> the that that Avon is riding a foil kite. It's something we rarely see. Oh, in he's actually event. doing it. He's actually going to do it in the so heat. So he's going to ride this heat with a foil kite, which is something. How, how often do have you seen that? I remember a King of the Air once, 2020, where I saw uh, Guy Bridge riding a riding yeah, a riding has, a foil kite as well. It has happened. Here they are in front of us, though. Evan Klein, who you're not fussed about if he wins or not. I couldn't care how bad their style is. If they're British, I want them to win. <laughs> Here's Aaron Hadlow, second here. He's the 36, oldest rider here. 20 years ago, to remind you, 20 years ago, he was on the way to his first World Championship win. Half of these riders weren't born. Do you like that stat, Philip? Half of these riders weren't born 20 years ago. That's 12 of the fleet out of 24. Weren't even around. Jeremy Bolando and Lorenzo Casati 
make up the final two riders. And if you were a betting man and you went on seeding, you would be thinking that Lorenzo and Jeremy would be the ones to advance. However, Evan, very experienced at this spot. And Aaron Hadlow, you can never be sure what he's going to pull out of the bag. Is he going to go on the short, like lines? On short lines? Is he on shorter lines again? Is this the win? He really wants to be on them. He got such a good score for one of the low standard kite loops. But opening up the account here then is Evan, who Let's is see on what a foil do. kite. Exciting to watch this. Double back roll. Kai Lubordov with an extra rotation there. Oh, oh it's a big back slam. And there goes the kite. That is an absolutely oh. devastating first. How has he oh. pulled off a Houdini there? Oof. He's pulled off a Houdini or a Paul Daniels as we know it in the UK. Do you know Paul Daniels? No, I don't know Paul Daniels. Not, not Maybe not as famous magician as we think in the UK, but national hero, I'll put it that way, Paul Daniels. In Holland, we have a Hans Klok. Hans Klok. Hans Klok. Is there magician. a joke related to the name of a Hans There's Klok? no joke. He's, he's the best magician in Holland. So that actually what we just saw Was there would, would be a Hans Klok. Yeah, okay. for sure. Unfortunately, the, the kite uh, leaving him there, it's, uh, it's a hard kite to, to get above you. There are so many lines attached to that kite there. Um, not making this one, but up next is Aaron then. Uh, yeah. Riding 15 meter lines, I think. And there we I go. Think, I don't know. Are they 15? Oh, it's Whoa. big. It might be the right conditions for Aaron then to perform a lovely delayed back roll, mega loop board off. Getting the kite nice and low. What I find interesting here... Marine, is you've got two guys here who would be favourites to go through. Aaron and Evan have got to do something to try and shake it up and get the judges thinking differently. And they've both done that. Aaron with shorter lines on a setup he knows works. Yeah, it's interesting. They 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 really choose a different approach than the the two Spanish riders, Jeremy and Lorenzo. As we see a six come in there for for Aaron on that uh, Kailu Beckerel board off. We got an interview on the beach, I believe. We're going to bring you overlaid with the action. Wind-wise, he got cancelled, then started again. He kept the same point. How did you feel about it? I mean, it was extremely difficult um, because the wind just went up and down and you really had to find a gust to go for it. Um, but I guess that's part of competing. That's part of this spot as well. And, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the win. It's good for my confidence as well. And uh, I can't wait to go for the next. Sweet, man. Semi-finals. Show it again. Ciao. Interview there with Giel, heat winner of the, the previous heat. Having a very solid performance there. He had all the wins, uh, I think from 15 to, uh, to 35 knots and managing to make it work. Uh, we saw uh, Jeremy here tech uh, up and down uh, quite a few times, just waiting for that wind, uh, waiting for the gust. Uh, when I see the red flag of Jeremy, it's not waving too big, but there he goes for his uh, first trick attempt up with a double back roll with a tic tac and a kite loop there. Two oh, what a, what beautiful a rotations what and a landing. Uh, big landing. I there, think yeah. that was a board spin. I don't know. I don't often. Do you think a tic tac? What does he do usually? Actually, you must know. Well, Let's a tic tac. You consider tic tac to be by the fin to the handle. Handle, I consider to be bo board spin. Yeah. I think he got takes this the board off from the handle. And for, yeah, in those Let's terms, see. this was a board spin by the handle there, spinning the board there. Perhaps it's so dark now. The clouds coming over here. But I think it's going to score a bit more than Aaron's kite loop back roll board off with the technicality of that board spin. We've got Samuel up here, actually, the photographer. How's it going out of the wind? No, it's nice to have you. You're getting a little break out of the wind, finally, walking around on the beach, getting hammered by this Tramontana wind. And we see uh, then uh, 6.83 there for uh, for Jeremy. So uh, 0.83 better than uh, than Aaron, uh, according to the judges, having more rotations and more technique, a bit less power on the longer lines, but uh, a different score there. Did I call him Jamie? I may well have called him Jamie. I don't know, but I apologize if I've done that. Get confused with Jamie these days. You never know what you're going to see. I actually, for a second, thought there was he on that green one for a bit, but... Hey-ho, we know who this is. This is Lorenzo Casati coming in left foot forwards. Nice takeoff into a front roll. More board spins, I believe. 
Nice grab at the end. Yep. Ryan, how do you score that as a judge? You don't have to give me a number, but... I would, I would uh, score it closely. Jeremy's attempt, it was a different r uh, rotation, but I would say it was a similar height, similar power, similar execution with the board spin. So if I was a judge, I would give it around the same the same uh, score as Jeremy got for that move. Okay. The front row in the front row category, you believe? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Jeremy doing a back roll, kite loop back roll, tic-tac. You were right. Perhaps I got it wrong. And that is where I got confused with Jamie. Mm. That that explains what happened to me there, because I think Jamie's more off the handle. But As we see there, the for Lorenzo, 6.73. So indeed, close to Jeremy's score. Big kite loop border then from uh, from Avon on the foil kite. Sticks that one. He'll be happy about that. And this tactic to try these slightly different setups he's gone out the window from Ava and he's getting rid of that foil kite as he rushes down for a pit stop the cloud heavily overcast now which has really affected the wind in some ways actually it made it windier earlier on and the sun less so but now we're seeing the cloud above us reports of the wind uh, and the rain coming in sideways earlier when there was rain but this is really is all about experience right now Aaron Hadlow just loitering do you know this word, loitering? Yeah, waiting around. Yeah, waiting around. Sometimes not a great word to be considered a loiter would be the plural, I guess. But here comes Aaron. He's found some power. This setup seeming Whoa. to work. Oh, he's had to get rid there. It didn't look like he got high enough yeah. to start with there, but he's going to stick with this setup for now. And this setup being very unusual to the rest of the riders is on very short lines. We believe they're 15 meter lines, and you can't argue about the fact that you can't gain that height because we see him set a record in, in Africa this year, in yeah. South Africa, up to 35 metres, I believe, he jumped. It does go, but in these conditions, he just needs to find those right gusts to get the acceleration upwards. The, the advantage of having a bit shorter lines is that you don't feel the gusts as much as if you're riding long lines. Uh, imagine the, the kite is uh, more up in the air on the longer lines, so you feel the difference in wind a bit more than if you're riding shorter lines, and on the short lines you can feel a bit more when you need to take off then. As we see Jeremy go here for a front row kite loop, not what he wanted probably. This is going to be an interesting heat if this continues because that is not a trick you would typically see Jeremy do here. That is a, uh, a failed move for him. He'll be having to throw this move away here as uh, that was just a boogie loop. It's not going to be one of his top three scorers, you would have thought. So all to play for here. Are we going to see Aaron Hadlow with the real experienced riding come through to get through to yet another semi-final boy he would love to make it through there but we're now seeing lorenzo casati can't hear any wind in the live stream booth now it's a bit surreal Marijn. yeah he's on the nine meter kite there does does seem to find something going for the shark attack i believe this trick is called <laughs> <laughs> what a name. Who came up with that baby shark? It's this baby shark. The yes. shark attack. What shark a great attack. move. It's like a triple back roll and then, and then pulling the kite loop after your third rotation, as we can see here on the replay, hopefully. Shark attack. What a nice... Oh, we're getting the whole run up here. Lots of spray on a nine meter here. This is so really... So there's one back roll and then one... And then on the third one, he pulls actually the kite loop. Four so rolls. five it rotations five? in total. Wow. Triple back roll kite loop with two extra rotations. Or so Shark Attack is it? So I like nice that name. name. I, I like that name. So we he's on a nine meter kite and expect as soon as those winds gusts come through, expect him to certainly feel that. Back to J Bo then. Spanish rider. Here he goes, left it forward. Looks to me like he's gonna ride right foot forward. Should be going maybe. back to Avon at this moment, but I don't see Avon on the water actually. He he went back in he went back out to Never change saw his him kite. Again. But uh, this is too long return, this pit stop. He's gonna be Timed out. Can we see... Philip, can you see Avon over there? No, I can't. No, I can't. Top clarity reporting. No, I can't. <laughs> so Avon's looks like he's going to be timed out. It's quite a tricky thing to land, uh, to land a kite like that. So perhaps he's had some issues with uh, landing that foil kite and grabbing a different one. Uh, I'm not sure where Avon is. His flag is still up, though. He has, he has 60 seconds to... To yeah, get back flags there, changed. Uh, flex just gone down. Timed him out. Devastator then. So maybe he didn't have his, his inflatable inflated. Kite. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Needed He's lost the trick the there. Stuff. Falling further in into the uh, the benefit of Aaron Hadlow looking to upset one of these two higher seeded riders. Here comes 
Aaron Hadlow, who's next up to trick. He's in a reasonable position here, but he could do with finding something. Are there enough gusts here? What is he on? He sends one. It's there he goes, repeating the, the trick board he crashed on. before. Yeah, nice move. Looked like, it a, this time. looked like a doobie me mega loop board off, yeah. I think, that yeah. one. I just looked out the window. Double front roll with the Kai loop there. Taking the board off on the second rotation. Here we go. Yeah, this is actually going to score well. for He just had the feet on there, yeah. just about. But Aaron working through the gears. Just what just needs to stay in this yeah. until the last few moves because you never know what could happen. There could be a lot of pressure on these riders. Flying into the box now is Jeremy Blando. Looks like he's got loads of speed. If 45 kilometers an hour being shown oh, from his surf and still. he's mugged it off. Yeah, the, the higher speed you actually ride with, uh, the more power you can build up in between you and your kite. You're edging as much as possible against the kite, trying to, to find as much power, and then when you release that power, you go as high as you possibly can. So the faster you basically ride, the higher you can potentially jump if you can keep that power in the kite. Explain the pre-pop then, because that would would contradict that, that you're actually releasing a bit of that tension for a while. Well, uh, the timing of the pre-pop was very essential because if you pre-pop and you send your kite too much, you're completely losing all the power there. But if, as we see, unfortunately, we don't see him pre-pop here. But if you pre-pop with, uh, with the right technique, you can actually keep the power in the kite. And what you do with your pre-pop is you actually get a bit underneath your kite more, downwind of your kite, which puts the kite in a higher position up and the kite will then fly more more vertical, which will boost you a bit higher. But then you are giving off some tension away, or are you just moving the tension somewhere? You're moving the tension. So in my experience, once you pre-pop, you send the kite a little bit to give it a little bit of extra speed. Yeah. And instead of releasing, coming off your edge, you, you get off the water entirely a little bit. And then carving back into the water, you, you regain that, that power and that speed uh, to, to pop. As we see Jeremy here doing that. This perfectly. is massive. Absolutely massive contra loop with a front roll. There's a board off here. Can't give you the technical details. That's a massive move here. That is going to score above the sevens for me, Mariah. And that's the biggest move of this heat yep. so far. Talk me through this replay. Yeah, here we go. Taking off on the right and, and waiting very well for the wind to come through. Uh, here we see him with a lot of speed in the kite there. A lot of uh, spray coming off his board. Here we see that short pop there. Here he goes for the, for the, for the board spin indeed. And just coming down with a large amount of control, putting on the board whenever he wants. Uh, with four rotations in total, this is a very impressive score from Jeremy. And very well done. Waiting for the win then. 7.93 comes in then as we see a move from Lorenzo Casati. I've just missed that move. Moraine, did you see that? Unfortunately, I missed it as well. But we do have a replay here. It's been great, the replay so far. I have to say, like, some budget's gone into this part of the, uh, the broadcast. It's absolutely perfect. There we go. The preload you can see again. Going for that back roll, double back roll with a board spin as well. An extra rotation on the way down. Transitioning out the move. It was considered better to have the kite come out the other side of the window there. That's totally fine. Any jump you can land. doesn't matter how high you go. You can turn it into a, a transition in some ways. Whether that's voluntary or not from these riders, they're choosing the best option to land. So you've joined us in quite a tight heat here. This is... The second heat of the quarterfinals between Evan Klein, Aaron Hadlow, Jeremy Bolando and Lorenzo Cassati. We're in the south of France in Bacares. And on your screens, with his inflatable kite now, who's unfortunately missed one of his tricks so far, is Evan Klein. They'll all be watching this, I'm sure, back home. Right foot forwards looks like he's going to attack here, Marijn. There we go. Definitely a bit more, uh, more lift than, uh, than the kite he had before. Oh, unfortunately, not making it there. Seems like he was uh, completely dipped into the water and uh, probably is not going to get a score for that. Conditions don't get harder than this. It's one thing when it's just absolutely nuking in your heat, but this has got a bit of everything. And don't, for one second, think this might not pick up where we see a nine meter get changed just yet. That nine meter that I can see is Lorenzo Casati's Harlem. And at any time out here, it can just go... Berserk with no warning. We saw that wonderful moment last year where Liam Whaley believed the wind would pick up. It was such an amazing piece of sailing to believe the wind was due. He went in and got his six and it came. The faith and trust was there for him. It was Aaron Hadlow going for a contra loop 
board off to the right hand side. He's not finding that lift just at the moment, but he's certainly getting a good kite angle. And he's coming straight in here on this kite. He's had enough of it. Perhaps he feels that this wind isn't going to pick up during his heat. So let's see if we can get a glimpse of his kite. What can he be changing to? A nine, maybe? I would what say he would change to a nine on longer lines. Shorter lines uh, reduce the amount of wind that's coming into your kite. So if you the shorter lines you ride, the less power you have as well. So you might opt for for some longer lines there, to have a have the similar amount of power as uh, as Jeremy and uh, Lorenzo and Avon have there. He we really he really needs that kite to be properly powered to be getting into the the elevation and acceleration upwards more so than the other riders that have got a bit longer lines and have got that a bit more energy bit more kinetic energy going on so this kite just working up and down here for Jeremy Belanda I'm not sure he's going to trick here let's see what his body language suggests he's moving the kite up and down it's his last chance to bail out and he does so now riding right foot forwards and he'll have two or three times here to go back and forwards it's Always interesting. If you have only just joined us here, welcome. But we were discussing earlier about how much time the riders get. They don't have a timer running, but there's subconsciously a 40 seconds to a minute time. And if the wind was to drop that much, race director Cedric would perhaps give them a bit more grace or even enough to change a kite. But right now, pushing that grey area is Jeremy Belando. And when riders are coming back in and changing to nines and even tens, as we've seen puts pressure on these riders so Jeremy Belando choosing to block things up in the order now and refusing to jump Morain we've got to that interesting stage in the heat now where are we going to see a, you know a bit of a pause what do you think what's your feeling yeah we saw on the the previous trick attempt from Jeremy that he was just waiting for the win and it paid off in the end for him uh, getting a good gust there but if the if the wait is too long between each gust then uh, the race director might decide that we need to pause this heat as well which would be indicated by by the the white and red AP flag, uh, as you can see as well. Uh, Jeremy has a heart rate of zero, but uh, luckily he's still riding there. And as we can see on the right hand, his watch is connected on his wetsuit and not on his skin, so the the watch is not measuring his heart rate. Um, he's uh, getting his speed though. We're getting his speed in riding uh, 29 kilometers an hour on the ride now. Uh, whenever the heart rate is not showing, it's probably because the <laughs> the rider's wearing the watch on the wetsuit, not on the wrist. Luckily, they're uh, all still in good shape. Uh, yeah, we see uh, probably the, the the tenth tech here from from Jeremy, just riding up and down aggressively. Um, the the tech is not that long. You have about uh, 75 to 200 meters to to tech, um, which is also not too much if you need to build off speed. As he does go for a trick here, manages to find the wind to do a doobie board of there. Quite impressive. Yeah, with a board spin, it looks like as well. And look, just look how the riding speed is on the wow. Even more uh, important to look at here with the effects of the lighter wind as we see this move, this nice replay here, is actually the landing area becomes so much flatter when the wind calms down like that. It's actually a nice place to land right now as Aaron Hadlow makes his way back out onto the water with a bigger kite. But it, it just totally changes when you see it. This must be low end now, 25 knots. It looks very similar to the wind we had in the previous heat where they end up did uh, they did, up, did, did end up uh, postponing that heat. So it's curious to see. Uh, Jeremy is still able to, to work with this wind, though, uh, showing that he's, uh, he's still in control, landing four very decent tricks, actually, uh, scoring a 6.4 for that double uh, front roll kite loop tic-tac. Yeah, it's uh, it's him him indicating to the judges that yeah I can ride with this wind, and it's the other riders that have to to deal with that and to have to uh, try and try and show that they can ride with it as well and more impressively than than Jeremy as Lorenzo is now coming into the left as well. S also not having the, the the right amount of power there. This is interesting for me here. Aaron here appears to have replicated a trick category now that's very unlike him unless there's a plan i'm not aware of here so he's got 5.63 of his second highest score and he then he has a contralute board off again scoring a four i'm surprised that he would have chosen and, uh, to try and upgrade that i'm not sure if that's the correct no in main my category right now if i remember correctly his third second and third trick attempt was a doobie board off which would be a kite loop and not a contra loop yeah so let's so see it might be that it's uh into the scoring system a bit wrong there if, as we see lorenzo with a double front row contra and some extra rotations on the way down. Similar to Jeremy, just waiting there for the gust and uh, making it work in the lighter winds as we get a replay here. There he goes for the double front roll, pulling the contra loop with his front hand. 
spinning on the way down, just grabbing the board to show some extra control, uh, which will give him a quite a solid score. Uh, Jeremy and Lorenzo are, are comfortable riding in this wind, apparently, and uh, can make it work with this wind. As we see, uh, Avon now uh, is, has his flag up, his lycra collar up, and having to go for another trick attempt here. But what? interesting there, probably will change for Aaron. Uh, I mean, should my, my instincts here to go tricks. down there, break into the judging booth and get them to sort this out. But even I know that I must keep calm here. I know that that's not the right thing to do. But, you know, a situation like that, he'd probably be aware of it. If you've got your caddy calling out your scores, it might be, it might not be the last we hear of this. But maybe it was that move. It was certainly on a different tack. Yeah, I, I because feel. I remember that the second and third attempt of uh, Lewis were on the left side tech, which usually he does his uh, kite loops towards the left and his contrast towards the yeah, right. Yeah, so perhaps it's the second trick which has been named wrong, right? This is what we're thinking. It wasn't a contra loop front roll board off. It was actually kite yeah, loop front that's, roll that's board off. Yeah, that's my expectations. Yeah, uh, so let's see how th this pans out. But for now, Aaron only being scored two moves. A big welcome here to the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. It's the first stop of the Big Air here at the Lords of Tram 2024. Evan Klein is next to perform his manoeuvre. Remember, they take turns, unlike some of the other events. It's nice. We can see all of the riders and exactly what they're doing. Here is the replay of that last move, Morain. Copying Lorenzo then to the other side, though. Double front row contra with a board of there, extra rotation on the way down. It wasn't as high as uh, as Lorenzo and wasn't as uh, technical as Lorenzo, so I would say it's going to score a bit less. Lorenzo's score was 6.6, .6, so I would say it's somewhere in between a 5.5 and a and a 6.3. Uh, Let's see what the score comes in for, for Avon, uh, not connecting as well with the gust as uh, Jeremy and Lorenzo are at the moment. So we see Aaron then going straight for, for a jump there. Repeating that contra board off. Oh, what a landing that was. Released the bar just to get rid of any power coming in. That's quite a special landing. I'm going to talk through this one, Marine. It looked like we definitely had a board spin in this move. There was the the front roll. Yeah. And was it a contra? Yeah, contra. It was a contra. contra. So he's going to score higher for that contra loop front roll board off. But again, I don't think this is going to come up on his scores here. We're getting well, since he did a tic-tac, it can perhaps count as a different uh, category there. But we have to see. Are we sure? It does not just fall under the board off? I was under the impression that board off was board off here you might get more points for it but maybe i'll be and proven let's see what wrong the, when the score comes in I, I do think they will count as a as a new score for him there as we see the Correct. score come in now tick how tick, could yeah. i second guess a judge <laughs> well done Marine. you know your stuff there so aaron haddo does then get his third trick score but one feels that still needs to be the correct category here if it's still going to score for him but yeah the difference is now that it, it wouldn't matter because it would also count if it was a kite loop front draw board off um so in his uh, perspective in his uh, caddy perspective on the watch he can see that he's in the right position in the heat with the right amount of points yeah. that's the most important that the riders aren't thrown off by uh, any errors that might have been uh, been happening as he goes now to the beach to his caddy who is giving in the scores as we can see now there Informing him that he's uh, he has three three scores in total, but he is currently in third. As we see a trick there from Jeremy, triple back roll board off uh, with a mega loop as well from Jeremy. So from Germany, from <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> from Jeremy. But Aaron on the beach, he'll be speaking with his caddy, and hopefully this discrepancy in category isn't on his mind. But such is the competition expertise. Him, he would have picked up on that already. Maybe we've got it wrong, but I'm pretty certain I saw what I've seen, and I do not believe for any imagination that Aaron would wouldn't actually, you know, would do the the same thing, you know. So here we go, left foot forwards. Then Lorenzo Casati. We're getting to a crucial point in this heat so far. Another big score there for for Jeremy with the seven point two for that Kylo Becker board off. He's finding the the gust, isn't he? Which is hard to do when it's just your turn, but he's finding a way. To, to deal with it. Do we have to move the stoop waffles as well? Uh, they, can, they can stay. Celt is in here from the social media team. There and we go then with Lorenzo, finding the gust as well with the Kylo board of laid back roll. It seems that Jeremy and Lorenzo Ooh. are much in control of this heat so Sticks far. Sticks it to blind there. And perhaps yeah. now the ocean surface being 
not as chopped up as it was in that stronger win. It's opened the door for manoeuvres like that. Sorry to interrupt you there, Marine, but I was just, ooh, I was excited by yeah. that. We haven't seen any attempts at blind land. Even normal landings have been difficult so mm. far, but stepping things up then, Lorenzo Casati, I wonder how the judges perceive the difficulty in that move. Yeah, it just shows so much extra control if you land to blind. Uh, landing to blind is a really uh, last split second decision uh, if you're going to do it or not. And show showing that means you're so much in control of the trick you've just performed that you uh, that you can do that. And we'll probably be rewarded a little bit in, in a score as well with uh, Jeremy and Lorenzo both having a very good performance so far. Next up then is Evan flying in left foot forwards now towards the crowd. Takes off into a back roll. Are we going to see a blind landing here? He wanted it. I think he wanted it. What's mm. the height he wanted for that? The wind has really dropped severely in this heat. It's been another tough heat for Aaron. His first heat, especially with the wind ranging, I mean, this isn't a joke, was ranging between about 25 and 50 knots in that first heat. What do you even take? I think he had to switch kites up in that one, and he hasn't had the most straightforward one here. He's had to make his way through the second round. So has Evan. These other two riders, Jeremy Belando and Lorenzo Casati, making their way through their first heats in first place, I believe. Well, no, they would have had to, actually, mm. to get to this stage without having a heat in round two. So, as we said at the start of this, those would be the two you might expect to advance, but anything can happen. And with this win the way it is, anything has happened in a few heats. We haven't expected this break, because the strongest win today that I saw was around 4 p.m., and we're just, this cloud is really interfering. Meanwhile, Aaron Hadlow, in he goes, Marijn. I wonder what he's going to perform here because he has, uh, on his scoring tricks, he has a Kai loop back roll board off and a contra loop front roll board off and a contra loop tic tac. I'm seeing uh, movements of a handle pass here on the, on the right uh, of me. Uh, um, do you know what? That d d Something happened there, didn't there, that sparked my thoughts of is this the right wind? to go for this and if it is going to be along the lines of a handle pass it may well be now the wind's picking up though yeah, just at the time he's thought about wow. it he's going to be absolutely and we see lit. lorenzo rushing back to the beach probably want to get a six there yeah he's wow. absolutely overpowered downwind of us so what is aaron hadlow going to do i know he can unhook out of these moves and then land backwards oh, he oh he's binned it he losing didn't the fancy board there that. i think one of his big moves here is a combination of everything a mega loop a board off then unhooking yeah. and getting that and landing swing blind, perhaps. yeah that's the move i think he might be thinking he knows he needs something special one two three that's he has got another trick, uh, trick attempt though he has but it's going to have to be something special if he knocks out the 5.63 mm. yeah we did for a second there see uh, the wind increase now it's uh, dipped back a bit again. We s I've seen Lorenzo rush back to the beach and change kites. Looks like he uh, had six fingers up in the air indicating to probably his dad that he wants to change to a six meter, uh, wanting to go for doubles. Uh, I wonder what, uh, what kite we're going to see flying here uh, soon as uh, now currently it's uh, red flag up, meaning Jeremy has to go. Jeremy can put the pressure here on Lorenzo by doing a quick uh, trick here and forcing Lorenzo to ride back quickly. Or he can do the compatriot thing and take as long as he can for his Spanish friend to uh, to get his kite and come back up because it was quite a very quick dash downwind from Lorenzo and will the wind continue? You know, he really felt the wind was going to pick up there so it looks like he's changed down and uh, the riders can get back out there in around two, two minutes or so at, at best. That's changing the kite as well. Left foot forwards then coming, flying in. Lots of spray on the board here for J Bo. Will that be counted as an attempt? I don't know. I, I didn't see. I Two meter jump. I don't think the judge will say that that's, an, that's a proper attempt. As he's rushing back out now to the right there. Probably needs to go for something now, though, to show the judges that he is uh, going to do something. That will probably count as an attempt there. Going in a back roll, but just not, not getting the height he wants. So now we see the yellow flagged race of Lorenzo Casati, who currently I see has a, a seven rushing back on the water there. He has a six point seven three, a six point six seven, and a six point six score. Very consistent scoring that is. I'd have to guess that that's probably an average of six point six uh, of his tricks, his three tricks so far, or there or thereabouts. Where it, it looks like he might feel a little safe enough right now, but Aaron will know that he's in the region here of needing an eight for his last trick attempt, which will follow in a while. So can Lorenzo Casati push, 
push that distance a little bit further out. You'd have to say Jeremy Belando looks a bit more secure. That 7.93 certainly helping his cause. The only rider to put sevens on the board so far. So Aaron will be over there right now, aware of the situation and thinking, if I'm going to stay in this competition, I have to do something crazy over an eight. But here is the seven metre kite then of Lorenzo Casati. What can he find? Can he find the gust? Beautiful spray off that board there. It's an S loop. S loop, but definitely not the power and the height he wanted there. No. Guys so falling out the sky as well. Yeah, that's the tricky thing. You feel the gust coming and then you rush back to the beach. But as soon as you switch kite, the wind is already changed again. As we see the replay here. It's not going to score big this. Aaron will need a 7.87 to equal the score of Lorenzo Casati. That's working out that he will be kicking out a 5.63. That's how I've done that. 17.76. I've taken away the 5.63. Then I've looked at Lorenzo's total score and minus that from it. It's given me 7.87 is, is what Aaron will need. Let's not forget, it's Evan's turn now. And can he do anything about this situation? It's a very tricky situation for Evan. He certainly can go... Well, actually, if he gets a 10, does it do anything? No, I don't, I don't no. think he's in a situation where... He could actually go into second with a 10, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, well, you know, possible, just a 10. But, uh, but unlikely. But is he now thinking, get a 10 now. what have I got to do to at least get third? Because even third and fourth in this heat, of course, they're not advancing any further. But it will give you a better position during the competition, which, you know, for a long period of a year, eventually you want that good seeding. If you can get that seeding inside the top 10, you're not having to qualify through the video entry, which is a nightmare these days. Used to be easy in the old days. You could just submit one jump, <laughs> one big jump. I used my peer jump video about two times. <laughs> <laughs> it got me in. That's, that's how things were then. But now you've actually got to put a bit of effort in and show that you can do the move. So all these riders are here on warrant, but um, conditions really tricky here. Looks like the wind angle even changing a little bit. Marine, how how are you feeling about this heat? Yeah, it's another tricky heat for these competitors, but we do really see that uh, if you're if you're experienced enough in this wind, which uh, Jeremy is, he's been training here uh, for a bit, uh, that he can really put it uh, put it together, a heat like this, and have some really solid scores there. As we see, Evan now finally going for a trick there, connecting with the wind, late back roll there. Is he gonna unhook on this? He probably would have need to to get a good score there. Needs quite a big score though to kick, to do anything about Aaron. He's going to settle with fourth place there. He needed something like a high seven, I think, if he was going to kick out the three point one and then replace it with something high enough to get him over seventeen point seven six. So oh, all the stats coming in for Avon then. So Aaron Hadlow will be up next. Currently in this competition, may well be in it again in ten seconds time or maybe out. Let's see. Wind's picking up. Nice now. He needs this special move now, this signature move that he's come up with. He needs to be landing backwards. It is a huge back roll. Double back oh. roll. Can he get this? This is a big landing for Aaron Hadlow. Can he oh. fight the landing? It's there an unbelievable go. landing from Aaron Hadlow. He needed a 7.87 to push this to Lorenzo, and it's going to be close. It's going to be a it's close one. Be close. 16 metres high, that one. Uh, more than 100 metres the travel distance on this move as we and see the replay coming oh. in. And on the short lines. Was he on the short lines? He was not on the short oh, lines it? there. No, it's huge. He did take the board off after the loop, which can can be uh, a bit of a point deduction there for the judges. But uh, let's see what they what they come up with for this for this score. Wouldn't it be wonderful for us Brits anyway? As we see, Jer oh, that's a nasty crash. That was a real hit. He stopped. So can Aaron Hadlow? We see a, a, a score coming in there for Aaron. Then six point oh. eight three. Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough for him. Good effort, though. Very good effort. Do you think he was going to plan to unhook and then caught a gust <laughs> mid Not mid out loop? of that. You'd have to be a psycho to do it out of that height. But maybe he didn't expect to go so big. In fact, maybe he thought that would be enough. I mean, the distance he covered there was huge. It was his highest scoring so far. Just coming to terms that it looks like he's going to be undone by one point. 4-1 by this man, Lorenzo Casati, who could well go into first place, though. And as the wind picks up just before his turn, it's an S-loop pulling on the bar. Is that going to score higher than his 6.6? .6? Maybe a little bit or maybe there or thereabouts. Yeah. It wasn't quite in heels range, but that brings us to a close in this heat. So it's the two Spanish riders 
that will advance. And in first place will be Jeremy Bolando. Impressive riding there for Jer for Jeremy, uh, landing a lot of uh, decent tricks and managing to find the gusts the most, I believe, in this heat, uh, going the highest uh, in most of his high-scoring moves there. I see the fl a red flag is raised uh, at the end of this heat. So a tough break from our five times world champion that, as I said before, was winning on the way to winning his first world championships when half of this fleet weren't even born. But he's unfortunately going to have to bow out in third place, but only 1.4 away, proving he's still got what it takes. A very good heat from Jeremy Bolando and Lorenzo Casati, who were favourites to go through in that heat. And Avon Klein also doing well to get through to the quarterfinals. Didn't have his best heat there, I think. I think he started on a foil kite. That explained the situation of that heat. Let's take a look at the highlights. Which should differ very much so from the start of the heat. You know, we saw the nine metre kite and I think this was the early part of the highlights here as we saw Lorenzo kicking things off. But that was the shark attack or that's not quite the shark attack? It has to be three rotation. Mm, it has to be three in before you pull a loop. To be called a shark attack, I believe. There we see a doobie boil from Aaron. So it was a, it was a kite loop then, eh? As we saw on the replay now. So we were right? We were right. The we're judges right. are always right, but but they're the judges. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're always right. <laughs> I'm in a dilemma. <laughs> they're triple back roll, quadruple back roll kite loop with a board off there. Yeah, both the Spanish riders uh, showcasing their um, control in this wind. Beautiful rotation there from Jeremy with a tic tac. I don't know how you can rotate upside down while spinning your board. <laughs> incredibly mm. incredibly difficult maneuver there but making it look very easy yeah that had everything that heat had a bit of drama high wind low wind and we saw this move was unbelievable from Aaron Hadlow fighting to stay in the competition lots of height from that it was his highest scoring move but it just wasn't quite enough for him and now we turn our attention to oh look ah, we've we got interview alright let's go straight to the interview let's see how ready you are Cohen. I'm here on the beach with the winner of the second round, the, s the second heat of the, the quarterfinals. It, it looked like the wind picked up a little bit after you got on the water in this heat. Uh, the wind's coming back a little bit. Did you manage to stick the tricks you want? And how do you feel about winning? I mean, uh, the, the game changed a bit, like the plan changed a bit because uh, I thought we would do double all day long. And last minute I had to pump my nine and just went and did what I could with the wind, with the gust that we we could take. So, yeah, yeah I'm happy now on to the next round, semi-finals, and uh, cross fingers for more wind and let's send it. Sweet, so you want more wind so you can perform better in the semi-finals? Yeah, of course. We want and uh, do you want to go massive on doubles? <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Sick. Cool. Yeah, nice. Thank you, bro. Here we go to the next heat then. As you see a bit of grey in the sky there, a bit of darkness on the water, but we also see some white caps there on the water. On the water then we have uh, three north riders, Ruben Swart, Mark Jacobs, Josue San Ferreira, and we have Jamie Overbeek, who we can't call any rider because he's basically riding with whatever kite. And this time he chooses to ride with the Duotone kite. d lap there in the air as we see. A nice move there. Board of laid back from Mark Jacobs. <laughs> Adding a board off on the way down. <laughs> did just do a double board off. Interesting to see. As we see the replay here, we can check if he actually did a double board off. But it looked like it. He switched hands. There he went for the first board off. Switching hands there. Going for the second board off. <laughs> That's an interesting move there from uh, from Mark. Josue San Ferreira, Brazilian, better known as Baby Shark, is here competing. His dad is here on the beach, caddying him. He's very happy about that. And uh, he's riding here to the left. 
the inventor of the shark attack, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, more of as it. Could, could it be straight out the box, the shark attack? Let's see. Wow. Pretty high there with a the board flip. Kylo with a board flip. We haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen many flips. The flips are uh, are new, are mostly performed in the lighter wind, uh, since the board will blow away if you do a flip in the very strong wind there. So do you think he should get scored well for this? Because I don't think we've seen any board flips. Maybe I've missed one today, but I don't think we've seen a board flip, right, in uh, the Mega Loop board off so far. So that should indicate to the judges that it's harder to do. It is. It is harder to do, but also a uh, board flip, in my opinion, is uh, you can perform a board flip when you're net not getting pulled as much horizontally. So to do a board flip, um, you also indicate that you're not having that much pull on the kite unless you're really, really skilled and you can pull a board flip while you're getting pulled. Uh, we saw here that uh, good good height from uh, Baby Shark there. 6.57 for that Kylo board flip. So quite a good score then. Uh, the judges being happy with that, showing that extra style, showing that extra technicality. As we see Jamie here, uh, Jamie here riding back and forth with a different kite than the heat before, a different brand. Uh, choosing to drive with this one in the lighter wins then. Are we seeing a kite change here already from Baby Shark storming downwind back to the pit stop area out of our window? Looks to me like he's changing whilst Jamie Overbeck is going left foot forwards, sends one. Wow. Big contra loop. What, what just happened there with that rotation at the end? I, I, did, did he change his rotation? Rotation around that trick? Uh, I believe he kept the same rotation, but he just fell into that rotation with the kite being on the right. He was able to fall into a rotation to the left. 14.7 uh, meters high here. Uh, we'll see the replay just now. He takes off into a back roll there, pulls the loop here, spins the board, and then just falls into another back roll there. Just the way he fell into that back roll confused me. Jamie is very, very naturally gifted rider as far as his aerial awareness. He seems to always know where he is so well. I mean, all these riders do, but he especially ha demonstrates some of the best one-handed kite control, I think. So happy to loop a kite four, five, six times with one hand on the bar, which is really what sets these riders apart from, if you like, what was going on some years ago where it was just about mega powerful. I mean, you almost didn't want to let go of the bar with one hand, let alone do what they're doing. Now, but that's something I really admire is the skill in the one handed like anybody listening now that, you know, is into jumping and thinks they're pretty good with some big jumps. Let's see how good you are at just even landing a jump with one hand on the bar. That is a hard skill on its own. I often push people to try that with their coaching to just see how well, you know, leads you up to grabbing the board or one footers and those things. But these riders in forty, fifty knots, no problems, one handed landing, still kite looping the kite. Here we see Ruben. Going for that back row contra loop, double back row contra loop with the board off. As you said, Lewis, uh, to, to loop with one hand, it means that you also have to put the kite in the right position because if you only have the left hand on the bar, it means you actually have to put the kite on the right after your loop because if you put the kite on the left, you can only pull to the left and the kite will not have the time to catch you. So you have to be really aware of uh, where you're putting the kite uh, during, your, during your maneuver. Uh, so to the judges is always a very big difference, I would say, to if you do a trick with or without a, a board off, because you're showing that you're you can fly the kite with one hand, and uh, that's uh, very impressive. To add a few rotations is uh, also good, but definitely not as uh, not as tricky as as to take off your board with one hand and fly the kite with your other hand. Nice trick then there from Ruben, not not the Heidi wanted probably, but uh, good technical trick with the double back row contra loop and the board off there, as we see uh, Mark riding in. We did see Baby Shark switch to a 9, so switching up a size is interesting to see. What do we think Mark's on here then? Probably on an 8 there. Going for or a is that draw. a 9? Is that a 9? It could be a I 9 as well. Know. He'll need a bigger size. What happened there? Is he just scored a 0? Or Yeah, he doesn't look yeah, like he's, he's going to try. Draw there. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's going to try and get on with another move quickly. Yeah, it was only 5.4 metres. Thanks for that, Hugo. Yes, kites are, I wouldn't say easier to loop. It's a different style of of discipline now with the way the riders are getting so much more height. They can't loop them as quick. They don't go as, you know, we weren't going as high maybe in the old days. It, it was totally different. The definition of what was a mega loop 
which was to stall the kite and draw, you know, the free fall you used to get out of a megalith. You actually don't spend much time without sensation with a kite, apart from when you're performing these double loops, I imagine, right? You see then riders dropping, especially S loops where they're falling. Now that's the free fall game if you really want to go for that. But the kite's pulling so vertically above you now, and there's so much acceleration going on. They, they really don't lose contact at the top of the window like before but it's a different game now and that's that's the way it is and to keep up with it for so long like some of these riders have done and it's gone quiet in here almost for a second you think your ears have gone wrong as we drop back down to 25 knots but a big hello to you on the live stream or wherever you're tuning in from around the world i'm lewis crathen sitting next to me is marine from spacex one of the judges a very experienced judge and a top pro rider as well We've been talking through things today. It must be about halfway through the day, maybe a bit more. It's a nine-metre kite. I just made it out from Mark Jacobs. Not getting anything there for uh, for Baby Shark. Oh, that's because it's not Mark Jacobs. Sorry. <laughs> so he changed up then. He changed up. He changed up to a nine. So probably Mark and uh, and Baby Shark both on a nine there. You, you, I mean, Mark would have to be on a bigger kite than Baby Shark, You you would have thought. Yeah, before before it looked like Baby Shark was on the eight and Mark on the nine. But uh, how far up do you want to go? The, the the bigger the size, the the harder it is to get around the window in your loop. Uh, the heavier the kite's going to be in the air. So there's a certain point where you actually benefit from taking a bit of a smaller kite. If you would take a ten or ele an eleven, you might not have the the right amount of speed in the kite to actually uh, go do some tricks in the loops. You might jump a bit higher, have a bit more air time. Uh, but sometimes you can ride faster with a smaller kite and then create actual a uh, little bit of extra lift there if you manage to time it right uh, but yeah definitely uh, riding on the bigger sizes this heat are uh, all the riders as we see as well baby shark riding back getting another attempt from the judges here as it wasn't really an attempt before taking off there now board off kite loop yeah definitely not the wind he's hoping for definitely not the height he wanted as well yeah, the frames of the kites, uh, as, as um, Hugo said in the in the comments, well, is uh, uh, the kites are not necessarily looping easier, but the shapes of the kites nowadays are a lot uh, more aerodynamic, which can make the kite fly easier up after your loop. So the kite won't stay in the same place as, as for as long as it did back in the day, but it can fly up during your loop already, catching you and not really letting you fall down as much. Here comes Jamie Overbeak then. Not super high this one. You could see he didn't really get super powered on that loop as well. So a difficult part of the competition so far as we see, sorry, this heat as we see a replay of that move. What, I'm, what stood out to me here is the, the lack of speed downwind after mm -hmm. looping the kite. He pushed the bar away. So one of the Going back to this conversation we're having, Mariah, and I think the biggest standout thing for me which has changed with the shape of the kite and the materials is actually the the arc uh, and where a kite goes but very much noticed this on a gopro cam looking at old footage i had is that a sea kite would would loop so much more rounder and wider whereas the more modern kites just loop in one half of the window out to the the back hand for example it would be that that right hand side if you're pulling the right hand so they don't really go as, as long and wide and go, don't go on a big journey around the window mm -hmm. like the the older sort of slower kites they turn on th it's the way they turn on their their axes the way yep. they pivot and go round which has really opened the door i mean i'd love to see someone try to do a double loop on an old sea kite i Oof. really would but such as the way that they used to go round i think you'd have to one use a six or a five and two just the way these kites turn you don't lose tension like it's it's weird yeah, and the, the hard thing will be uh, that a sea kite is going to generate so much power in your first loop that you're going to get pulled towards your kite and you need so much extra wind in the second loop there. <laughs> Mark going there for the shark attack then, with a contra loop this time. Has anyone survived the shark attack? <laughs> well, <laughs> seems like Mark has uh, landed at one and survived that shark attack. Triple front row contra loop board of... Took, looked like he had an extra rotation on the way down there. Spinning it's such very a good aggressively name. There. I love that name, the shark attack. <laughs> Gotta love a good name. In kiteboarding. I believe you can either execute it with back rolls and uh, kite loops or front rolls and yeah, contra loops and both considered as shark attack. That's nice. Got a double naming rights in there. That's always good. How you managed to squeeze in four rotations on an on a eight meter jump is quite impressive to me. Um, 
taking it to Baby Shark then uh, with his own trick as he did. Mark did the same in King of the Air this year, uh, performing a shark attack which gave him the win over uh, Baby Shark in the in that in that heat. So um, it's interesting to see Mark's approach. He really takes the the tricks he's gonna do. He's b deciding them based on who he's riding against uh, during that heat. Um, yeah, interesting to see. The wind has died right down here then in round three, third heat of this quarterfinals. But this is uh, it's part of the way it works here. It will come back up again. And what a tricky time for the riders. It's never as simple as just 50 knots all day, is it? But finding some gusts on the way in here really affected here it was Baby Shark. He's going to accelerate. He's miles wow. up in the sky here. It's huge. What an extension on that back roll mega loop with the board off. He got flung out there. His legs just went right up like a rag doll. What a wow. control. Marine taught me through this. Amazing there. Catching the gust there. Whoa. Out the <laughs> yeah, we see a lightweight rider, Baby Shark, on the, on the big kite, on the nine. Uh, amazing. Uh, it's it's part it's part luck, but I also think it's part skill to catch those gusts there, uh, going super high on that trick, and uh, that's very nice for Baby Shark there. It's gonna probably give him one of the higher scores in this heat. The highest score so far is a 7.9 for for Jamie Overbeek, but I'm sure that considering the the heat and the wind, uh, it will be somewhere in the sevens. This trick from uh, from Baby Shark. Where did that come from? Sometimes you need a move like that to just wake you up here in the live stream booth with that hard, tricky light wind. Jamie Overbeat, can he confirm the wind is back? I think that's just about a confirmation, wow. but it has to bin that out. I mean, maybe it was just a freak gust, but it's definitely returning. But just as he entered that pocket upwind then, um, Jay Sam Ferreira, you could just see his body almost got nailed by the gust, but he managed to keep his balance. Out on the open ocean, it's so much harder to do that when you're riding towards a wave. You've got your weight where you want it, and the waves aren't perfect. You can almost be tripped over your rail before you've even got into them. But he held his body position there, which is a sign to me that he's getting, a, you know, but he's a young rider. He's getting stronger, mm -hmm. maybe working out a bit. And he sent that into absolute oblivion. That was pretty amazing, that move. It's not going to score so well this one, I don't think, from Ruben. Not quite getting the height he would have liked, but a landed move once again. Right foot forwards this time. Here's the replay of this move. Contra loop had to have been. Yeah, nice score coming in there for, uh, for Josue or AKA Baby Shark, 7.47, taking it to Mark Jacobs then, etching him out with a total score of 14.04, and Mark has a total score of 12, with one score being a one for that front draw he did, so Mark can, uh, can improve that trick here. Probably not gonna go for uh, for Kylo board of back roll or contra front roll board of, as those two tricks he already has in his, uh, his pocket. Let's see what he's gonna do here. Just riding back now. So we see a five drop there for Ruben Swart. I believe Ruben is a uh, Australian uh, national champion and uh, riding really well. He had a good performing heat last heat with a very big double kite loop board off to, to edge out Max Tullet there. Here we see quite a lot of speed there from Mark then. Double back roll with a contra loop and a board off there. So that's gonna, that's gonna be a nice score for him to come in. A replay here, taking off with a back roll. Taking the board off there while looping the kite with the left hand and sticking it clean. Loads of you on board with us then now. Big uh, thanks to you. Uh, being patient today with this. Big hello to Roland in the UK. Breaking his PB of five meters. He got a six yesterday. Congratulations Ooh. to Roland Mark Parry. Plumbing and heating services. Well done. Great that is. Six meters. That's on your way up. You can get to the ten. You can do it. These riders here going over 20 meters today. Yeah, interesting uh, Interesting to train your height. You can train your height with the Surfer app. Uh, put the Surfer app on your phone, in your wetsuit, on your watch, on your board, and you can measure your height and compare yourself to your friends. As we see Baby Shark here, can he find the same gust as last time? Not there, no. Unfortunately, he missed losing the board there as well. And the kite stalling a bit there. A Hindenburg. A Hindenburg. This is the Hindenburg. As we see the kite dropping. Swimming upwind is interesting. Watch this. He's swimming upwind to regain tension and maybe get back to the board a bit quicker. Yeah. But um, Launching the kite already there. 
I want you watching this to sense the anti-climax going on right now. I really want you to be brought into that false sense of a downer, which often happens this event because it will only make the upper better when it kicks in shortly because it's inevitable it's going to happen today, Marian. And to experience the highs, we must have the lows. This is a very difficult part of this heat for these riders to deal with a long-winded heat in the quarterfinals and it what so often separates the top riders is whether they're able to grind out these results this is the reality of competitive kiteboarding when you get into this world you're so desperate to show what you're capable of and you can spend years waiting for just one heat with the right powered conditions it's one of the most frustrating things to explain to people just wanting to show your potential and you just have to keep going until you get your break. You might just get that dream heat here. But some of the riders are just better at dealing with these crappy wins. But here's one in the pocket, finding the gas. This could Jamie be big. Jamie Overbeck there. Connecting well. Bottle that back with a tic-tic there. Two extra rotation on the way down. Lovely. That's going to be compared to the trick score of uh, Baby Shark there, uh, who, who got a 7.47 for that trick. Definitely had a bit more pull there, Baby Shark. But Jamie here showcasing... Uh, Nice angle a lot that. of control there. Good pull on the kite. A bit less pull than uh, than than Baby Shark, I would say. But adding two rotations, 15.2 meters high there for uh, for Jamie with a travel distance of 88 meters. Impressive then for him. He found the gust there. He needs a good score as well because he's currently uh, on 11.3 in total, puts putting him in the last position with only two scoring tricks. That's the reason why. And got a 7.03 there for that Kylo Backroll tic tac. A bit less than than Baby Shark. But it's still a very solid score there. Ruben Swart here with a with a heart rate of 144 going in, into this trick. Just a back roll, probably not going to count as an attempt there. Uh, and can have an opp another opportunity to go to the right then. Oh, this is such a tough heat to be in. These riders desperately wanting to get to the semis here. What's going on there? That was, <laughs> that was a bit bizarre. <laughs> Just didn't see him through the spray. And it's ah. another low. I just wouldn't be bothered. It's just uh. not worth doing the moves right now in that win. Is he on a six, do you think? I think he's on an eight, actually. He's on an eight. Wow, yeah. that really does put it in perspective. So not finding the gusts there, Ruben, and may well have been in a position to hold things up here if the wind wasn't quite there. Are we now seeing the wind turn a little bit more northwest perhaps or am i seeing things but it looks like it's coming in over that bar a little bit more mark jacobs wow. delaying the loop there a little bit oh, wow. lovely. that's a that's a quite quite a uh, quite good skilled landing there Con contra loop boogie tick was it a board spin or a tic tac i didn't quite see tic tac there well good landing it's not going to be considered a butt check, I would say. There's no spray coming out of his wetsuit, just a spray coming off his board. So uh, impressive landing there for Mark. Uh, experienced, very experienced rider and showcasing that here in his heat. Currently in second with a total score of 17.12, uh, followed by Baby Shark there with a 14.04. But Baby Shark does need an extra uh, an extra trick there to, uh, to count because he currently only has two scoring tricks. So he can definitely, uh, if he has a solid score there with the two highest scores of, uh, almost two highest scores of the heat, uh, he can take de definitely can take it to Mark then, to put Mark on the back foot. Baby Shark turning around. Both on the same gear there, Mark and Baby Shark on the Orbit Pro. Um, it's very uh, comes down to skill then. It doesn't come down to the to the gear anymore. And uh, Baby Shark being the lighter weight rider could have an advantage here in this uh, in this wind. Um, did connect with a very nice gust there, Baby Shark before on that Kylo board of late back roll. Riding now a bit more powered, so you can see the spray coming off his board. He's going to go for something here. He's going to check out of this as well. So this is quite bizarre, actually. Those of you that have kept an eye on the, the forecast for this area, this shouldn't really be happening. The only forecast that I can find any sort of slight drop in the day is the Zephyr forecast. We all love our favourite forecast. Some, well, some of you may not, but it's lovely to find the most windy forecast. I think we all are... Um, guilty to doing that in kiteboarding but always looking to see what's going on here for me most of the forecasts or nearly all of them nine out of ten of them that i've just checked 
show that the wind should be strongest between two and five. So this is a bit bizarre and it definitely has something to do with this cloud that's passing over us. As we're facing right now, this camera must be facing sort of south west. Mm -hmm. The wind coming from the northwest, which Pyrenees is... Pyrenees in the back there. Yeah, we've got the big mountains in the back there, which you know is why how this wind starts in the first place. But definitely the, the heat and the temperatures have to be... Some high cloud actually passing a bit further down. High cloud always sign that there's strange things going on with low cloud present as well so i mean that yeah. flag's barely going now that yeah. red flag yeah and my experience i've been i've been riding here uh for a couple of years already coming to this spot to to ride and to enjoy it's it's a it's a one day drive from my hometown harlem so i've come i've become i've been coming here for a while and uh, whenever there's clouds on the forecast uh, you never know what can happen uh, the next two days we see no clouds. The wind does look a bit less, but um, in my experience, if there's uh, as long as there's no clouds in the forecast, you're guaranteed a good solid day of wind. Um, we hoped for the the strongest wind here in the afternoon. We were surprised with a very strong wind in this morning, and hopefully we'll get some uh, very strong wind uh, in a couple in a couple of uh, heats, so we can uh, get the semi-finals going in proper proper strong wind, as we want to see the best tricks, and we only see the best tricks with the best wind. Uh, but we're currently dealing with a bit of a, a bit of a shift in the wind. So, we're feeling very much like there might be a pause on the way today, which is kind of the way things have gone a bit today. So, hello to you all once again at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. It's round one of the Big Air Tour and we should be visiting the Gran Canaria location for another stop and rumour has it Brazil will have a stop as well. No Tarifa for this year which is a shame because that event was very unique as well and allowed us to ride in this same format. But it looks like there's a bit of a gust building there for Baby Shark although he doesn't want to risk a nothing jump here which could be so easy. He's really close to you know, making it to the semis here. He's got two big scores that we can see. It's possible that he's going to unhook. I've seen him practicing some uh, some Kung Fu passes then. Okay. There he goes. He thought about oh, it. Thought he about just it didn't then. come out. I think he got nailed by a gust yeah. there. That's well spotted, And that's a Marine. tricky thing here. It's uh, If you want to go for an unhooked maneuver, you're going to ride downward. But if the gust suddenly hits you, the, the bar is going to get ripped out of your hands, as we saw with uh, Valentin. With Valentin Kane. There. And it is. The gusts are coming in now. Here we go. Could be another big move then for... Baby Shark, can he stick one in for wow. the semi-final? Lovely big move. Amazing there. Seems like he's lucky uh, again and, and very skillful, of course, but the combination of the two giving him this uh, this nice dooby loop with... Uh, there we go, a nice dooby loop there. Coming out of the rotation with a nice swing in the, in the legs. Controlled landing and... Uh, that's going to be good for him to put a third score on the board. He has uh, two pretty high scores there, but not a third, which puts him currently in third. And there we go. Uh, we see Jamie going with a double front row and a contra, barely managing to get underneath the sky there, not having the gust that uh, Baby Shark had before. Why so much pulling on the bar? Does that really make a difference, sheeting in like that, Marijn? I guess uh, you want to sh sheet out as fast as possible to get the kite up, but then you want to sheet in as fast as possible to get the kite in a power position again to ride out with speed. I guess you could define that as pumping yeah. the bar, you know, really pumping it, trying to luff it to try and... Get it to reconnect. Wind is up now, that's for sure. Here we come then. 40 knots. Looks like it's hit us now. Are we going to see Ruben Swart connect with something here? Bit of a delayed contra loop. Oh, flip there. Double back row with a contra loop. Going for the flip. Not sure if that was the smartest idea. Could have landed it probably without the flip and then uh, got a score there. But uh, yeah, not the biggest height there for Ruben. Unfortunately, not connecting perfectly with that gust. It's, it's quite tricky as well. I'd like to extend a big welcome and, uh, you know, uh, and to say hello to the family of Ruben Swart as well. I can see you all commenting here. You really have put forward some great Australian support on our live stream comments. And he is performing wonderfully to be in this quarterfinal. He's had a really tough deal with this tricky wind here, but it'd be all good experience for him. And I can only imagine how nice that would be for you to see him in a world championships. And I'm sure it's not going to be his first time, but he's very liked around around the paddocks here. Mark Jacobs here needs to perform a good trick then to become second in this heat and progress to the semi-finals. Boah, not making that trick there. 
Landing on the board as well. Hopefully he's okay. Slammo. Big slammer there for him. He's swimming. Checking I'm interested. In what names do you have for a kite slamming down the window? We've just had two there. Slammo, a slammer. Has Got he any others? The kite there, yeah. Is he okay? Hopefully the jet ski can uh, go up to him now and check if he's okay. Yeah, he looks. He like looks like he crashed very hard on the board there, uh, swimming backwards as well. So there might be something uh, wi with the ankle there, or, or uh, something going on with Mark. He released the kite there. Um, Baby Shark is checking on him uh, as we speak, and the jet ski is there as well. So so often. It's the minor crashes. I didn't think that was a biggie, personally, but actually he must have hurt himself in some way. It's the way you, you, you get up, uh, you fall on the board that's uh, the most important. You can have very big hits, but as soon as you uh, have a minor hit, but on the wrong direction with your board, or with your foot in the wrong position, something can snap, something can go wrong, and uh, perhaps that was happened to Mark here. He's being dragged onto the jet ski uh, sled, as we can see here. Hopefully another jet ski can, uh, can come fetch his kite so it doesn't... Uh, blow through the uh, the cable park that's downwind of us. Do we have a replay of that? Uh, Mark's being dragged onto the jet ski now. Looks like he's, uh, he's grabbing his foot there, something with the ankle. And uh, it looked like a really hard uh, crash there on his board for sure. Kite not catching him there, the gust uh, leaving him to drop. Let here we have the replay. Let's take a look, and see what happens here. Oh, oh no, this, this is Jamie. Is Jamie. This is a replay of uh, one of Jamie's uh, tricks there. Are devastating. They don't have it, so you could go back. Maybe I can be sneaky and go back on the live somehow. But um, yeah, Mark obviously had a bit of an injury here. So the the boat's now rescuing his kite, and Mark is uh, laying on the back of the of the jet ski. Unfortunately, the camera's not uh, not showing any of this action. But I can see in front of me that he's being dragged towards the beach, where there are a few uh, medical staff taking care of him now. And uh, the rest of the competitors are uh, waiting patiently upwind to see if Mark is okay. Jet ski pulling up to the water now. Mark uh, is getting up by himself, getting helped a bit there. And uh, seems like there's something up with his uh, his left foot, left ankle. Medical staff is checking him now, at right now at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's the tricky things with these winds. You you push your your level. And it's not necessarily the, the higher winds that can be dangerous, but also these lower winds where you're not sure if the gust is going to come through. Uh, and it can drop you there. Um, hopefully all good with Mark. It seems uh, the, the medical staff is looking at his ankle right now. And um, hopefully nothing too serious. It can be very tricky here in this spot. If you can't feel the wind, if you need to go for a trick, Mark was on the in third place in his heat, so he needed to perform a big trick there. And um, then you tend to take a bit more risk than, 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 uh, than if you would be in first position. And unfortunately for him, a big crash there on, on the board. As Lewis is uh, going back in time on the live stream, as you can do hopefully as well to, to see this trick, to see this, uh, to see this crash. And um, yeah, now we're just waiting a bit to see uh, is if it's all good with Mark there. It just didn't strike me as one that you know, maybe didn't get quite the height. I think it might be the way that he's landed on the board. Yeah, he's landed on the board quite hard there on impact. So hopefully he's okay. His flag is up. It was the impact into the board on landing. I didn't pick up on that being a crash. I didn't feel it was... I just don't think I saw it accurately yeah. enough to recognise that. And it's, so any other, it's any other slam that uh, can be quite fine if you don't have the board on on your feet but if you just have your foot halfway in the strap and you you come down and the board is staying in the water while your 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 foot is moving around something can uh, can get bruised or can get broken it's the tiny margins that uh, that are the the pinnacle of this sport of, of injury there uh, there's risk to the sports for sure and there's a uh, there's high there's high risks of injury um, if you're coming down with that much speed and uh, you don't have your foot correctly in the straps and you're coming down in chop, there's a uh, yeah, there's anything that can happen there. So here we are in the live stream booth. Love it when they tell you that you're going to be shown. We could have been, you know, picking our nose, doing anything, but we are here in the live stream booth and the action is continuing. So let's go back to that. Cool, they just showed us for a couple of seconds there. 
as we go straight. Trip Shark connects there again with uh, with a gust there. Ooh. I think that's going to be considered a crash. He yeah. went into a fourth rotation there, maybe not on purpose. Uh, and that made him not be able to, to come out of this trick clean. Uh, triple back row Kyle Bordov and then that extra rotation uh, just threw him off a bit and not being able to land that with the kite in front, not having enough uh, speed to ride that out. Here comes Jamie Overbeek then, left foot forwards. Has he got a good takeoff? It's not huge. So going down to the wire for these riders, lovely control though to just land another move for him. Let's take a look at the scoring here now because this heat seems like it's gone on a long time. Mark Jacobs currently actually is in third place. It's not going to be enough to go through, but mm. I think his injury won't see him coming back out on the water. We'll bring you more news than we do have that, but he was on the back of the jet ski getting pulled in. The heat does continue, and how many tricks are left for these riders? It's one trick each, One I trick believe. each, yeah. There Hit. we go for Ruben. Uh, Ruben's last trick. Yeah. He's a very big one to uh, to become second in this heat. And it's not going to be that one, unfortunately, no. for Ruben. So that will be the end of the line for Ruben. And unfortunately for the Australians, they'll have to accept that he is out here. But he's done very well to get into the quarterfinals, mixing it with the big guys. What a moment that must be to have a heat with Mark Jacobs, Baby Shark and Jamie Overbeek. Which one of those will go through or will go out too. It very much looks like Mark Jacobs because we don't think he's going to come back. So riders will be aware of that, but they still want to battle for the first and second positions, which will perhaps give them a different route through here. I wonder if they've checked that already. We'll at least put them in a different part of the sequence. So Marine's going to check that quickly for me. As we see Baby Shark, I love that. I mean, it's almost like going into some sort of delayed front. Oh, it's a landing to blind. Wow. Joke. Where did that come from? Out of nowhere, demonstrating the ability to spin round. This is going to be a great replay here. Let's talk you through this one. Sends it front roll, double front roll. It's a doobie. Very inverted. A grab as well with a mega loop. And then wow. boom. Very landing. stylish there from Baby Shark. Beautiful rotation, the second one. Almost considered a flip. I would say it's a, a signature Edgar Ulrich flip. Uh, going inverted with the, with the knees tucked in and uh, landing to blind then is especially showing the control. If you win this heat, you are in the last semi-final, heat number 18. And if you become second in this heat, you're in uh, heat 17. So the, the benefit of being first in this heat is you have a bit more time to catch your breath, uh, take some time pr pr to prepare for the next heat. As you see Jamie going for a double back roll with a board spin and an extra rotation there on the way down. Sticking it very cleanly and uh, showing that him and Baby Shark are uh, both progressing to the, to the next uh, round. Seeing whoever's going to be in which heat is going to be interesting as that trick from Baby Shark was really impressive there. He really does seem like he's got all the time in the world to put the board back on his feet. He doesn't rush Jamie Overbeek. It's one of his signature parts of his style. As we see here, a 6.4 for Baby Shark there and a 6.67 for Jamie, making Jamie the, the winner of this heat, making him progress to heat 18. And uh, Baby Shark or Josue uh, going with a 6.4 as a second uh, second place in this heat to heat 17, both in the semi-finals then and uh, both uh, with a chance to go to the podiums uh, if they if they do very well in those semi-finals. Very good performance by both of them. Baby Shark being able to connect very well with those with those uh, gusts there, with a huge Kylo board of uh, with a laid back roll there, and uh, Jamie showing control as well. Only crashing one trick in this uh, in this heat and uh, having very high scores with uh, 7.9 for a contra back roll board of uh, seven for a contra back roll tic tac and uh, a contra front roll board of with a 6.67. As we go to the highlights of this heat. These are the highlights of that heat. I don't think we got that replay of Mark's crash, which looked like he landed on the board yeah. eventually. Yes, it does look a bit dark here. We might have to boost the exposure on some of these cameras, but was this the move here? No, That's this the was attack. the shark attack from Mark when he was very much had a chance of going through here. So we hope he's 
Okay, and we'll bring you more when we know about it. There, Baby Shark with a huge preload pop there. <laughs> wow. With an incredible. Uh, <laughs> maybe that preload is uh, paying off there for him. Catching the gust there amazingly. Like sometimes if you preload a bit downwind, your kite shoots upwind more and uh, gives you that li extra lift there. Jamie Overbake repeating that trick then after him with an extra tick tick and a few extra rotations. Uh, hard to ride because the wind was super on off, but I managed to catch the gust that I needed to get in first place. So uh, yes, uh, let's hope for the best uh, for the next round. I mean, uh, going into the semi-finals, Jamie, well done. And where are you looking at? What is the position you want to end at? Uh, I want to, yeah, I want to end uh, in first place, of course. Uh, so I'm going for that, but. Uh, yeah, I will be super happy to be in the final if I win my next round, but I definitely want to win. Good luck, bro. Sweet. Thanks, Cohen. There is the yellow flag you can see. Not the Riders Rash Fest yellow flag. That flag tells the riders there's less than a minute until their heat starts. Who's coming up next then, Marijn? So in the next heat, we have a, a mix of uh, different countries, different continents as well. We have uh, Martin Ronell from Estonia, young rider, new rider on the Elevate Kite in the Blue Lycra. French rider Edgar Ulrich in the White Lycra riding the, the, the Evo D-Lab with, uh, with the normal graphics. I say normal graphics because we have also Andrea Principi in this heat with a pink kite. It's the same kite that Edgar is riding, but it has very custom Porsche graphics, a beautiful kite there. Uh, and uh, in the heat as well is Jason van der Spuy in the red lycra from South Africa riding with uh, with a grey and uh, dark grey airish kite there. Um, all these riders have a, a different approach I think to this heat, uh, different skill set as well. Jason can do some big unhoot stuff. Andrea is known for his uh, his incredible um, technique being the overall winner for almost I, I would say every event last year. It's the king of the air, the Megaloop and the world the world tour champion Andrea Principi uh, with incredible performance last year. As the buzzer goes, and uh, Martin Ronell is up first with, th with a darker kite there, the Elevate kite. Um, it looks like he's on a bigger size now as well than the previous heats where he was doing a lot of double loops. Um, let's see Martin Ronell, see if we can get rid of this, uh, uh, this widget in front uh, that's showing who's in these heats. And there we go, uh, Martin Ronell with the white helmet there, riding to the left and opting out of this, uh, this trick then. Um, didn't feel the wind there. Going to the right now. Perhaps we'll connect with uh, with a gust here. There we go. Going up. Kylo Bordo flip there, and crashing it. Unfortunately, the flips are uh, are a bit new this competition. Um, the judges seem to like them, and so the competitors are now uh, performing them as well. As we saw a big score for the kite loop flip for uh, Baby Shark 6.4 in the previous heat. And uh, perhaps Martin wanting to repeat that, but unfortunately not getting uh, the kite above him in time to land that. As up next is uh, Edgar Ulrich uh, going to the right as well. Then uh, the riders seem to maybe uh, find that the the direction for uh, f from the wind is a bit better to take off on the right now. Uh, as I can see the the flags as well moving a bit more to the northern uh, indication of the wind direction. Um, Edgar is uh, tacking back in the corner at the at the audience, close to his French French fans, probably uh, getting uh, encouragements from them, no doubt. As he goes to the right here, taking off then there, Edgar Ulri going for a front row kite loop there with a beautiful flip with the legs extended, keeping the board off for a while there. Beautiful, that's amazing to see. It's uh, I love to see that the riders t uh, keep their board off for, uh, for a little while on the trick because it shows so much more control and style. As we're gonna see a replay here, you can really see that he takes the board off in a stylish m way and keeps the legs straight, keeps the legs straight for a while during his down loop. Unfortunately, we're missing the replay as we're going straight back to, um, back to the trick attempt. As the, the trick score for Edgar should drop anytime soon here. So I see a white flag up there. Might be some uh, some delay there for his score. Judges judges will be deciding what they're going to score that. I would say it's a classic uh, uh, Edgar way of kiting. It's uh, beautiful rotations, uh, extra style. Just putting, uh, making the 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 
well-performed tricks look uh, very stylish as the red flag just goes up and a 7.4 there for Edgar very 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 nice score for him then opening up his uh, his heat with a 7.4 that's really nice one of the higher uh, higher scoring tricks this round and uh, up next is Jason with a long leash dangling there from his wetsuit uh, indicating that he is possibly uh, um, he's possibly gonna do some unhooked stuff here riding now to the left there with his uh, with his kite probably is on the nine meter air rush lift there taking off there in a back roll and uh, wanting to go for the board off but realizing that he didn't have the height and the smart move from him to not then uh, go for the for the trick but uh, stay play it safe get the first score on the board there as we see the replay here back roll and you can see here that he just doesn't go any higher if you feel uh, in your rotation that you you're getting the lift then you can start pulling the kite because you you know you have enough time to land your trick then but Jason just not feeling that and um, there smart choice for him I think to not go for the board off and uh, stick with uh, with a double back row kite loop which is just a just a fine trick just a fine uh, opening score for him uh, as up next is Andrea didn't have the the easiest start to the heat with a oh there we f oof. probably getting stuck in the clay there with his board taking off very close to the shore and uh, your board might catch on the clay I've had it a few times as well myself here very unfortunate for him. I was just uh, about to say he didn't have the best uh, start to this composition um, with a tangle there. But uh, now he's body dragging back upwind to fetch his board. He might be still stuck in the clay there. Sorry to have left you for a little bit there as wind really coming through as we predict. It's getting a bit chilly in here as well, which indicates the wind is really cooling things down. I was actually taking a look at the routes through to the semis for some of these riders and I couldn't work out how uh, Lorenzo may well be up against Andrea if Andrea was to win this heat and it's because Lorenzo finished second in his uh, his quarterfinal and Jeremy Belando actually won that which would, is now going to send potentially if Andrea wins this heat the current world champion king of the air champion and the mega loop champion you'd like to think he might win this those two would meet in the semi-final however two still go through to the main final, so they could both still go through, but they would meet earlier than perhaps their seedings would um, make you think that they might meet. But that is because Lorenzo was second to Jeremy Belando in that quarterfinals. But these riders don't worry too much about that. They just want to keep advancing. Meanwhile, here then is Edgar Ulrich. He started well here, Marine. A 7.4, I can see. And but again there, connecting with the gust, keeping the board off there. Showing the French crowd, oh, and that's that's a tough price to pay then for him. Just the wind dipping on him on, on the down loop. The showing horrible very much yank control. at the end there, that's nasty. The wind is up now, Marine. This is something we want to make very clear to you on the live stream now. I feel like we're getting back up to the high strength winds and we're not far away from the final here, actually. This is the last heat then of this quarterfinals. And I already know from taking a quick look, that first semi is currently Baby Shark, Josue, Ferrero against Hilvlud, Jabo. And the second position of this here in front of us will join them. Josh, Lorenzo, Josh Gillett, Lorenzo, Casati, Jamie Overbeek waiting currently in the other semi-final. And it's the winner of this one which will go through to join them. Andrea just um yeah, just not connecting with the takeoff on the first attempt there. It's um upwind of the spot is a uh, grass patch and uh, the grass is on, on some thick clay and if uh, it's it's pretty shallow there which creates very flat uh, takeoff for the riders. But it means also if you carve too deep into the water you get stuck in that clay there, uh, that can be unfortunate. See Jason coming up here. Now he is connecting with a gas, double back roll with a tic tac there and a kite loop. Good for him to just improve that uh, that trick he wanted to try before. As we see the replay coming in here, it's a it's a clean, it's a very well known trick from Jason, the double back roll. Sometimes if there's more wind, he will do a crazy amount of tornado spins after that uh, after that kite loop. But just with this wind playing it safe, going for the one extra rotation there, and uh, yeah, solid would would give him a s would give him a solid score there. As Andrea is uh, up next with a yellow lycra going to the right, then what are we gonna see from him? Taking off now, going for 
A beautiful double front roll, Kaidu with a tic tac in the rotation there. And sticking the landing. Good trick there from Andrea. Spinning the board, and then as soon as he tic tac the board, he's uh, flipping over his side, over his right shoulder in the front rotation. Beautiful technique from him there. There we go for Martin. Nice trick there. Unfortunately, not landing that. Sometimes it seems that um, the kite he the kite he's riding is not uh, getting giving him enough drift to land the tricks. He's landing a lot with the kite at 12, uh, which is not giving enough exit speed to to ride out these moves. Unfortunately for for Martin there, crashing this one, uh, not having a score for it. 0.7 is his only trick score so far. So we see Edgar riding up. Probably gonna repeat the tricky crash before. There we go. Double front or contra with the board off. Oh, not connecting with the gust either this time. Unfortunately, crashing that one. Still a bit of cloud over this event site right now, which is causing this wind to not really pump through cleanly. It's just blocking the area, I feel. 3.33 p.m. local time. If you have just joined us on the live stream, welcome to you. It's the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. I'm Lewis Crathen. Sitting next to me is very experienced judge, Marijn Fug. Also, I'd like to uh, direct, I'm going to say director of SpaceX, <laughs> co-director, giving you all sorts of names. It's very well connected with SpaceX kiteboarding. And oh, we see again here Jason hitting the clay there. You see, he's standing up, it's very shallow there. So if you're too close upwind there and you're carving for your pop, uh, your, your fins or your, your rail really might get stuck there in the mud. It happened to Andrea as well at the beginning of this heat. Did uh, that really just happen? Yeah. <laughs> I've had it a few times as well myself. You're just too close upwind to, uh, to the clay patch there. Your, your board might get stuck. And it looked like yeah. it launched him into a board spin or yeah, something. That was ridiculous. Yeah, it's quite dangerous as well. If you, if you would have super high speed, you, uh, you can get flung into the rocks on the left there for the riders on the left, for us on the right. Um, luckily, that didn't happen this time. And uh, uh, Jason here got a 6.1 for that double back roll. Kai looked tic tac on the last, uh, last attempt. And now just riding back and forth. It seems that uh, his red flag is still up, giving him uh, another chance then. Andrea being a bit uh, in the competition zone. Should make some some space there for Jason to to perform his trick. He's getting uh, he's getting out now, and Jason has the room. Let's see what he's going to do. He takes off there. The kite loop not not finding the gust again, unfortunately. You see his uh, hand shaking there a bit, bummed out about uh, not making that not making that trick. As we get the replay here, front roll there, and uh, yeah, just. Pulling the kite loop just for pulling the kite loop's sake and uh, not having the wind on his takeoff. Looks like a nine meter kite or eight. Quite difficult to define a nine or an eight sometimes for the world champion right now. He's going right foot forwards. Do they need to change the brightness or is it us on this TV? I think they need to be upping the yeah up the, the exposure levels a, a bit. bit. As we see a nice double back roll uh, guide loop there from uh, from Andreas. We we'll get the replay now on the right. Ah, never mind. It was a front or contra loop as we need to adjust the brightness a bit on the screen. Martin Ranel waiting there on the left, indicating he wants to perform a trick to the right. Board of late back roll there, just this is a good indication that you send the kite a bit too far, then you only have your right hand left on the bar, which you cannot pull down up in the correct order to land safely. And just crashing there with that uh, kite loop board of late back roll. 
Definitely going through one of those lulls in both the on water conditions here and in the energy levels. Certainly looking out to sea. You just can see it looking out to can we even call that a sea? Looking out to the water. I thought I saw an imaginary board down there then. I've been staring at the screen and out the water too long. Unhooked maneuver! There we go. The Big first one of the day actually successfully performed so far. Yes, lands it. Edgar Ulrich pulling out Daniel all of his experience. There. Lovely. Kung Fu handle pass with multiple rotations, front roll rotations. Ah, front there, yeah. And that is a man that's just very aware of the conditions, allowing him to unhook. Moving his hand uh, while he was uh, unhooked there to, to download the kite in a, in a controlled manner to, to land safely. Is uh, is Jason gonna gonna see this and and uh, is going to to repeat this trick as Jason is uh, known for being able to unhook as well, or is he going to repeat his front row kai loop that he uh, didn't get the gust for last time? Let's see. He's gonna go for improving his back roll trick there, but adding a tic tac to make it fit in a different category. Smart riding from him, adding an extra rotation as well on the way down. Really challenging the riders then, this lighter win here with nine meter kites to really be on point with this gusty weather that maybe he wasn't expecting to be. That was wonderful, yeah. that move actually. The more you look at that in a replay, the technical level that Jason van der Spey has just shown. Can he maybe get to the semi finals here? And all I have for you at the moment here is that any of you wondering, Mark Jacobs has been taken in the ambulance. It, it did look like he had a cast on the leg for him. Got caught in a very big crash with the board, it seemed. So we'll bring you more and we'll have it. But he has gone away in the ambulance with our medical team right now. This is heat number four. It's the last heat of the quarterfinals. Two of these riders will make it through to the finals. It hasn't been plain sailing. That's for sure for the current world champion who finds himself down in third place at the moment, but he hasn't got three scores on there. But he's going to have his work cut out because Edgar Ulrich and Jason van der Spy riding well. Martin Rachnell really needs to get going here as well. Whoa. Whoa, that's, a, that's an interesting rotation there from Andrea going upside down before pulling the loop and then having the loop pull him out of that rotation as we can see the replay here. Interesting move there. So he's taking off in a back row, I believe, and then going upside down, as he was, you would call it a dead man here, and then pulling the kai loop there, and the kai loop is pulling him out of that uh, out of that move in a rotation, landing it uh, quite clean. Good, gonna gotta be a solid score there for Andrea. Uh, not a uh, too aggressive kite angle on that move, but uh, just a solid score for his uh, third. Fourth trick, so it's, it's probably his third score there. Yeah, Martin has uh, three attempts left and really needs to land these three tricks as he has currently only 0.7 uh, score in total. This has to be it, Marine. This has to be the win powering through now. The door's going again. It's fine, by the way, if you were wondering. After all our morning comments, riders are edging out there. I'm expecting some pit stops here as Martin Renel sends a nice big mega loop. Delayed back roll to the right hand side. Huge Whoa. downwind distance. That was well over 100 meters. Bombs out and gets a crash. But now we look like we've got a scene set for semi finals and finals to come. Here's the replay of Martin Renel connecting a bit higher than we were, or at least the cameraman were expecting. Was that Edgar? I didn't think it was Edgar. No, no. no, it wasn't Edgar. Oh, no, it's because Edgar's up here. So, very challenging. These quarterfinals have been nothing other than absolutely challenging for the riders. Lots starting on nines. And then the wind has now looked like it's picking up. What are we going to see here? Board of lead back row there for Edgar. Keeping the board up for a while and uh, sticking it cleanly. Definitely getting more power than before. So We're going to see a short replay here of that move. Just a, a basic move, but well executed there. Flying off the screen there. Lovely Cameron, shot, that one. I know up. Ruben Lenton watching will appreciate that one. And th let's remind you as well, Edgar Ulrich's really on a on a nice purple patch in his career right now. He's got all the way to the semi-finals of the King of the Air. 
and he's here fighting for a place in the semi-finals as well. It puts him, he's got his scores up now. He's currently in second place. In this heat is the Frenchman. Estonia on the water, South African on the water here, who's just, oh, that's a nasty one there, taking a bit of a bomb landing as the wind filling in here now. Lots of gusts on your screens. Not much glassy water left now as we are 3.42, the last quarterfinals before we go into the semi-finals, And it's been tough wind today. It's been the sort of wind you can get hurt. We've had some crashes. Mark Jacobs being looked after right now on his way, I think, to the hospital in the ambulance for a leg injury. We'll bring you more on that when we can. But right now, we have got this battle between Edgar Ulrich from France, Jason van der Spey from South Africa, Andrea Principi, current world champion, number one, numero uno. He is from Italy and Martin Renel from Estonia. And Andrea Principi, right foot forwards, into back rolls, into a double back roll, into a board off, into a triple back roll, into a quadruple back roll. Wow. Huge distance, big mega loop in there as well. I just couldn't fit it quite in <laughs> at the time. That is a move from the current world champion. See He's here on the... On the on the replay that he's putting his kite a lot forward before he actually pulls the loop so interesting to see if we can see this here as he's taking off here and he's any second now you see he's moving the kite a bit to the right there and then looping that it's going to give him a little bit of extra height it's going to sacrifice a bit of power in the loop but it, it did give him that travel distance that we see here it just looks like it keeps him in time with his kite it's always above him throughout that whole move he's got tension and in these conditions if you have to sacrifice one thing, as long as you're landing well. But he still gets a decent kite angle on that move. So expect Andrea Principi to hold on to that first place, you would have thought. And we go back now to Martin Ronell. Looks a bit more comfortably powered here and aborts that jump. I think the judges won't be too fussed about that. Mm. It looked... No. Quite low. Always yeah. interesting there because they, they don't really get to do much. You know, it's one jump and that's scored. He did leave the water there. Freestyle was a bit different. You'd have got penalised for leaving the water like that. That would have been considered your trick. But he's ended up going right foot forwards, Martin Renal. Whoa, it's a big one for Martin Woo! Renal. Went big for loop. a grab. Could have done with a late back roll or something. He's going to stick this. He is going to stick this. It's not over yet. Now it's I hear over. the wind howling against the container. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's definitely picking up to 40 knots outside now. So if you have just joined us, what a time to join us. You've missed lots of action today, but this could well be the crescendo here at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. It's round one of the big air. That's Martin Renel on your screen representing Estonia. We don't get many of those riders from there, but he's representing that country well here in the quarterfinals. Now we go See back. Here, Edgar taking off now. Hopefully connecting with the wind that just came through with the front rock. Oh, bombing out there as well. Something happened there. I think he's connected with a major gust on that contra loop. It just jerked forward yeah. that kite. You heard it. You saw it shift in the wind. What is he on? He's on an eight, I think, eight or nine. Yeah, eight or nine And there. I think we can see a pit stop. It wasn't line failure, but it definitely, the, 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 the trick discontinued once I saw that kite move out the side. It does look like the wind is getting very gusty at the moment. We we feel those uh, big uh, those are big gusts coming through here, but definitely on the left, the gusts are very noticeable and dropping the riders out of the sky, which is uh, becoming not uh, the perfect scenario for for this competition now. As we saw this uh, this this wipeout from Edgar, unfortunately uh, losing the wind there on his in his kite, and uh, yeah, it's a tricky situation. This uh, this this round this whole round has been. Uh, Heats of uh, up and down wind, gusty wind. Uh, we've seen uh, Mark being taken to the hospital to check on his uh, ankle and leg. Um, also because the, the kite dropped him a bit and the wind dropped him. So let's see what the, what the call is going to be after this, uh, after this round. If we're going to continue to the semi-final or uh, if we're going to check the wind, make sure everyone's okay with riding. Uh, we're not riding in dangerous conditions and we're not riding in uh, conditions that will put uh, the... The, the the bodies of these athletes in danger uh, and i think we're gonna have a, a short check at the wind after this uh, after this heat we know that we need to adjust the brightness just for the record here we're not just ignoring you but they have to do that um after this heat i'm being told so for sure they're going to do that and then the sun's going to come out but either way the action still continuing is jason van der with a lovely connection here with a contra loop maneuver 
Can he stick this? God, he's so in control. Jason van der Spey is really at the top of his career right now. Seeing loads of amazing short line mega loops from him. And very smart riding of, of Jason as well to go for a, for a move on the right. We see the riders on the left really not connecting with the wind there. And Andrea has been going to the right and, and been, been finding the wind. And Jason has been seeing that probably and, and, th and probably thought that's where the wind is and that's where I want to take off. Um, on the right there, it seems the wind is just coming through a bit better then. And uh, here we see a move from Andrea looping the kite oh. very late there. <laughs> but wow. getting some lift. <laughs> <laughs> that looks awesome. What an extra glide he's got there. Yeah, it is super backlit because, yeah, it's backlit. But we can just adjust it slightly. But look at this glide he gets. Wow. Whoa, Oof. back up in the air. That looks fun. So each rider has one trick uh, trick attempt left in this heat. Uh, and that will be the last. This will be the last heat of this, uh, this round, round number three. Uh, Martin Ronell up for his last trick attempt. Unfortunately, uh, looks like he's gonna gonna go out of this competition in this heat, uh, not connecting with the with the scores and with the wind here. Looking at the scores here, then we've seen something majorly we've missed here. Marine is that Jason Van Espey appears to have repeated a category here, as uh, Martin Ronell is not going to score anything for this, so I can focus on this. He's been given a 6.47 for a contra loop front roll board off. He already had a 6.67 for a contra loop front row board off scoring for Jason Van Espey. He needs to replace the 4.8 kite loop back roll, yet his sixth trick attempt, he's just gone in and smashed a 6.47. That wasn't ideal. Now, whether they've got that trick attempt description wrong from earlier of the 6.67, I don't know. Either way, Jason Van Espey appears to have given himself or, or has an issue here in that he would have been a couple of points more than that if that was a different category. He would have been at least almost two points more you know, high 19s thinking, oh, I only need to upgrade one of these tricks by half a point. Now he has a different dilemma already. He's going into that last move knowing that it's going to have to be a big one if he can make it through into this semi-final. I'll do the maths very quickly now, but South Africans, hold on to your... Hold on to your bridles. He's in, he's in trouble here. Yeah, we see uh, Edgar now going again to the left. Interesting to see him there. Again, just not connecting there with the wind. It seems that the wind on the left tech is just very gusty and up and down. Interesting to see him then go for, for, for the trick on the right there. Or the left there, I mean, as we see the replay. It was a, it was a nice board of laid back, but just not the height he wants, unfortunately, there. He is, he is currently in uh, in second place, but it could be possible that Jason is going to perform something here. I think he needs a 7.36 or higher. Marijn, great question for you. I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. If both riders have the same score heat, who would go through? So it's the rider with the highest trick score then between those two. This will could make be it big. Through. There we go, actually. Pretty good gust there for Jason. He's got to land this if he's he, got a he chance. He needs to land this to go through. He needs a 7.36. Will he get more than a 7.36? He's currently got 17.57. Edgar Ulrich's total is 20.13. Jason looking to replace the kite loop back roll score 4.8. Will it be enough? I believe he needs more than a 7.36 for this to push him into the second place. Watch those numbers change on the left-hand side, or potentially not. Very intense as there, as we see Edgar as well on the beach with his girlfriend. This is going to be close. The scores there. 7.36. I think he. W I think it will be enough to push Jason into second. It's going to be devastating. For 7.17, then coming in. Oh, for, it's for not Jason. enough. So close. As Andrea Principi didn't really need to be focused for that move. So what an incredible moment there. I thought that might have been enough for Jason Van Espey. And we go back to that duplicated yeah, contra loop is, front is, roll board off. It is put in as a contra front roll board which off. Which would have been the difference if that had replaced his 4.8 and then he'd have come in with this. So something to talk about there. More drama here at the Qatar Airways GKA Kite World Tour. Now we are going to go for a break and whether or not we go to commercials or highlights, I'm going to be told right now.
Oh, it's a biggie. Going back on the replays, then is Marine. Yeah, I thought I saw it already. I didn't want to say anything before I was sure, but the last attempt from Jason was actually a kite loop, not a contra loop. In the scoring system, we currently see uh, a contra loop there, which uh, replaces his second highest score. Um, oh, it's been corrected now, as we see. Still, his 7.17 is not enough, though, for, for him to be in... Uh, in, in yeah, they, they've corrected now to, to, to kind of front row board of the last trick attempt for Jason. Yeah. So it's his fourth trick that we're looking for. Wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The party. Just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. dream come true and let's go for the next one only a chosen few heed the call a magnetic force drawing athletes towards a challenge like no other when the cold and dense violent tramontan wind lashes the coastline below the eastern Pyrenees Barcares becomes a battleground for a select group of athletes from across the globe. We are ready to crown a new lord and queen of Tramontan. The double loop goes on there nicely. And when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive loop. From the 29th of March to the 28th of April, the world's best men, women, legends and young guns will defy the limits of the sport in the wildest conditions. Are you ready for takeoff?
go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. My name is Thibaut Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate cab surfer. I'm Max. I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etchen here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding mecca, promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey. We are only at the beginning. My name is Mike. I have lived here on the spot for 20 years. When I came here, the spot was a marine park. There was dolphins, crocodiles, and seals. There was thousands of people coming to watch Flipper. Yes, Flipper, the original dolphin. In 1992, the marine park closed. It was time for a new era. One day I saw something flying over my house. Kite surfers. This was my first contact with this crazy sport. For 15 years, Parc de Doss stayed private, reserved to a small French community. Then the Lords of Tram came and everything changed. Barker Res quickly grew into an international spot like Cape Town and Tarifa. Now I see a lot of professional athletes and kite surf lovers traveling from all around the world to enjoy holiday in Barca Res. The Tremontane wind blows with immense power, propelling riders to dizzying heights. Many records have been broken when you catch the legendary gust. This is it's ridiculous. So He's meters. still going. 200 meters. <laughs> 200 meters. He oh. loved it. Oh my word. Replay. Right, can I get a With the snow capped peaks of the Pyrenees in the background, Parc de Dos provides an incomparable setting for passionate riders. Ce spot de Barcares, il est fabuleux. Il est fabuleux pour moi, c'est euh, mon spot préféré, je dirais, pour m'entraîner. Tout est facile, l'accès au spot est facile. Le plan d'eau est magnifique et le vent fait qu'on peut monter à des hauteurs folles et, et s'entraîner dans les conditions qui sont optimum en France. En plus, grâce au Lord of Tram, ça a pris tellement d'ampleur. Euh, on a tellement de bons riders qui viennent s'entraîner, tellement de, de notoriété qui vient autour du, du spot. Et, euh, et voir ça en France, dans mon sport, dans ma discipline, moi je trouve ça incroyable et, et, et ce spot, c'est pour ça que je l'aime. Euh, J'adore venir ici, euh, c'est euh, vraiment top. Il y a tout qui a été pensé aussi pour euh, la glisse, le spot du Parc des Doses qui a été totalement refait il y a quelques années pour accueillir les pratiquants, euh, les jours sans vent qui existent euh, quand même euh, dans la région, on a un punk track, une ville super accueillante. Euh, L'été, on a des festivals avec plein d'artistes. Euh, c'est vraiment super de venir aussi en famille. L'hiver, il y a le marché de Noël. C'est vraiment une ville où il fait bon vivre, euh, où je me sens vraiment bien. Je suis content euh, que Barcares euh, soit mon, mon lieu d'entraînement, euh, mom spot, comme on dit. Welcome to Barcares, the new mecca of big air kiteboarding. Let the show go on. So your mate thinks he jumps 10 meters high? You can follow him live right at the beach. But don't keep the joy to yourself. Live stream your session to anywhere in the world, reach new heights and climb up the leaderboard.
Join the ultimate kiteboarding game today. Check out thesurfer.app. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents.
Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. It's just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. I'm true. And let's go for the next one. Only a chosen few heed the call. A magnetic force drawing athletes towards a challenge like no other. When the cold, the dense, violent Tramontane wind lashes the coastline below the eastern Pyrenees, Barcares becomes a battleground for a select group of athletes from across the globe. We are ready to crown a new lord and queen of Tramontan. The double loop goes on there nicely. And when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive blue. Very unlikely. Oh, okay. oh, oh my word. From the 29th of March to the 28th of April, the world's best men, women, legends and young guns will defy the limits of the sport in the wildest conditions. Are you ready for takeoff? go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. My name is Thibaut Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate couch surfer. I'm Max, I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etchen here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding mecca promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey we are only at the beginning. My name is Mike. I have lived here on the spot for 20 years. When I came here, the spot was a marine park. There was dolphins, crocodiles, and seals. There was thousands of people coming to watch Flipper. Yes, Flipper, the original dolphin. In 1992, the marine park closed. It was time for a new era. One day I saw something flying over my house. Kite surfers. This was my first contact with this crazy sport. 
For 15 years, Parc de Doss stayed private, reserved to a small French community. Then the Lords of Tram came and everything changed. Barker Res quickly grew into an international spot like Cape Town and Tarifa. Now I see a lot of professional athletes and kite surf lovers traveling from all around the world to enjoy holiday in Barker Res. The Tremontane wind blows with immense power, propelling riders to dizzying heights. Many records have been broken when you catch the legendary gust. This is it's ridiculous. So He's meters. still going. 200 meters. <laughs> 200 meters. He loved oh. it. Oh my word. Replay. Right, can I get a With the snow capped peaks of the Pyrenees in the background, Parc de Dos provides an incomparable setting for passionate riders. Ce spot de Barcarès, il est fabuleux. Il est fabuleux pour moi, c'est euh, mon spot préféré, je dirais, pour m'entraîner. Tout est facile, l'accès au spot est facile. Le plan d'eau est magnifique et le vent fait qu'on peut monter à des hauteurs folles et, et s'entraîner dans les conditions qui sont optimum en France. En plus, grâce au Lord of Tram, ça a pris tellement d'ampleur. Euh, on a tellement de bons riders qui viennent s'entraîner, tellement de, de notoriété qui vient autour du, du spot. Et, euh, et voir ça en France, dans mon sport, dans ma discipline, moi je trouve ça incroyable et, et, et ce spot, c'est pour ça que je l'aime. Euh, J'adore venir ici, euh, c'est euh, vraiment top. Il y a tout qui a été pensé aussi pour euh, la glisse, le spot du Parc des Doses qui a été totalement refait il y a quelques années pour accueillir les pratiquants, euh, les jours sans vent qui existent euh, quand même euh, dans la région, on a un pump track, une ville super accueillante. Euh, L'été, on a des festivals avec plein d'artistes. Euh, c'est vraiment super de venir aussi en famille. L'hiver, il y a le marché de Noël. C'est vraiment une ville où il fait bon vivre, euh, où je me sens vraiment bien. Content euh, que Barcarès euh, soit mon, mon lieu d'entraînement, euh, mom spot comme on dit. Welcome to Barcarès, the new mecca of big air kiteboarding. Let the show go on. So your mate thinks he jumps 10 meters high? You can follow him live right at the beach. But don't keep the joy to yourself. Live stream your session to anywhere in the world, reach new heights and climb up the leaderboard. Join the ultimate kiteboarding game today. Check out thesurfer.app.
Welcome back then, live in the studio to the 2024 Lords of Tram with me, Lewis Crathlin here. I've of course got Aaron Hadlow in here, fresh from making yet another cut. We spoke about that, about the goal from the weekend. You've made another cut, getting through to the quarterfinals today. You didn't make it through to the semi-finals, but how do you feel about your riding today and the conditions out there? Yeah, it was just an insane day. It was so tough. Like the conditions were so changeable, and it's is quite well known here at this uh, at this spot. But today was really extreme. Like when I was getting ready, um, I just could barely figure out like what setup to take, and I ended up changing um, in the first heat and taking a six meter where I was just so overpowered on a six meter. Like it was in incredible. Um, but yeah, just so crazy challenging. It was very choppy. It doesn't really look like it from even from just being here in live on the beach. Um, but it just gets so choppy when that much wind is is hitting the water. So you get a lot of pulled downwind and you have a lot of forward momentum. Like it's really hard to slow down and get a really easy landing. So that was causing big problems like all over the place. Um, so yeah, didn't quite make it round into the third round directly. I went into the second round and I had quite a nice heat. I changed my tactics a little bit, stuck with a bigger kite and, um, yeah, just tried to be consistent because, uh, the riders around me, I knew I just had to get some tricks on the board after the previous heat and, uh, that worked out. And then, yeah, the final heat was again, like totally opposite, very light uh up and down really lucky if you get the gust during your your time in or not um and i was up against well arguably two of the best uh out there at the minute in jeremy and lorenzo so yeah took a few gambles to try and try and see if i could do something different but it didn't pay off yeah you mentioned that heat where you had two of the, the top guys that you gave a good run for their money, actually. Um, you only lost out by less than two points to get through to another semi-final. I want to take you back to round two that you had to go in. You had a reasonable first heat, but you ended up in round two. What is that moment like for you? Or do you have a moment where you look around and see young Max from England, you know, at 15, and as I mentioned on the live stream, how, you know, 20 years ago, from you know, around this area, you were on your way to winning your first world championship when Max was nowhere near even born. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and I also stated that half the fleet here weren't even born. Do you look around and you know you have some sort of nostalgic feelings as to looking at Max and thinking, wow, like that's that was a long time ago? And yeah, uh, does that happen? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in that heat especially, I think just more because been around Max quite a lo lot and seen him progress and. Um, yeah, try to help him out where I can, and um, yeah, like I saw him land like this huge like S loop board off, and I was like, yeah, like so happy to to see him land something good. In the back of your mind, you're hoping he's not going to do too many and <laughs> yeah. knock you out. Well, for the, pretty much a lot of that heat, it was just you two going through. It was the yeah. perfect situation for us Brits, you know. And then unfortunately, he got done on the last yeah. move there, going out, you know. And we'll for sure see so much more of him to come as his years go on, but. It was yeah. a wonderful moment to talk about in the commentary. And I mean, you must, you've been sort of carrying the flag for the British Big Air for some time. All right, maybe a bit far back ago, you had the likes of Sam and maybe me in there, but it's still just been you out there. And a lot of the time, just you, especially over the last years. Is, is it quite nice in a way to know that like the future, at least we've got <laughs> someone coming up in the ranks, you know, like with yeah. uh, Max? No, definitely. And I think he's got a huge potential and huge uh, talent and to be riding in those conditions. I mean, it was really crazy. He was also in the heat before me in the first round where it was so, so challenging. Um, just the wind was just so strong and you could really see the experience kind of working out in that first round i would say just because the wind was so strong the conditions were so challenging and uh you saw just so many crashes because it was just so violent but he was managing it really well and i saw him do really good um he's got some really good moves and he's starting to get older and fill out get a bit stronger so yeah it's really interesting to see where he goes and yeah like you say the um yeah, situation in the UK is not how maybe it used to be when I was younger or even you were younger with a very solid tour. Um, 
but it's nice to see that there still are some young British riders doing quite well and he's definitely up there at the moment. It's, it's the right thing to do on that, talking about young riders, to point out that there's quite a lot of riders that are under 20. Now, the average age was 20.9 that I worked out of this competition. You've been... 36 trying to push it up and a few others even uh we worked at val gara now 30 you know that's how the times have gone on, gone on the younger brother of the the famous sebastian yeah. Garat frenchman but just having a look some of these names here josh gillett 18 ruben swart who had a great event 16 shahar sabri 16 martin Ranel 15 leonardo casati 15 why do you feel like uh, you know, seeing age groups over 30, of, of which here I can see Mark Jacobs, 35, yourself, 36, um, like I said, Valentin, and there's one other heel, I think, on his way to 30. Why, how and why is it changing to such young ages in this big air discipline? It never used to be like that. Yeah, hard to say. I mean, many generations have come through in freestyle. I feel like that's been, um, yeah re-energized maybe two or three times with uh, different age groups um, and Big Air's just it's quite new I think yeah the older guys kind of transitioned from freestyle into that and then it's been it hasn't been like such a big deal in sport for that long and when it has become now suddenly that generation has come through um, the likes of yeah Lorenzo and Andrea have just like rocketed to fame in and to the top of the sport in no time and i think there's already like the next it's not such a huge difference in age but like you know the 15 16 year olds can see that those guys who are now 18 19 have done so well so quick that they're inspired to to move forward so it's nice it's good to see because it's uh refreshing it um yeah it just changes the sport and these kids are here in an event like this at that age. And I mean, it's the same for me when I was, yeah, 13, 14, 15. They were the years I was doing my first events and you need, you get, get that experience so young and start to start to get that feeling. Then that sort of motivates them to, to really push the level. We're talking about the experience that you've had in the competition area as well but some of the life lessons you'd have learned i was reading some of the comments today about the australian rider that's traveled here ruben swart on his own at 16 and it led me straight away naturally to think about yourself you know from an early age we're traveling on your own getting life skills and experiences that perhaps we don't talk about as much with kiteboarding if we're only focusing on results and competition but equally great experiences for young people to be having traveling the world do you look back to those times fondly you know like what, what age were you traveling on your own yeah I mean same yeah it was crazy I mean when I think back I just can't believe it really because yeah I was obviously had um, my parents and coming around with me quite a lot but there was definitely an age where I transitioned to to go around with um, some friends who were who were older but there was definitely times where I did trips with other riders who were only a little bit older than me you know I was maybe 16 15 16 um being uh going away with guys who were like 80 90 which is still pretty young so they were just like yeah incredible times because you were just let loose on the world and you just find all these brand new experiences and obviously you're focused and there for a competition but it's uh it's quite surreal i think at the time you're kind of just like swept up in it you're out and about you're just like so focused and doing your thing but when i think back now it's like it's unbelievable the amount of places it took me at such a young age luckily you had some great responsible characters around you like ellie zarka and reuben lenton people like that which shaped who you become but it's important i think that we just bring ourselves back to the moment where we are now because i know a lot of you have been very patient on our live stream comments and are still waiting to know what's happened so we're all the way up to the semi-finals we've got the ap flag up now aaron maybe you can tell us a bit more about why we don't have the cameras switched around from the live stream booth and we're not looking at uh semi-final action yeah i think the last round was quite uh yeah variable it was up and down like i definitely struggled but i think my heat was on the limit as well as many of the of those heats in that round so i think it's just getting to the point where it's so critical now it would be a shame for someone to go out because you know they didn't get three 
or two or three attempt because of the winds and it is up and down it is a bit cloudy that's really affecting how the wind is um, coming through when it's sunny here and the, the forecast is very consistent it still varies but very not as much you know it goes up and down and you might have a bit of a lull in the heat but generally you know it's fairly consistent whereas it's been very extreme today and um, yeah I mean like I say you could you can get a gust on the way up but you can also we was talking about it before you can get a gust mid loop and like mm, you had a few of those today <laughs> on the short lines today <laughs> it was like luckily I mean I didn't it caught me but yeah we've seen um a couple of huge crashes and it's generally because of that you know you get the confidence up you start thinking right my kite's always going to catch me because of this this and this you feel the conditions out but here you can always get like the odd surprise where you just suddenly just hit mm. like an absolute rocket gust like right when the critical part and, and that's that, for everybody in the fleet you know like totally. absolutely every rider has had a surprise today at yeah. least once and yeah that can result in yeah it becoming a bit more unpredictable a bit more dangerous and we have seen quite a few crashes now that the the gusts are i mean it's visibly obvious from here that you can just see patches everywhere um and i think at this point where we're into the semis now it's we want to see the best show and i think tomorrow possibly could show better conditions so if it doesn't improve at the moment then i think we're going to see a better show tomorrow and and that's what we really want to see even if it's delayed slightly yeah and so this has been brought on a bit by the riders they've just had a riders meeting down there and there i think there was it's fair to say a few of them feeling conditions weren't so safe there's been a few crashes and that is a very important part of uh, this tour the gk kite world tour and also lords of tram is that the riders do have quite a an influence on how things are run here certainly one of those influences was to change things from four trick attempts to three trick attempts which perhaps help you focus on going a bit harder and pushing rather than you know getting four basic scores which it would have become a bit more about getting four tricks on the board rather than pushing three big ones yeah. so a bit of a break in proceedings now and um the right man has just walked in here to talk to you about what's going on it's the tour manager I nearly said Liam Whaley. <laughs> that would have been a quite change of jobs, but it's Liam Dredge who's just walked in here. So we might just cut to the beach shortly before I put him right on the spot and bring him in here. But it's been great to speak with you, Aaron, about your experiences today. And I get the impression you're pretty happy about today, but as always, wanting to be on the podium. <laughs> so <laughs> deep down, hoping you'd gone a bit further, but you you done pretty well to get to the, yeah. the quarterfinals today. And uh, all the talk, as we said, was about Tiger Woods making his record cut. Aaron, you made cut number 5,010 <laughs> <laughs> getting through. I just made that number up, but congratulations on your performance. Thanks a lot.
And now in the live stream booth, we've got Liam Dredge, who is one of the tour managers amongst many of the roles. You've sat here many a time <laughs> doing commentary. Have you time. done judging yet? No, no you that's what done... I'm going to stay away from, from that side of it for now. Okay, so Liam, thank you for joining us quickly. Um, and you can perhaps give us a shine a bit more of a light on the situation right now and whether or not you think we might get the finals run today or the girls will be out. What's going on down there? Yeah, I mean, as you've probably seen from from the you know from here at the spot and, and you guys at home, it's been an up and down sort of day. It did start off really nicely. Uh, we had some great heats early on, but the conditions are definitely giving us a, a challenging afternoon. But we are hoping to. We, we've basically got everyone on standby. Um, we had a riders briefing after that last heat, um, just to get their feedback on the conditions, but also to get the you know the thoughts from the judges and, and head judge Havo as well. So we're going to go on 15 minute calls. Next first possible start is five o'clock. So every 15 minutes, um, the call is being made. And I think, ideally, we're just hoping that the conditions not necessarily needs to get that crazy more windy, but it's just a little bit more stable. At the moment, we're getting a lot of feedback that, you know, they're sort of feeling like rocks out of the sky um, on some of their moves. So hopefully we see the winds as it looks to maybe clear up a little bit, get a little bit stronger, a little bit smoother, and then we can get, um, get back underway with the men. Uh, what was the judges' input uh, during that conversation? Are they sort of listening or talking about what scores they're seeing and, and do they get involved in that conversation as well as the riders mainly that yeah we obviously the judges feedback is very important to to us and, and, we, and we take that on board and race director Cedric as well because ultimately the decision comes down to him it's uh it's the race director's call whether we we go on standby or we, or we choose to carry on but we've got you know experienced judges in that booth um that have been at this spot before they've been at you know multiple other spots judging the big air so we obviously take into consideration the thoughts of those guys up there but uh, the decision was made um, with feedback from the riders as well to just take a little bit of foot off the gas let's say we, we do have a little bit of time on our side we've got a good day tomorrow which is is always good to look at because um, we still have the woman to do but also we've got I think four hours of daylight here left as well and roughly we need about two just over two hours two hours 15 maybe two and a half to finish the rest of the men so that's clear then, don't go anywhere because we still have plenty of time for this to happen. I think it gets dark at 8.30 here, so you can run. Yeah. We can definitely get the finals run today. There are three heats remaining, two semifinals and a final remaining yeah. of the men here before we would go into the women. But as Liam just said, that would be tomorrow. Now let's talk about the big air scene right now and perhaps what's going to follow after this event. We're here at the wonderful Le Bacares, which has been... Um, a real iconic spot for Big Air now in its sixth edition here in the south of France and joining with the GK some years back now. There's talk, um, and I think it's very much going to happen, the event in Gran Canaria, Gran Canaria for the first, yeah. time first time for Big Air. You've been there often with the GKA with wing foiling, which looked pretty epic. Yeah, we were there <laughs> last, last year, year in uh, for the GWA. We did three disciplines. We did the freestyle, the, the slalom, and also Big Air for the first time on the wing falling side. And... Uh, yeah, it just was nuts. 40 knots every day, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So uh, we're looking forward to bringing uh, a kite surfing, a, a big air, sorry, event there in July, which is going to be really, really exciting. And perhaps, is that, have you got the same watch? No one's got this one. You old, have. Oh, oh you've got the, the Illuminator. Yes. That's slightly, that's like another four euros ones. more than my one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I remember that's that one. That's my alarm to tell me that, that it's going to be the next call now. Was it your alarm? I don't know whose yeah. it was. Who's this going off at 6.45? I don't know. <laughs> that, um, yeah, probably yeah. yours, I'd say. <laughs> there we go. But, but no, Grand Canaria, July, looks uh, really, really promising. Uh, we've told the riders to put it aside. It's, it's looking really, really good. And then... Fingers crossed that we can get another third one in Brazil at the end of the year. Okay, nice. I notice you're wearing your watch on your left-hand side, mine on the right, which means 50% people left and right here. We've had a big <laughs> argument about which hand people wear. Watch is on once upon a time. Aaron, where's your watch? Left cat. You're, are you so yeah, wearing a watch, Philip? Here, oh, Philip's wearing one. I was hoping he could just well. pretend. So not great numbers for me on watch wearing in here, but I, I'll have you know, we got to the bottom of that, and I think it was one in five. I thought that was pretty good numbers when I was told I was an idiot wearing it on the right. So wouldn't quite call that a landslide in favour for <laughs> the, right, the, the left-hand side watch wearers. But once more then, a big welcome if you have just joined us. Probably bad timing here at, in Le Cat, but if you have, or in Le Bacares, I should say, in the Le Cat region. If you have been with us all day, stay patient. Looks like we might be getting the semis and finals going on within the next 
well, I don't know how Fingers crossed, men, but yeah. every update we're getting in 15 minutes we'll try and share that with you via our socials and on the comments and for now we will show you a nice clear shot of the beach or an advert
Wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together.
Wow. Uh, welcome back then here to the 2024 Lords of Tram here at the Qatar Airways GK Kite World Tour. Quite some drama gone down on the beach as you've been waiting very patiently for us to come back to you. And I don't really know where to start, but I think the best place to start, Marine, is to, to tell you that there was a bit of a discrepancy in that heat between um, Edgar, um, certainly, and Jason van der Spy, Andrea Principi winning the heat. I think it was Martin, uh, it's on my screen. Martin yeah. Ronell. Yeah. Ronell in uh, last position, unfortunately for him. But it was decided eventually by race director that there would be a two tricks each from the right. Was it two or three in the end? It's still even hard to... Yeah, it looked like it's two uh, for, for Edgar and Jason. Then uh, those two riders had to fight out uh, two more tricks to see who would take the second place, advancing to the semifinals. And the third uh, in that heat, unfortunately, went uh, went home. It wasn't that windy, and then when we thought we'd seen everything in the history of kiteboarding dramas, out of nowhere, um, taking uh, the lead in that heat with his first trick was Edgar Ulrich deciding to throw it would be, a, just deciding it would be a great time for a mega loop KGB, which <laughs> really took everybody by surprise. The two went head to head for some time to perform those moves, moves, and it was Edgar. I can barely speak. I never usually like this. Edgar won the heat and he will go ahead into the semi-final which wraps up quite a uh, inc- crazy day yeah. of, of kiteboarding at Marine. we've seen everything today yeah we've uh, started early this morning uh, around 7 30 7 40 with uh, incredibly strong winds then uh, as the day passed around one we saw some cloud cover come in wind dip uh, and here we are at the end of the day with uh, with the final heat uh, coming to this decision interesting uh, how it went down but uh, uh, it seems that we have our semi-finals now. It's uh, going to be uh, in semi-finals, uh, Heat 17 and 18, which is uh, going to be very interesting. The wind and uh, forecast looks pretty promising for tomorrow. Clear skies throughout the whole day and good winds as well. Uh, we're going to have an announcement uh, later today uh, when we have the first possible start for tomorrow. So I uh, hope you guys uh, are excited for that. We're going to have really great action with... Uh, the eight best riders for the men left and then of course we have the whole women division still to run the 12 women are uh, very very much ready they've been uh, ready for two days now already mm. third day tomorrow yeah they've had to be patient uh, just like you at home and to really wrap things up here as uh <coughs> there is our race director i think it's time to say goodbye au revoir let's see you tomorrow thanks Bienvenue. for your patience today bye bye Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. The party. Just starting now. We're gonna put the show on. World champions will be crowned, legends will be made. This is gonna be epic. dream come true and let's go for the next one only a chosen few heed the call a magnetic force drawing athletes towards a challenge like no other when the cold and dense violent tramontane wind lashes the coastline below the eastern Pyrenees Barcares becomes a battleground for a select group of athletes from across the globe. We are ready to crown a new lord and queen of Tramontan. The double loop goes on there nicely. And when it comes through, oh my word, that is absolutely massive loom. Very unlikely. Oh, oh. oh my word. 
29th of March to the 28th of April, the world's best men, women, legends and young guns will defy the limits of the sport in the wildest conditions. Are you ready for takeoff? Wherever you go in the world, one airline goes further to make it feel exceptional. Qatar Airways, going places together. My name is Steve Mounier. Hi, I'm Pierre Antoine, I'm a passionate kite surfer. I'm Max, I'm Tristan. My name is Cedric. Etienne here, Lord of Tram Media Manager. Lords of Tram is more than a kite competition. For the last six years, Lords of Tram has been a big family, striving to develop the kite surf big air discipline. Two years ago, we teamed up with the city of Barcares. Barcares is a dynamic, responsive and innovative city filled with sport and cultural initiatives. Together with Lords of Tram, the municipality has established a new kiteboarding mecca promoting the spot and the love for our sport. Thanks to everyone involved in the project. Stay with us on this amazing journey. We are only at the beginning. My name is Mike. I have lived here on the spot for 20 years. When I came here, the spot was a marine park. There was dolphins, crocodiles, and seals. There was thousands of people coming to watch Flipper. Yes, Flipper, the original dolphin. In 1992, the Marine Park closed. It was time for a new era. One day I saw something flying over my house. Kite surfers. This was my first contact with this crazy sport. For 15 years, Parc de Doss stayed private, reserved to a small French community. Then the Lords of Tram came and everything changed. Barker Res quickly grew into an international spot like Cape Town and Tarifa. Now I see a lot of professional athletes and kite surf lovers traveling from all around the world to enjoy holiday in Barker Res. The Tremontane wind blows with immense power, propelling riders to dizzying heights. Many records have been broken when you catch the legendary gust. With the snow-capped peaks of the Pyrenees in the background, Parc de Dos provides an incomparable setting for passionate riders. Ce spot de Barcares, il est fabuleux. Il est fabuleux pour moi. C'est mon spot préféré, je dirais, pour m'entraîner. Tout est facile. L'accès au spot est facile. Le plan d'eau est magnifique. Et le vent fait qu'on peut monter à des hauteurs folles et, et s'entraîner dans les conditions qui sont optimum en France. En plus, grâce au Lord of Tram, ça a pris tellement d'ampleur. Euh, on a tellement de bons riders qui viennent s'entraîner, tellement de, de notoriété qui vient autour du, du spot. Et, euh, et voir ça en France, dans mon sport, dans ma discipline, moi je trouve ça incroyable. Et, et, et ce spot, c'est pour ça que je l'aime. J'adore venir ici, c'est vraiment top. Il y a tout qui a été pensé aussi pour la glisse, le spot du Parc des Doses qui a été totalement refait il y a quelques années. 
pour accueillir les pratiquants, euh, les jours sans vent qui existent euh, quand même euh, dans la région. On a un pump track, une ville euh, super accueillante. Euh, L'été, on a des festivals avec plein d'artistes. Euh, c'est vraiment super de venir aussi en famille. L'hiver, il y a le marché de Noël. C'est vraiment une ville où il fait bon vivre, euh, où je me sens vraiment bien. Je suis content euh, que Barcares euh, soit mon, mon lieu d'entraînement, euh, mon home spot, comme on dit. Welcome to Barcares, the new mecca of big air kiteboarding. Let the show go on. Send it! So your mate thinks he jumps 10 meters high? You can follow him live right at the beach. But don't keep the joy to yourself. Live stream your session to anywhere in the world, reach new heights and climb up the leaderboard. Join the ultimate kiteboarding game today. Check out thesurfer.app. L'économie, c'est comme le climat. Ça subit de plus en plus de tempêtes, de crises, et ça s'accélère. Et un kitesurfer, quand il regarde la tempête, il voit une opportunité de sauter plus haut, de surfer des plus grosses vagues et d'aller plus vite. Et c'est ce regard-là qu'on veut amener aux entreprises pour qu'elles voient les tempêtes qu'elles traversent comme des opportunités. Prenez par exemple la transition environnementale. Ça peut être vu comme une contrainte réglementaire. En réalité, c'est une opportunité incroyable de se réinventer et d'attirer des nouveaux clients et des nouveaux talents. Thank you. 